when I got reincarnated as a spider with my goddess. Volume 02 by Noel Alicia Prologue HFFF. How much time has it been? Can anyone look at the time and tell because there are no wall clocks here and specially it's dark so maybe I cannot even pinpoint where the wall is. Well, I don't even have the time to search for a wall. HHR, just give up. Why you are chasing after this little small life of mine. It has been more than 30 minutes that I came out from my egg shell and for some reason I have 8 white crystalline legs and a 360 degree vision. I don't know where I am. Or even what am I to begin with? Run. It's catching up. The ground has become much dull and dismally uneven. However the lighting problem is gone. The crystalline rocks embedded in the walls and scattered in the corner of this closed dump and unexpectedly long unending cave are shining with a blue sparkly light. I doubt I had ever run this much in my life. It's a shame if I knew I had it in me. Then I would have made sure to participate in the high school marathon competition. R. Yes, it's rude of me not to introduce myself. My name is Siki Kondo and some time ago, maybe just like you I was a normal high school student, though it was not much of a life to brag about to. 6. Begin with, but here's the deal, my whole class was the victim of an unfortunate road accident and then we were summoned in heaven. This is where the crazy fantasy stuff began where we were told to reincarnate ourselves in a new world by the gods. After staying in heaven for a week, I became good friends with the goddess of knowledge, Athena. Even if it sounds normal to you to make friends, but things are much different for me. For those who do not know of my past life, let me tell you this, I was lost, not in the sense that I got lost on the streets. Well I do have navigation issues. I admit it. What I really want to say is that I was all alone till the last moment before I died. I had no parents and neither friend. No one cared about me, and my guardian uncle and aunt just saw me only as a means to an end for their own personal gains. Lady Athena, despite all my weaknesses became friends with me unconditionally and nothing could have made me much happier. As per almighty world God's instruction. We were supposed to be born in a high-class noble society to aid in our noble ventures to save the world. We were also supposed to be accompanied by our god or goddess in contract. Of course my goddess in contract was Lady Athena. I would never accept any other god's help. Not to mention they and my other classmates tried to assassinate me and her. If you ask me why, then it's just so that they could have some fun since no one would mind if a dead person dies again. 7. But here I was making a long sprint to save my life just after my birth. There was no sign of my new parents or a doctor. After all that I had planned to make a surprising entrance at my delivery. To smile when only the nurse is looking at me and astonish her. To cry in my mother's folded arms while she hugs me and call her mama and hold the gigantic fingers of my father in my puny little hand. But I was instead greeted by a huge lizard monster whose tonight's menu main dish included fresh eggs picked up in a cave. I doubt whether it's hygienic or not to eat eggs picked up from unidentifiable suspicious locations. Mr. Lizard should be more careful. Then again, maybe reasoning is beyond its mental fortitude because it hadn't given up on me and is still chasing me, after I made my great escape. I am sure I had somehow messed up during the reincarnation ceremony that I landed in such a predicament or rather a peculiar life and death situation. I hope no newborn ever finds himself in such a precarious situation. I wonder what Lady Athena is doing. I hope she is at least not somewhere dangerous. I will make sure to find her, no matter how long it takes. But first I need to deal with this never giving up freakish monster. Just how much stamina does it has? To run for this long at such a fast pace with a huge ugly fat body like that. I always got bullied by the problem kids at school, but this was just too serious. This creature knew no restraints. Bullying an infant is a serious offense and is a punishable act of crime. So maybe I should search for an adult or a police officer. But, there is no way someone 8 would be kind enough to build a police station in a dilapidated, dumpy rocky cave. No. I looked at its face again, it's scary, with its long reddish tongue stuck out of its mouth and large amount of white slimy liquid being sprayed all over, dot 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 uck, I know, 
Maybe I could ask him to collect some ingredients and range a stove. I have got a knack for cooking, and I have full confidence in my skills. So how do I approach him? Then there is the language barrier, but it doesn't hurt to give it a try. Hey, Mr. Lizard, would you like to try some tempura or curry maybe? Rua Ark, never mind, I won't bother you anymore. I will keep on running. You may continue with your wild hunt. 9, 10, Chapter 1 Dash Will I Die Again In Chapter 1 I am totally exhausted and at my limits now. I could tell that my lungs were about to burst at any moment, even though I have my doubts that whether I have them or not in the first place. There is no way I can run anymore. Even though I have been running on my newfound natural instincts and maybe I was even on my adrenaline poo MP flight response mode. But its effect was too wearing off slowly. I knew only one thing that I had to survive no matter what. I will figure something out. So I need to run. I need to keep running, till I can shake off this intimidating predator from my trail. The dim light makes me sick. It's so unreal. I kept on taking turns many times in my way, but the scenery didn't change. The lizard monster is still chasing me, but in no way it looks exhausted except for more frustrated and angry. Its loud horrific outcries could be heard echoing in this closed and unassumingly huge endless cave. Now I doubt whether it is even a cave or not. Ha, huh, puff, drip, drip. 11, is that the sound of water? I sped up my movement, with the thought that I could dive inside the water source and only hope that the lizard didn't knew how to swim or was stupid enough to jump and drown itself. And if it ends up dead the better will be my situation. I could care no less. What do you expect from me? Having sympathy for a being who tries to eat newly born kids. I know I am much older mentally but I want to treat it as a new life. You get it, right? I was soon able to see a small circular lake in the corner surrounded by two walls and then there was a hole in one of the walls through which water poured in at a comparably higher thrust than the sound made it look like. Well, it looks pretty deep. I was about 20 meter away and was about to take a sharp turn near the next turn and make a spectacular jump into the lake when one of my odd shaped and somewhat segmented legs just dot just, just had to slip and trip over a moist rock and made me roll over head but, how shameful, utterly disgraceful, thump, thump. At least the ground is a bit soft and clayey so I didn't end up with any bruises or cut. 12. I looked back and to my horror. The lizard which had shown no signs of intelligence up till now saw through my misfortune and took the advantage of this opening. It rolled back its tongue and after making a crude face, was it a smile? It opened its huge mouth. I could see its large sharp canines and the foul smell it gave was unbearable even at this distance. Is he about to eat me in one gulp? I cannot move. My legs are frozen and I am too exhausted to move or think. It's just like the last time. Being attacked by that heavenly beast wolf and the guilt of unable to do anything in front of a powerhouse being, it's unbearable. Will I really be lucky like the last time and someone will come around and save me? Is this the end? I had closed my eyes and started counting backwards, waiting for the inevitable. Being chewed under its molars, plummeted by its tediously long tongue, shoved down its throat, then digested and finally, never mind. That's when I think my life changed seeing death up close for the third time. I realized there are no convenient miracles. Whether you are in a fantasy world or the real world, your carefree nature will always come back and bite you and every time it will be much more painful than the last time. I opened my eyes and someone had switched off the lights. But I could still see myself fine. That's when a person appeared before me. She had white hairs and blue eyes. She was beautiful and 13. Attractive. Just by looking at her I could tell unlike me she had a strong-willed personality. It was like deja vu. She looked so familiar that I realized that she was the one from my odd dreams I have been having recently. And now when I am dying I am hallucinating again. Or maybe I am already dead. I still could not move, but the best part was that I was back in my human body. The unseemingly familiar yet foreign lady walked towards me and gently held my chin in her hands. Let me make it crystal clear, I have no idea what is happening. Would you prefer that I say that you could have done nothing to change the outcome or say that if you had not given up then you could have changed the ending? Tell me what your heart desires? I was dumbstruck. Why? Why now of all times? Of course I want to live. 
Of course I want to spend more time with people I love and care about. I wanted to make them proud, to show them my best side, to tell them that they could count on my help whenever they are in trouble, but every time, I am so vulnerable, and alone. Always made to feel inferior and weak around those who are talented and strong. For once I thought things would change in this new world, yet again I think I ended up being the same scapegoat I was before, trapped in the same loop ready to be cut again and again, to the point that nothing would be left of me, but if you ask me, 14, both the choices are pointless, I would never give up, I will never stop trying because that is who I am, there will be things at which I will be slow at but I will keep on trying and trying, work hard, and even if there was nothing left to try and someone said that I would have not been able to change the results either way, I won't accept it, because I knew that there is someone who will always believe in me, someone who will always stay by my side and smile at me amidst all the odds and my failures, the hand which up till now gently held my chin was slowly caressing my cheeks, then this tall woman bent down a little and making a cutely bashful smile kissed my face and in a motherly loving tone said to me, it's not over yet, if you don't end things then nothing can start, and if you dislike the situation, then use your strength to change it, I love you and I will always be what king over you, thud, thud, boom, my ears went numb by these noises, I opened my eyes after it had reflexively closed down due to the loud boom sound, the mysterious lady was gone, and the lizard who was up till now going to swallow me in a second was writhing in pain under the huge pile of debris which fell over it as a huge scorpion made a break through the wall. 15. One was not enough, that a second makes a surprise entrance. I don't know how this new creature got here or what's it a steal, but surely it is dangerous to stay here any longer. This scorpion was about the same size as the lizard monster but had a segmented body covered with large strong scales. As for the species I was able to identify it because of its huge towering tail waving around with its pointed black tip, I need to use this situation to my advantage if I wanted to live, run, run far away, that was the one and only thing on my mind, by now I think my paralyzed body had regained its bit of strength and I slowly dragged my body to the other side of the wall till I could use a huge rock as a covering, Bwak, the lizard monster was bleeding all over and the scorpion looked unharmed, preparing to attack and deal the final blow. The waving of its pointed stinger weapon had stopped as it took a silent and rigid stance. It went back and forth and after gaining a bit momentum pierced through the abdomen of the lizard. Wah! The lizard monster was in a lot of pain, who would not be after a pointed spike is shoved inside your stomach, and if the stinger is poisonous then it's over for Mr. Lizard. Either way I am still at a disadvantage if even one of them survives. I need to jump in the pool and wait till things settle down. There's no way these monsters look friendly or talkative. I took a last look at the corpse and waited till the scorpion could make its next move. I thought it was time to say rest in peace. 16. Thanks for playing catch catch with me. Even if the price of being caught was my life, no one played with me in my previous life. So, thank you. Thump. The huge rock type builder attached to the end of the lizard's tail slammed upon the scorpion's head. Splash. Blood spluttered out everywhere and the formation of a red fountain of this savagery red fluid made me puke. It was a one-shot kill. The hunter became hunted. I always wanted to say that, but this score had not ended yet. The corpse of the scorpion lay still. My savior come predator was dead. The stillness after this chaotic turn of events was suffocating and I tried my best not to lose my cool or Maybe I already had lost it and was just barely standing on my unknown number of feet. I had realized by now, we all had got only one shot at life. A single mistake and it's game over. If I am not careful, I could be the next departing soul. Shriek. S-H-R-R-R. -R -R. The debris had started to move and the lizard still bleeding with several cuts and deep wounds. With a huge hole in its abdomen started walking towards me. Don't you realize, just rest. It's so painful, doesn't it hurt by walking in such a dreadful condition? Even if you at me don't you? 17. Get it I will just jump out of the huge hole in your stomach. So, please stop. Just give up. I kept on shouting as loudly as I could. I was so desperate that I forgot that he didn't understood my language. 
but surely he understood the pain of being hurt. The lizard kept on walking and covered the 20 meter distance before I knew it and opened its large mouth, in a second attempt to eat me. So, this is how thing will be, you won't lose, you won't waver and even in the face of death, keep on walking the path that ensures your survival. I was horrified and my face was pale, my expressions had frozen, but it was not fear, but admiration. The tenacity of the monster had turned the tide on the scorpion and finally it was up again for its next kill. Someone did mention that you just can't beat a person who won't give up. Seeing it in its truest form only conveyed me one message that I can die any time, but living takes true courage. So this time with all my strength, I stopped shaking and came out of my hiding. I was face to face with the lizard. I lifted up my two limbs in order to stop it from biting me. Even if I break a leg or two, I won't back down. Rowak. The voice had died down, but it had the same killing intent blooming and as lively as ever. But I still stood firm. In front of me was my enemy and I was his. 18. Maybe 10 seconds had passed, but for me it was a lifetime. The yellow shine in the lizard's eye slowly disappeared and it fell down back to ground. It was finally all over. I took a deep breath and sat down on my butt. I see, it's somewhat a bit oval in shape, just what exactly am I? Where am I? Are there others beside me? How long have I been asleep? Am I even in the right world? What if I am not even me, but someone else? Wait that seems unlikely. If I am not me then how will I be able to differentiate? Well, no point in wasting time on what if s. I need to figure out everything with what I have present in real time and grasped uphill now. For starters a huge cave-like infrastructure with monsters lurking around. Keeping the constants and characteristics of a fantasy world in mind I should probably be in a dungeon or a labyrinth. Monsters are strong enough to break the walls and are ready to kill anything in order to survive. For now I need to find a way outside and search for Lady Athena. That is my present goal from now on. Well I need to go up in dungeons floor wise if I want to exit through the entrance. Completing the dungeon may be impossible in my current state and I don't know how long will it take. Having a map or a rough sketch of this place will really help out. Speaking of which I remember World God telling about status window feature available to all. Not to forget about using magic. So how does it goes? Maybe I should shout at my full voice. 19. Status window. A blue screen popped in front of me with several parameters and readings. Or, maybe it was just being projected over my retina. What? Interesting. Wait. Isn't it too normal? As expected I am level 1 and nameless at that. I have one skill and one unique skill which I have no idea how they work. Well I don't know how much 100 horsepower is even supposed to value, but what's up with the MP and SP stats? Status window. Name, dash age, 1 hour 23 minutes race, arachne level, 1 HP, 100 MP, ERR SP, ERR unique skill, all seeing eyes of the gods skills, glutton LV1, poison magic LV1, thread magic LV1. Titles, Legacy of God Disrachne. 20. It concerns me. I know it's probably error. Could it be that they are so low, that the even the system is ashamed to display it? I won't be surprised. But even so, I need to face the truth, without relying on any dreamlike powers. Spoken like a true warrior. And dot dot and dot hum. And what does the glutton e skill even does? There is no additional information or any specifics given about how to use these skills. Times like this is when game players wish for an appraisal skill. I don't even get the meaning of my title. It's so frustrating. Fine I'm a legacy of some goddess. Wait, race, arachne. I ran to the pool and covered the long distance in a matter of few seconds. These legs are awesome and super fast. I hesitated a bit and slowly placed one of my limbs on the water surface. It was a white crystalline segmented thin body structure, something I had never seen before. It appeared sturdy and yet soft when I touched. Finally, time for the final revelation. I can't wait anymore. I closed my 360 degree vision and then brought my face and half body in the front of the water surface making sure not to fall at the same time. Should I open? 1.2.3.3.2.1.2. Ahem, tada. Wham. 21. I ran back to the corner of the wall. Just what was that? 
Was it really me? I slowly crawled back to the rocky bank side and stared at my own face for a while. What do you expect? An eight-eyed freak, with a white pale body and eight legs. I was reborn as a spider monster. My eyes were crimson red in color and beautiful at that too, but my face was a bit broad and too plain. Nothing to be disappointed but neither to appreciate. As for the limbs, the front two were in the form of pointed straight and strongly built side-like construction or maybe dagger-like legs, while other six were crystalline and segmented in three parts. My high speed is thanks to these four pair of legs and the 360 view must be because of so many eyes. One can never know what life will throw at you. Can you? I miss my human body. I miss my two hands and set of two eyes. But now I think I am myself one of these labyrinths monster. Bewak. I took a defensive stance and a shelter under the rocks on the side walls. Monster incoming. Just kidding. It's my empty stomach. Unfortunately there's nothing to eat and I could feel the dizziness at the same time. I tried to drink water but it did not quench my hunger. I was drooling all over, scurried around and looked in all direction till my normal common senses had given up, when I finally realized that all I could do was eat the monster corpses. If I do not eat, I will die. 22. I needed protein in order to survive and fight other monsters if they appear before me. I don't know how much longer I will have to stay here, but this means that some day or the other I have to do this. I walked to the lizard monster and my eyes went straight at its neck. Maybe my monster instincts had taken over. I could not remove my eyes from the food laid in front of me. What am I even saying? That's not food. No, it is food. No it's not. Gwack. I took a bite from the neck flesh. It was a small bite yet. I continued to gnaw at it. Don't dare to ask me to do the taste review. It's depressing as it is and I think it's bitter but overall has a coarse raw wheat grain taste. No comments. This overwhelming feeling of survival no matter what, was getting stronger and stronger as I continued chopping the flesh with my sharp forelimbs and fed myself. Is it also because of my monster origin? I had cast aside my humanity and had now become one with the nature. That would be the best way to make the situation look better. No it's not working. SSHHHH. I had no regrets because anything is fair in love, war and survival. This was not a movie. Neither I was a protagonist hero blessed with a holy sword but a monster who just wanted to see the next day through. 23. I don't know how much time had passed but except for the head and rock tail builder, the whole flesh was gone. As if my mind was on standby mode and the monster me took care of the rest. It was so spooky and an unnerving experience. But it's not over. I, I, can't hold back. More, more, more. I was now feeding on the scorpion corpse. The head was gone, all that remained was the body part and tail. I chopped of the poisonous stinger, so everything should be fine. I thought I would face several difficulty while getting rid of the strong scales on its body. But it seems that my scythes are super sharp and strong as well. One could say I was cutting butter, the sweet juicy meat I am coming. In mere five minutes, all cleaned. No, I did it again. But a child needs food to grow and become healthy. But is this monster corpse the only option? The cave was devoid of vegetation and I just can't eat the rocks. I think it's not normal to eat the rocks, says the one who was greedily feeding on monsters. The scorpion's inner flesh was much softer than expected and a bit of salty. It tasted for some time like mayonnaise and then like mashed potatoes with excessive starch. Ah, I broke my oath of no comments. As for the final verdict, the Mrs. Scorpion wins over Mr. Lizard by an overwhelming number in taste points. Wait this is not a live food show, camera cut. 24. I need to think of ways to survive and get out of this place. I had no problem with water for now. As for the food I need to find some soon. I wonder how did this small body manage to eat two gigantic monsters in one go, who were at least 30 times my body size. If such strong monsters are roaming all around then it's more likely that I will be killed in my next encounter. I am not a fighter or the type who just charges in without thinking. I need to come up with several ideas. Fantasy world hash labyrinth hash monster hash survival hash magic. Yippee. E dot L E. That's it magic. I knew I can always count on my gaming experience for when I would be Ice Kai, though I didn't knew when it would be. 
But now I was one of the lucky ones, if only Lady Luck was on my side. But my NP and SP show error. I wonder whether I can use it or not. Will it work in the same way it did in the Divine Realm? It has been so long. Well I cannot gain anything without trying. Magic class starts now. I need to repeat the same magic experiments I did back in Divine Realm. Divine Heal. A bright golden light shrouded my whole body and in a second swept across the whole area. The dark dumpy dungeon up till now, was but all shiny and clean. The dirt on the rocks, the rotting flesh and leftover bones and the blood splashed all across the floor after the skirmish disappeared and the blue shining rocks which were dim like a flicker were now giving a bright and cold light. 25. My mind was at ease. A simple healing spell that I used was able to restore my mental capacity, my health status as I recuperated from tiredness and exhaustion. But even this region changed as I wanted it to be in my mind. The stingy air which almost made my unstoppable running nose uncomfortable became gentle and sweet. After a long fought, long escaped battle my mind was finally at peace. Now I needed to come up with an immediate action plan. Food, shelter, security and other necessary amenities need to be taken care of. Now, what I wanted to do the most. A huge blob of water lifted up by itself from the surface of water creating huge ripples and the concentric circles just diverged and then slowly appeared to converge. Splash! Ha! What a relief! Having a bath for the first time after being born. I wonder who my parents are or am I an orphan even in this new world? I feel abandoned and lonely again. But this time I have not lost my way. I tried to control wind again and dried myself and took a rough estimation about the size and shape of my body. I was just a small cute little spider though I am able to talk in my home world language. I wonder what kind of voices spiders make. I need to work on finding attack spells too. Time for invention and more practice. 26. First I will go with plasma ball. I summoned fire on my left fang and water on my right fang and then clubbing them together I quickly launched it forward. Boom. Swoosh. The wind cleared and the wall came crashing down and even the debris was pulverized to dust. I am sure I kept the firepower low, or is the attack just too powerful? Well whatever if that's the case then it works in my favor. Well I cannot create cubicles dash my mini bomb creation. Right now because I don't have any metal at present. Rocks won't work as they are brittle and may have defective holes developed over time through which the gas can escape. That's a bummer, I know. A newborn baby throwing around grenades and going kaboom. Nothing sounds more exciting now does it? Well I need an evasion skill to dodge enemy attacks too. Thankfully, I already knew and had mastered the spell. Teleport. I thought I was floating in air but I finally realized that I was back to ground. That hurts. I had teleported myself 5 meter above. Things were looking a bit better than before. But now the final magic spell which I knew. Now I need something to store food and water. I know exactly what I will do. 27. Dimensional storage. A black hole appeared in front of me and was ready to draw anything inside it. Thank you. But maybe next time. I am in possession of nothing right now that I need to store. The best thing about my magic is that I don't need chance and just by thinking I can control the natural elements. Now when I am conscious of myself after being born and also after dying. I knew one thing was always true that we were born with nothing and we would die with nothing. All our possession and material pleasure will be left behind. All that will be left with us will be our memories, bonds and hope that we lived a fulfilling life and a glimmer of chance to meet your loved ones in the afterlife. All I could do was make sure that I can brighten my life while bringing happiness to those whom I love and cherish. Ha <laughs> ha I was yawning. Do spiders even yawn or is it a previous life human reflex? Please keep your voice low because RMC is sleeping. 28. Unknown time, actually 9 days and 5 hours later. ZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZZ
He e e e. I threw the lump of meat which I had started chewing just after waking up and took several steps back until my back touched the other wall. Just what took over my mind all of a sudden. It's so gross. Uh, it was tasty. I brought my fang to my mouth and licked it. No, am I going insane? I am not a maniac psychopath who slices its prey and then licks the blade while also eating its flesh. Did I really describe myself just now? 29. I will start crying if things keep on going like this. No directions, no one to help and cast away in uncharted land run over with unfathomable and super strong monsters. No way. I ended up finishing it too quickly. Wait. What was I even eating? More, more, more. Why I feel always so hungry from the moment I was born. I need to check my status. Status window. Name. Dash age. 9 days and 6 hours race. Arachne level. 1 HP. 25,000 MP. ERRSP. ERR unique skill. All seeing eyes of the gods. Skills. Glutton ELV1. Poison magic. Thread magic. Sage of Fire LV1, Sage of Water LV2, Sage of Wind LV1, Sage of Space Time LV2, Sage of Ice LV1, Body Strengthening LV2, Body Durability LV3, Sage of Divine Light, Title, Legacy of Goddess Rachne. 30. Was I really asleep for 9 days? Well newborn babies do need to sleep more but isn't sleeping for so long just overkill. And I was so defenseless all this time. These damn bugs just keep on bothering me. Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Food slash 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 chomp. Ah, they all have unique tastes and smell so fresh too. Next time I will try cooking them. Roasting them does sound good. Slash chomp. My fangs really are quite sharp. These beetle-like monsters are quite sturdy and their shells are uniquely built and come in different colors. They are just about my size and each of them has a unique flavor. The green ones taste like mint while the black ones taste exactly as black pepper. The brown smells like chocolate but are a bit on the sour side. That's it. Why can't I focus? There are more pressing matters to concern myself with. Control Siki. Control dot dot size. Well there are no more bugs for the time being, so back to business. For some reason my HP which was at starting 100 were now dazzling in 5 digits. And what's with these new skills? 31. They were not there before. It's obviously not because I was sleeping. Could it have to do with my magic experimentation? The system recognized my magic after I performed it for the first time. But the body enhancement skills obviously came from somewhere else. I think I exactly know where. Gluttony? It means eternal hunger. I am pretty sure of it. The root cause of my sinister actions and embarrassing behavior. But I am unsure of its mechanism and characteristics. But I have a feeling that it is because I ate the monster corpse. They were strong indeed and their body was enhanced highly. Well we will see to that after I feed on more. I would need an investigative skill to know more about this place and about myself. As for I am delighted to see that I can develop my own magic if I have an understanding of the world and the laws that governs it. That means I can even use the logic and science from my world to cultivate my powers. Now the last three things I need to address. My level is still one. I need to look into the matter of leveling up. For that I need to defeat monsters and kill them. Will I be really able to do that? Also the Sage of Divine Li GHT doesn't show any level parameter. What does that implies? The second thing is my title is too absurd. I know I am a spider but, what does that have to do with a goddess? The only goddess I care about is Lady Athena for now. 32. The most important thing of all, which I couldn't check up last time. My unique skill, all seeing eyes of the gods. It sounds sweet and too overpowered, but how do I use it in the first place? Do I need a chant, magic circle or an offering? It's not a game that if I just say activate it will work. Status. Unable to activate unique skill. Sufficient level not reached. Eh. It won't. But don't surprise me with a pop-up message. Yes. 
As I was saying I was sure of it that the word activate could have pulled this off. After all the status window is a unique feature of a game, though it also determines the probability that whether you will survive here or not. Gruch, I am still hungry, and nothing is left here to eat. I don't want to go left or right, but head straight from where the scorpion barged in. I smell food. I am sure the beetles came from there. I went to the huge hole in the wall. It almost resembled the shape of the scorpion though distorted at some corners. I am sure this wall architect will sell in an art exhibition. I could get rich, but monsters do not put these kinds of events. Though there could be a corpse display event I guess, an eat all you like, kill all you want, kind of thing. I was somehow unable to see on the other side as it was darker than my surrounding. Light was unable to travel through this huge crevice. I wonder why that is. 33 just for keeping my guard up. I first tried to put one of my fangs into it. It vanished. Ah, my hand. I quickly pulled it back. Oh it's fine. Okay then. I can't w8 anymore. Food is calling and I always answer my calls. Though, I didn't receive any in my previous life except for the friendly customer care bot. I jumped into the distorted area and landed on something soft. It was a grass plane. Not too big, but it was still wonderful to see that such a thing existed in a labyrinth. For a moment I thought I was outside, but then my eyes caught up to the walls that limited my view and a huge light source hung over the top. It was a huge crystal ball. Actually a cluster of crystals in a wide arc, giving light as bright as sun and was of white and blue color. While the left corner contained lots of trees like a small overgrown forest. The right corner had a fresh water pond. My bath routine is set. The other end left corner had somewhat of a different texture to it. Small legs scattered in hundred were either half broken or punctured. The other corner had a huge cliff and above it I could see a doorway. My eyes couldn't believe it. It was an exit. But I shouldn't get NY hopes up. It could be an entrance to another floor like this. The ground is too soft and the turf is green with grass blades spread all across this room. I started rubbing my face in the green and felt its freshness, 34, but I am still hungry, where are those beetle snacks, I want more of them to eat, I can't hold back any longer, I closed my eyes and started concentrating, at first I didn't know what I was doing, it doesn't make any sense, it's as if my body was moving involuntarily, for some time it was dark, obviously, but after a few seconds, I could see colorful lines moving, and then the whole area became visible to me, in a misty colorful world of rainbows. It was not normal. Acquired advanced magic sense. That's cool, so I can gain skills through natural instincts too. BZZZ, BZZZZZZ, BZZZZZ. I could hear all kind of noises which I couldn't hear before. The flowing water, the beetle buzzing afar and the shaking trees. I could even tell the exact distance between the beetle and me and also count their exact numbers. Exactly 352 beetles all in green, brown, black and other new colors. I wonder what they taste like. All of them were in the forest, flying without a care. But what do they know that a predator has made its entrance? Oh, I am coming. But they are still far. Even if I walk up to there. I am afraid that they will be alerted and fly away. I need to be creative while catching them and kill them in an instant. I also need to get used to my spider body and its characteristic skills. A spider without its web is useless and poison is what makes me formidable. I hope I do not drink my own poison and die. I wonder are spiders immune to their own poison. It's not that I want to try. 35. But surely I'd like to know, in case I start biting myself in my excessive hunger strike. But how do I use my webs? I have seen spider throwing webs from its back in my world. Could it be the same here? SHH. I'm being pulled back. Ah, thump. My head just now hit a rock. I looked back and there was the white thread I was looking for. While its one side was attached to the wall, the other side was sticking out through my back. It's super strong and super sticky at that. I wonder WH chats its total length could be and how strong it can be. Also I need to see to what thickness it can vary. Then the question is of the amount I can produce in one go. I picked up the thread and analyzed it. Unconsciously I knew which parts I had to touch that were non-sticky. 
It's kind of amazing to know things without knowing. If only it could have happened during our tests. Unconsciously answers popping in our mind. That's what school life should be about. For some reason, I could only imagine Spider-Man throwing its webs across the city and moving from one location to another in an instant. Wait I forgot I had the teleportation skills. How stupid of me to forget about such a handy spell. Teleportation. 36. I was standing just outside a tall lumber tree within its shade's edge. Okay, it's spider time. I launched my web on one of the branches to cling to it. SHH dot dot HH. Ah, it missed. Well of course it's my first time. You cannot expect perfection in one go. 25 tries later. This time I won't miss. Yes dot dot ho. I was so happy on my achievement that my world literally turned upside down. I was just hanging from the branch and unable to move. It's good to know that at least my thread can handle my own weight. I do not want myself flying away from the destination just because the string broke due to the tension. So don't make fun of me. Learn from every experience you can nnnn. Thump. Why do I always fall head butt and roll around? It's probably due to my body structure. Thank goodness. No one is around to see this unsightly display. Now I need to work on my momentum and leap across through dress while changing threads. What tough luck. But if I need to hunt, then this is the right time while no dangerous monsters are around. 37. I think I am getting the hang of it. It's fun to just wave around tree to tree. I have been doing this for around 15 minutes without a break. I am so excited that I had forgotten everything about landing. Should I just leave the thread? Because if I do that, thump, you may crash. So always keep your eyes on the road, said the old man whom I once helped cross the road. Funny part is he was engrossed in his own world while chatting on the phone and giving me a lesson on road safety tips. Why did I even bother to help him in the first place? Swoo. What? Why is the tree breaking down? I just bumped into it. I had no intention of wrecking it. Maybe because my body is just that strong since my HP points are so high and not to forget about the body enhancement skills. It's kind of scary to just bump and destroy anything but for now I think it's all in the good. Since there are no glassware here and no neighbor's house with broken window to shout at me. Zzzzzzzz, I think they are coming. It s hunting time. I thought if I open my mouth wide then I would be able to see my poison coated incisors but maybe not. But I am sure they are sharp enough to pierce through the tough body armor of the beetles. I flailed across the trees giving me the vibe of a jungle kid. So this is how Tarzan must have felt during his first rounds across the jungle. 38. From today on this is my turf. But where we will go great lord spider, have mercy. Imaginary beetle. Fine then. You can just take shelter in my stomach. I will allow that. Thank you, my lord. Nothing will make us happier than to take refuge under your protection. Imaginary beetle. Come my subjects. First I will start with mint, chocolate, then maybe pepper. A-H-H dot I am sorry I misspoke. I meant to say green, brown and black color beetles first. I think this is how it should go. I think now I have got the permission of the beetle tribe chief. There should be no problem while I mass murder them. I me and bestow upon them my eternal protection. Swoosh. Slash. Two down. 350 left. It seems that these beetles are newborn from eggs and since they hatched just now so they can't even put up a fight. Nor the have a defensive mechanism to ensure their survival in harsh conditions or if a certain emergency crisis arises. This process of flying. Slashing kept on repeating itself till all the 352 confirmed beetle targets were dead. Time to pick up some fresh meat in a dungeon. Within an hour I had eaten more than 300 beetles. While I tried different combinations, some roasted, some boiled with lake water, some 39, frozen by using ice magic, and while having them raw was neither bad nor something good to experience either. I lied on the ground while my tummy facing upwards I took a deep breath, trying to blow whistles, which ultimately was unsuccessful, in attempts to put curtains when I burped. Finally my hunger cooled down. I was at ease and my starving murderous personality vanished. What another wave. They don't let me rest do they? But don't you worry because I am ready for all you can eat round two. 
This time I was too bored to just wave around my hand scythes. Also the number was unreasonably huge measuring up to 500. Are they here for revenge? I had already come up with a devious plan. I had by now learned to control the thickness of my thread to the point of making them invisible to the naked eye. The more the thickness I reduced the denser and sturdier they became. I took shelter in the huge gathering of trees and waited for the arrival of food that delivers to home itself free of cost. If you are wondering how this is gonna end then just watch and learn. Cack, cack, cack. 40. All the buzzing beetle that were mindlessly heading in my direction got mercilessly slashed down by the almost invisible threads I laid down all across the entrance of the forest till my safe point. Tuck, tuck. Countless almost pine cone falling in a cold autumn evening like sounds could be heard. Ah, one escaped just with a cut. It will escape. Chase it or it will escape. If you are thinking that, then don't fret over such trivial matter. SHRR, tuck. The poison is super effective. It died in an instant after a cut. Yes, you are indeed correct. I had sprayed poison over all the webs to make sure no one rises from the dead. But the poison is stronger than my expectation. I need to use my poison on more monsters to know its exact limits and potential uses. I think all the dead bodies are wrapped up. Time to dig in. I am considering eating half of them while the rest I will put in my storage for later. This white new color species almost tastes like whipped cream. I wonder there could be a sweet beetle too. I show I'll get too excited and lose my cool. Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z 41 Thud. What was that? Wha? I went flying after I felt a huge pressure hurting my stomach and tearing down all the trees in my trajectory. Blood spilled out from my mouth and my abdomen appeared to be half punctured. Is this a cute stomach ache? No it is not you idiot. Someone had H in me hard. Even my magic sense couldn't pick it up. Is it a new monster? I let my guard down for a while and this happens. Was it waiting for me to ease up all along and make a sneak attack and knock me with a decisive blow? I need to locate this opponent quickly and come up with a plan of action to slay it. I took shelter back at my hiding spot behind the safety of the vile web traps. I thought I was safe here, but all my hopes shattered when a huge beetle broke through all the webs like it was some cheap poor quality thread spread across its way. Tick, 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 tick. All the webs were down and this beetle didn't have a single scratch on it. But now I have got a better look at my adversary. A strong, huge built body. Almost ten times my body size. Covered all over with rainbow colored huge scales and brown bisected wings oscillating at an unbelievable speed making even the air vibrate in its vicinity. How annoying. 42. But the feature that stood among all was a long and solid black rod stuck on its head which it used brilliantly to break through my string and knock me to such a long distance. Well, thanks for creating the distance. Close combat is unfavorable for a weak fragile spider like me. Swoosh. This humongous beetle without any hesitation charged in and covered the disparity between us in an instant. It bent down and made a quick upward movement to hit me with its trunk and severe my head. Not happening. I used my webs and waved across to the left and climbed on the tallest tree of the area. It was a hair's breadth gap between my evasion and its attack. Doesn't it know that murder is a crime? Not that I am one to talk after annihilating hundreds of its brethren. I cannot stay hidden for long. I need to use ranged magic attacks to take it down. I tried to first burst the oxygen around its body. But it didn't even leave a scratch. Maybe it has high magic resistance too. I need something that packs a punch in one go. My ultimate plasma ball has its best application here, due to its strong firepower and its versatility to ranged and close quarter adaptability. I started preparing my spell in both hands. I tried to pour the maximum magic energy I could handle by far and fused the two magic balls of fire and water. The fusion was almost complete. Unless a weird and sinister feeling crept over me. I felt a sudden 43 force pulling me down and the giant beetle was flying in my direction. How can it even fly with those puny flimsy wings? This huge pressure over me. Is it controlling gravity and pulling me down and impale me with its spear-like nose? I had launched a half-ready magic ball at the beetle but it easily dodged it and effortlessly took the after-impact of the blast. 
I spread across my webs and shifted from its trajectory, and surprisingly the effect of gravity was gone. So it can use this power only in a certain region at a certain point. I jumped from tree to tree trying to close in and attack it with my fangs or poison it by biting. Here I come. I stumbled again just when I was a meter apart from it and got crushed to the ground. This sudden pressure again. So it has activated a field of gravity magic in its surrounding to slow my movements and making a jump over him. I started running after rising up which took almost all of my strength. I ran deeper into the forest and took the flight again, but it was not going to give up on me this easily. It easily chased me down. If I get too close then I will be pulled down again. Whoosh, thump. Something hit me from the back. It was not as strong as the previous attack but I felt the pain and my internal organs being pummeled is not something desirable. As I was falling down I, 44, looked at the pointed end of the tusk and a considerably large sized black magical orb formed around it. It launched it at me again, but this time I dodged it by sticking my claws in the trees and abruptly halting my movements. It has ranged attacks too. Now it has been 5 minutes I have been running around sometimes dodging or taking hits trying my best to safeguard my vital points like stomach, head and rear. My legs and head were bleeding. I was running out of breath. I needed to make the final move soon. Okay, the out for blood beetle which was up till now flying nonchalantly, suddenly stopped moving. I have this time apprehended it with my threads, covered all around its body. What, did you think? I was just running around like a fool without any plan. At least not anymore. It won't take any long before it breaks free. Seeing the beetle struggling to break free in the jumble of my nets made me happy and I wanted to say to it, serves you right, but it won't understand me either way so there is no point to it. We were just two unknown being trying to kill each other to ensure our own survival. That was all there is to it. The temptation to attack it was getting stronger and stronger, but if I get too close then I will just be crushed underneath its gravity field. I ran as fast as I could to get far away. 45. Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z It had already broken free, but I have already achieved what I wanted. Time. I need to have patience if I want to survive for the longest where it's kill or be killed. Every time I hear it or say this to myself I wonder if the person who came up with this phrase must be scared to death. Afraid of his own life and that being translated into hatred directed towards other. Unable to find a befitting reason to kill someone. He wanted to murder someone so badly, but lacked the intent to kill. But if you think about it more deeply, isn't it just an excuse that the stronger has the only right to live, while the weak must submit to the strong? Of course, we can find people who deserve to die but someone who deserves to kill dot dot exist or not. I am not sure of tick. I broke my web attached to the tree at the edge of the forest and landed perfectly at the rear of the dungeon end wall. I was now facing my adversary eye to eye as it landed at a much larger distance, just in front of me. It was now scratching its hind fatty crooked leg along the ground to prepare for a quick dash. This was the final moment which would decide the winner. No, the air survivor. The one who was truly strong among us would get to live another day, another day to fight again and again. This cycle, every time I realize about being stuck in it makes my head hurts. But for now, I cannot close my eyes nor hesitate. I could already feel its gravity magic pressure developing over me as time passed. But I had been preparing my spell for a long time for now. The two huge fireball and water ball flying over me were ready to fuse. There, 46 magical force radiating through these two large power culminations was exhilarating me. I was proud of my achievement to achieve such perfection. The beetle was too ready with its black magic orb which was much denser and darker than before. Give it your all, because if you don't then you will die. I yelled those words as loudly as I could, but in true sense they were meant for me. I cannot die here or cower down in fear like previous times. I cannot have lucky moments always. Zoom. Zo Both of us dashed at our max speed closing in. It was a foolish move have it not been for this. Just when I was a little far, almost a meter apart I fused the two magic balls and used teleport. I was in the sky, now a meter above the beetle and under the incomprehensibly unbearable pressure of its gravity magic. 
but that works in my favor as it increased my acceleration due to gravity. I was falling at a much quicker pace and in that very moment under that influence of this strong force field, I twisted my body with all my might and spinning around elegantly descended. Kaboom! The fusion ball hit the most protected region of the beetle. It's back, but the power of my fusion ball far exceeded its defense and my 47 expectations as the earth cracked creating a huge crater and the nearby innocent trees got rooted out by the after impact of the blast. I lie just beside the beetle corpse casting healing magic on myself. Divine heal. While one was trying to catch its breath and smile after a fight the other party lay emotionless trying to take its final breath. While the survivor gets to dream for another day, the dream of the loser is sacrificed and shattered in pieces. I hate it. Is this the path of becoming a hero? Can I really save the world because now I can kill? This was my new reality. The present in which I was living in. A new life and a path left untrodden and unanswered. With death at every step, and being tested at every turn, I must alone myself walk this path. I wonder did I chose this path for myself or did this path chose me? But I will do whatever it takes to get the future I want. To live with the people I care about. That's all I want a simple, long peaceful life. This was my choice. A chance to experience new things, to understand myself a bit more and a chance to learn about others as I cleared hurdles one after another. I promise to myself that instead of sacrificing the dream of those I kill, I will accept this responsibility and remember them till the day I die. That will be my metal. But for now, Chomp. 48. Chomp. Chomp. I am hungry after such a rough battle and my inside enemies cannot hold it anymore. Now, when I think about it this was my very first battle in which I fought on my own accord and won. If I say so, I am surprised myself that I am getting the hang of it much sooner than expected. It's coming so natural to me that I looked at my reflection in the lake water while I drank from it and wondered was it due to my monster psychology. Am I forever gonna be like this? Why do I suddenly feel so sleepy? I fell on the ground and white webs automatically started generating from my body and slowly covered my entire being forming a cocoon-like structure around me. I don't know what's happening but I think it's for my own good that I sleep dot for a while. 49 10 days later, just when I thought I couldn't sleep anymore. It's as if I am waking up from a deep hibernation. I tried cutting down the threads with my claws and jumped out of the shell. My body was too stiff to move as freely as I wanted and my eyes were still adjusting to the bright light. Until then, I was surprised to see a light blue virtual screen in front of me. You have leveled up. All seeing eyes of the gods activated. First form, eye of investigation. Glutton E reached level 2. Wow. These are like phone notifications you see after waking up from the bed. Well, time to see what happens when you level up. Status. Eye of investigation activated. 50. Dot. Status window. Affect of eye of investigation. Name. Dash age. 20 days race. Arachne level. 2 HP. 40,000 MP. ERRSP. ERR unique skill. All seeing eyes of the gods first form. Eye of investigation. Appraisal analysis at vacancy magic sense danger sense skills, glutton ELV2, poison magic, thread magic, sage of fire LV3, sage of water LV4, sage of wind LV1, sage of space time LV2, sage of ice LV2, body strengthening LV2, body durability LV5, sage of divine light, gravity magic LV5, magic resistance. Titles, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Unable to Derive Information, Gluttony, LV2, Appraisal Activated, Devour Corpses and Their Souls Gaining Their Skills, HP, MP and SP Added to Your Own Stats, 51, 52, Interlude-Preparations for the Future, Wow My Skills, Have All Leveled Up and This All-Seeing Eyes of the God Have Shown Its True Colors. I just can't wait to use it. I walked to the entrance of the room and just thought about using the eye of investigation as my status window said. I could feel a burning sensation in my eyes and also pledge that I felt my eyes were glowing blood red. Appraisal, the Great Tathile Labyrinth, Floor 50. I see so this is exactly a game like labyrinth but with my life on the line.
It is no more like a simple game. I doubt I will have the luxury to enjoy it as a shirt in pro gamer. But I will play it, and victoriously escape this cringe place. I think I can now have all the information I need to survive this place. And after defeating that super strong beetle I have more confidence in my abilities as if I was meant to do this one day. I used appraisal on Tathia Labyrinth and was amazed to see its potential history and that this whole place has 100 floors in it. At present I am on floor 50. If I climb up, then I will be free in no time. But I need to make preparations and test all my skills one by one in a day and search for more food for my sustenance. Well they might. 53. Get ready for me at floor 49, till I feast upon the remaining beetles in my storage. For some time I wanted to know more about the materials I found in this place. I walked to the center of the room and looked upwards. The beautiful crystalline thorn-like structures hanging from the ceiling and radiating a spectrum of vibrant colors illuminating the whole plane like a solar disk. I wanted to know more about this new beautiful element. I used my eye of investigation and this is what I found. They are called magitite and are a special kind of crude ore that absorbs magic from the surrounding area. It seems that it is overloaded for now and that's why radiating light with such high intensity. At present it is just crude ore and so has no use for me. But just maybe if I am able to get a crafting or alchemy skill, since it is a fantasy world so there must be one, then I am sure that I can put it to good use. Time for some mining. I opened my dimensional storage near the cluster of magitite and they just got sucked inside it. My dimensional storage surely resembles a black hole. But if it's like that then it reduces my work and raises efficiency. Which girl ever wants to enter a mine with a hammer and spade to get the required minerals? It was not only the ceiling but the side walls, the cliff and the bottom of lake. All had this shining bright stuff lying idly. I am sure no one would mind if I hogged them all for myself. I went back to the other floor from where I came from and did the same. But before leaving I had an interesting idea. I went to the lake. 54 and tried to pull a stunt. I opened a huge opening to my dimensional storage and stored all the water in it. Now the question of the day, will the magitite get wet or not? I pulled out some ores back and they were still dry. That proves that inside my storage each entity is stored in a separate compartment or is rather stored in new small pocket dimension. It sounds super. Cool. I bet every multinational corporation on earth would kill to have this kind of purse. But at present it's mine and mine alone. There is no sharing. I headed back to floor 50 and found myself in a pinch. I made a big mistake to take off with all the magitite. Now the entire room is in dark. I am glad that at least monsters from other floors cannot enter or invade someone else's floor unless there is an unforeseeable event like a wall break or dimensional crack. Time to come up with new magic tricks or attacks. I need to work on defensive spells too. If only there could be a teacher to teach me new spells then this entire process of learning could be faster. But making spells of my own made them easier to use and the ability to control elements on my free will made it much quicker. Being self-taught is not that bad, if the magic I create proves more effective and useful for what I use them for. For now I had been using fusion ball and it has always proved to be handy and highly successful. I need to try other elements too like wind, ice, earth and the newly gained gravity magic. 55. I went inside the forest and chose the trees as my target practice. When one thinks of using ice, the only thing that comes to my mind is freezing them to death. The next is creating some pointy things like spears or swords with ice and throwing them at the enemy. I first tried controlling temperature and it took some time, visualizing it to freeze is making it a slow process, but what if I think about it on molecular level? What if I slow down the molecule's kinetic energy and increase its potential energy for compensation? Now this extra potential energy will be a burden on my enemy and to counteract it, the building molecules of my enemy will be pushed to force movement using the very life force of the target's body and in turn weakening them. Watty a shrewd spell, an evil indeed. I tried again and in less than a second all the trees in my area were ice cold and were covered in bright white like material. I just out of curiosity touched them and the tree cracked and shattered into small shining shards in an instant. I was dumbfounded. 
Maybe I crashed down its entire molecular structure by bringing it to close to absolute zero. My visualization and comprehensive ability of controlling magic sure is at a high level, or maybe I am just high. Will that make me invincible? Only time will tell. Next I practiced making spears, swords and cannonballs with ice of different sizes and densities. Controlling them in the air took some time and increasing their launching speed was another big hassle. At present I can throw them at almost half the velocity of sound. All that is required is now target practice. After hours of hard work I am able to control 200 icicles simultaneously without missing a target. All that is left is to check their effectiveness against enemy monster. 56. Next is the gravity magic which made the giant beetle a formidable opponent. Now the question is how to use it. Is visualizing more than enough? I thought about the black magical orb that manifested on the beetle's trunk and the same happened in front of me. A huge dark magic orb appeared in front of me and kept growing. I could feel it taking magical energy from me continuously and the sudden change of air current in my surrounding. The ground was breaking and it was being slowly pulled towards the center of the orb. It was like formation of a small planet. I need to do something quick or the whole room will get destroyed and I too will be killed by my own spell. Yes that's right. This is my spell, so I just stopped the inflow of magical energy. Believe me or not, I have gotten a huge grip over my magic control and its understanding and effect towards nature. The rocks fell back to the ground creating a small earthquake haphazard. Ha, safe. I need to work on this spell and make it more efficient and put it to good use. Of course I cannot let go waste of such a strong magic just because I myself become a victim of the spell. I tried again and again keeping in control the magic flow towards the orb, sometime it succeeded but sometimes the spell failed and the orb vanished. After 30 minutes I had managed to pull it off. Not only that I could now summon 20 gravity spheres at the same time and launch them at the target without fail. Yes, did I mention that I now call it gravity sphere? 57. Now I need to work on gravity force field. I need to practice this because it will work in my defense. But for this I was going to use my new ace, a feature of our investigation, analysis. Since I saw how the beetle used it, all I need to do is scan that part of my memory with my mystic eyes and behold, I was able to summon the same force field. Not only that, but it was almost 10x more powerful than before and increasing its force was no problem at all. I could increase this force field for now in almost half the area of the floor or either concentrate it at one place, which usually led to deep crater formation. All that was left was add science to this magic. Here it comes. My new brilliant idea, anti-gravity. With this I could fly or float in the air the entire day and goof off. No I mean keep an eye from above over my enemies. If you think I will slack off. Then you are underestimating me as well as disrespecting my metal and my workaholic tendencies. All I needed to do was visualize about the gravity acting almost in an opposite way or simply putting it reversing the very nature of gravitational force that should work. What is going? I was almost floating in the air along with all the broken trees and rocks but when I lost my concentration I fell headbutt rolling over again and again. I think I casted it in the whole floor. My magic powers sure goes on a rampage now and then. I wonder why my status doesn't show the exact value of these two stats. I would like to know what it means for me. Exactly. I needed to now cast anti-gravity magic only on myself and then use wind magic to control my movements and with my spider 360. 58 degree vision I could keep an eye on my surroundings. That was all the know it flying magic lessons. Time to use it. I tried to focus on the gravity field and manipulated it accordingly by reversing the flow of magic or the streamlines of magic power which I was now able to see thanks to the all-seeing eyes of the gods or rather say the mystic eyes. The flow of magic is like a streamlined glowing light of different colors and is omnipotent. It flows in our body and in our surrounding. If you think of its benefits then, you can predict which kind of spell the opponent is going to use. Red for fire, blue for water, white for wind, brown for earth, golden light for light, black for dark, purple for gravity and so on. Also, you can pinpoint the location of traps or formation of spells in surrounding by sudden change in the flow of magic. 
but coming back at hand, I am pleased to inform you that I was now floating high in the sky till I hit my head with the ceiling. Using wind magic to control my movement was a piece of cake. All I had to work on was now the speed at which I could fly. Since I was running out of time, it was important for me to compromise by using my webs and therefore enhance my movements. Also I discovered that my webs have gotten much stronger and elastic too. The speed of generation and the force at which I spread my webs across have increased considerably. Not to forget that they feel much lighter and soft. I wonder if I could make a futon with my webs to sleep. 59. Not to forget that I can feel that I have learned a new type of poison technique, paralysis. My poison not only can now kill targets but if I want then it can also paralyze my targets. Win the magic, the magic which I had used up till now the least. It's not that I am bad with it, I can easily change the wind current and control it. It's just that I think I have never thought of using it as an attack spell. Usually when I think about wind all it comes to my mind are the sandstorms, cyclones, thunderstorm, but they are all just in conjecture with other elements. Controlling wind to move simply in circles and then throw everything in tandem is not my style. Well the most prominent thing in my mind is to use it as a blade. Controlling a thin layer of layer and projecting it at a very high speed could be one of the best choices. Smooth and crystal clear, wind cutter, moving a thin column of air is not too difficult, if I consider all the air molecules in a single one dimensional packet and use it to bisect across a 3D figure, simply put sliding one dimension across two dimension. Swash s h r r r what in the god's name happened just now? Did I by mistake unleash the spell? The amount of damage? Is it really me? Unbelievable. What I was looking at a whole forest chopped down in half and ground leveled, while the wind didn't stop here, till it hit the wall and left a huge cleavage. 60. Well ah, uh, sorry, sorry, I had no intention to do this. Will the forest officers come and arrest me for illegally chopping down trees? I need to pack my stuff. It's time to leave. Wait, I am no longer on earth, so I am sure in this fantasy world, the trees will grow back magically in no time. But I think I should be thankful to this strong spell, that the ground is leveled. I can now easily practice earth magic. I think I already know what I need. An earth wall spell, a swamp creation spell and creating earth spikes from anywhere from ground. It didn't took me much time to create a thick wall of earth appear in front of me. As for the swamp it works best with loose soil and water. I would like to trap a dinosaur and then keep its fossil for myself as a trophy. I wonder are there such beasts still alive in this world? But the most deadly spell was the earth spikes. Creating certain elongations with pointed edges sure was a tough job. It took all out of me to reach perfection. Initially there were all twisted and curved projection but slowly they took shape and finally bloomed into a deadly flower of piercing thorns. Repetition is the key to mittery. Not to mention, I could easily control the length of these spikes and make them appear through the horizontal, vertical walls and even the ceiling. For the first time I thought this labyrinth was actually in my favor and provides a special advantage to earth magic users. This world is so unfair, well doesn't matter dead people do not complain so I said. 61. In all this self-purposed magic training which actually I was enjoying a lot came to an end. I know you must be thinking of physical combat abilities. I tried doing push-ups and sit-backs but having so many legs makes it confusing and the more unreasonable. I am already more than confident in my running speed and evasion tactics thanks to my monster instincts and danger sense. It's not that I can't punch, but a kick seems more viable. Also the fly and kick slash bite slash slash strategy is best suited for me and easy to enact. It was time for me to head out and explore the new floors myself. I used my dimensional storage and stored all the lake water in it. By now I have more than enough water to flood an entire colony. The entrance to floor 49 was on top of the cliff at the right hand corner of this grassy plain floor. Monsters in this place will always try to hunt me down. The question is what should I do? I do what I can. There are only two choices for me, wait here, and rot, or, keep going, and survive. I looked back and thought I will never come back here again. I had to climb up and reach the first floor. The person, who was waiting for me, 
was all I could think about as I took my first step into the dimension cover of the new floor. 62. Information Brochure The Great Tathaya Labyrinth The Great Tathaya Labyrinth is hidden deep within the Canandra Mountain and its trenches, and is considered the most dangerous place in Isleguard because of the natural instability of the region with highly dense magical region, and is a nest to powerful and dangerous monsters. These mountains separate the landmasses of the Demon or Chaos Continent and the Human Kingdoms in the Northern region. 200 years ago, this place was but a flat land and economy flourished between the two continents as wealth, culture and prosperity was shared. But after it became the final battleground of the Holy Crusade, people started calling it the Cursed Land. The very topography of the region changed. Land masses sunk in the nearby water bodies, while the remaining was rendered unfertile and left barren. Until later it became densely populated with high-level monsters and the wild vegetation which helped these vile creatures thrive here flourished. The corpses, dreams, anxiety, fear, relics of the past, negative emotions all collected and gathered at one single point led to formation of the Great Tathaya Labyrinth. The labyrinth consists of 100 floors with each containing a certain species of monster or a single catastrophe class monster. Most of the monster species are considered intelligent and their desire to kill far exceeds any other monsters on land. Also the labyrinth is home to many relics and legendary weapons that were lost during the Holy War. Magitite is yet another precious and most expensive and rarest tour on land but is present in abundance in the lower floors of the labyrinth. 63. All-seeing eyes of the gods a unique skill possessed by one of the reincarnates Saki Kondo. In initial stages it is a non-combat oriented blessing, but can be put to great use during fights if certain conditions are met. Originally, it is one of the special skills of Almighty World God himself. As per record there are only two other gods who possessed this ability and is said to possess a total of eight special forms which manifests as the holder grows mentally and physically or during certain emergency conditions when the requirements are fulfilled. First form, Eye of Investigation Abilities Appraisal allows user to see the target's information while only giving the name on lower levels. On higher levels it also reveals the target's status values, titles, and skills. Analysis allows user to scan any object, living being and energy source and provides with the required information based on user's capabilities. Also helps to understand the nature of magic and spells leading to their evolution as the user grows. Advanced magic sense and danger sense allows users to perceive the flow of magic in any object living being or surrounding areas provides a comprehensive understanding and sense of hostility from another being or special environment night vision allows users to see clearly in the dark can even see through closed eyelids if desired and even during sleep 64 status window every living being in the world of Isleguard has a status window a frame designed by the world system to measure and keep a check on the growth of this world so the reincarnators and gods will too be provided with this status window. Common elements of the status window. Name, dash, age, dash, race, dash, level, dash, HP, dash, MP, dash, SP, dash, skills, dash, titles, dash, health points, HP. This is the parameter that measures health status of an individual. If someone takes damage from an attack or suffers from an illness then his health points start decreasing. When health points hits zero the individual dies. HP points is directly proportional to health, endurance, dexterity, agility, stamina, body strength and speed. Hence more HP points gained a day, keeps the doctor away. 65. Magic Power Slash Magic Points MP. This is the parameter that measures the amount of magic a person can store in his body and use in magic arts and spells. The more the magic points the more the person has an affinity for magic and restores magic from the surrounding easily then reproduce it slowly inside the body again. Magic power can be basically of three forms. Magic of the mortal realm, divinity of heaven, the divine realm, black miasma or dark matter of hell. The basic attribute of magic are fire, wind, earth and water. 
Light and darkness are other independent attributes. Mixture of two or more attributes give rise to a totally new nature of magic like wood, water plus earth, magmas, earth plus fire, and ice, water and heat manipulation. Then there are other special independent attributes like beast tamas, sound, lightning, metal, gravity, shadow and many more which depends on sophisticated and special affinity for the base elements. Other psychic powers do exist like telekinesis, space and time control magic, telepathy etc. Soul power, SP. Soul power directly refers to the individual's life force or energy. Every individual has his own soul core placed inside one soul realm. The larger the soul core and the denser it is the more the soul power is and the larger the soul realm and its constitution the more the soul power it can contain inside it. If the soul core ever breaks or the SP parameter hits zero the individual dies. Using SP, combatants practice special arts called or a spiritual art which increases every fighting aspects like instincts, mobility, endurance, combat abilities and heightened senses. Even majors uses SP points to convert them into MP and recover their lost magic quickly. 66. Monster Diary Lizard Monster. Catastrophe Class. Name. Heladamar. Age, 160 years. Race, Reptile Gila Monster. Level, minus 3000. HP, 15000. MP, 10000. SP, 20000. Skills, Body Armor LV7, Body Reinforcement LV8, Earth Magic LV5. 67. Monster Diary Scorpion Monster. Catastrophe Class. Name, Madaka. Age. 185 years race monster level minus 3500 hp 25000 mp 5000 sp 30000 skills body armor lv9 body reinforcement lv8 poison magic lv7 piercing lv9 68 monster diary beetle monster class b name divine messenger age 5 days race Divine Bug Messenger. Level, minus 50. HP, 5000. MP, 10,000. SP, 2000. Skills, Body Armor LV5, Body Reinforcement LV5 Earth Slash Fire Slash Wind Slash Water Slash Light Magic LV5. Rainbow Golder Beetle Monster, Class, S. Name, Clid. Age, 5 Days. Race, Divine Bug Messenger. Level, minus 900. HP, 50,000 MP, 20,000 SP, 15,000 Skills, Body Armor LV10, Body Reinforcement LV10, Gravity Magic LV8 Title, Kinita, Feeds Upon Own Kind to Enhance Its Stats 69. Leveling System and IT's Mechanism Every individual capabilities and potential are summarized by the world system and the process data is visible as information in status window. Every individual above level 20 is granted by a basic appraisal skill and from then onwards they can see others' status window. But if the level of target is much much higher than the user, then the status window appears hazy or distorted. Each skill can be maxed up to level 10 and then there are three pathways colon. 1. The skill becomes permanent and the level label is removed. 2. The skill evolves or combines with other skills giving birth to a new advanced skill. 3. The maxed out skill converts into a title. Not to mention that every species has their own leveling standards. For example, a level 500 slime can be defeated easily by a level 20 human. But a level 200 demon can easily defeat a level 500 human. Usually people prefer to hide their status and skills or sham them by using a fake skill. 70. Magitite or a legendary stone, rock or mineral of impenetrable hardness and has exceptional magical properties. When regular ores are exposed to dense concentrations of magical powers and other special supernatural conditions, the ores will slowly absorb them and eventually turn into magitite ore. Since such deep concentrated magical concentration is hard to come by and the period of formation is extended over hundreds of years is hard. These ores alone are considered highly rare and serves as reserves for national treasure or as liquid money in national treasury by all the human kingdoms and even in the demon continent. Due to the high magic concentration requirements for this ore to form, 
Usually only high-ranking adventurers can obtain it from deep underground dungeons, dangerous unexplored mountains or at the bottom of the deep seas. Magitite ore is hard to obtain in itself but it is still considered unrefined and incomplete for proper use unless purified, which is yet another expensive process and the output is extremely low. The material is exceptional at inducting magical power, enabling any objects made from magitite ore to grow with their user. It allows the user to reflect, absorb, channel, or even store magical attacks up to a certain threshold. Its worth can be ascertained by the fact that only the high-ranking knights in the army has access to the weapons and armors forged with this ore and is even exchanged in form of gifts or as family heirlooms among nobles. However, in an unexplored and extremely dangerous labyrinth, the Great Tathar Labyrinth where no human has explored below floor 12 and those who attempted never came back alive, due to the presence of catastrophe monster on every floor. The whole dungeon is filled with large amounts of magitite ore, found nowhere else on the entire planet. 71, 72, Chapter 2 Can goblins perform photosynthesis? I passed through the dimensional veil and a new floor presented itself to me. Now how can I explain it to you? Because I myself was too confused to see the structure and topography of this region. I was standing on a small rocky projection at the top, almost touching the ceiling and almost 500 meter below me stood a village made of temporary huts and strange green colored creatures were going in and out through the doorways. The whole floor was divided into five sections based on height and yet eccentric buildings built over them. The lowermost region consisted of small huts, but the next elevation over 10 meters consisted of somewhat clay-built buildings that showed complete lack of architectural knowledge and negligence. 73. The third elevation on the left side of over 20 meters consisted of two or three storied wooden buildings. The same went at 40 meters where two strongholds of barricaded towers stood. Finally, at the center of the front wall stood a huge shrine-like structure whose gates were closed and below this mound was an opening which must have been the entrance to the next upper floors. This entrance was closely guarded by several tiny creatures having green-colored skin ranging from light shades to ultra-dark. They had wooden spears or maces with thorns embedded. They had a brutal built and looked intimidating at the same time. At the center of all was a giant tree but instead of having leaves, Chunks of magitite crystals were hanging from the branches. It almost looked like a tree laden with beautiful and shining crystals. There was no doubt about it, these were the standard fantasy goblins everyone talks about. In some stories they are shown as ruthless barbaric creatures, while some showed their soft side by building cities and developing ties with other races. However, I always wondered what do they eat and why? Since this looks like a civilized town I can try to explain them my situation and ask for a special emergency exit, but what if they are like come in, dine with us on the table, and after eating we will listen to your problem. No, what do you mean on the table instead of chair and who do you really want to eat? I could almost see myself on their chopping board while the gob butcher stares at pale face with the anticipation to finally chop it into small pieces. They are perverts. They deserve to die. 74. Die, die, die. The goblins always appear to be green and just maybe and by any chance they could have chlorophyll pigment in their skin and can perform photosynthesis. Or maybe I am thinking too much. Just then I heard some goblins carrying a small wooden cart covered around with wooden bars, resembling a mobile jail. Inside them were other goblins. But they looked pretty old and weak to me. TCH gay, TCH gay. Without any concern the other armed goblins put together their spears and impaled the prisoners. I almost let out a loud cry, but controlled myself by biting my inside soft cheeks. That's how I usually control my facial expressions. That was painful. No way, no way. They cannot. A goblin with a long sword lifted the wooden plank which worked as the primitive lock of the prison and started slashing them to pieces. Blood sprayed through the air and the cell was covered with the color and smell of death. That's cannibalism. I thought as the butcher picked up one of the fallen meat piece and chugged it down its throat. It was satisfied as if measuring the quality and other food standards of the meat. Obviously, those wee goblins are in no position of committing crime unless their crime is that of old age or some other weak ailments. They served as 75.
food for the other strong goblins. The young fed on the old and rusted, that was the harsh reality for those who lived in this labyrinth. There's no way I am gonna end up like that. I saw the goblina sent to the cell, while some of them savored the meat. The others collected them in a huge sack and carried them to the other floors and houses. I am going to survive, this hell. On that note this place was really huge, and I wondered just how big this labyrinth could be. Whatever, I'm getting hungry. There's no point in hanging around here forever, so I'll just have to get a move on and come up with a plan to annihilate them. I used appraisal and was surprised to see that this whole place is actually five floors coexisting together from 49 to 45 floors, just the same as the number of elevated lands here. There were many types of goblins colon, goblin fighters, LV 500 to LV 1000, goblin general, LV 2000, goblin magician, LV 2500, goblin chief, LV 4000. All of the normal goblins had high combat skills and high defenses, but the above floor goblins were in the realm of their own and specialized in what their names supposed of them to be. The goblin general had sword skills like, piercing, and, quick draw. The goblin magicians were well versed in, dark magic LV4, earth magic LV5, and, wood magic LV4. 76. The goblin chief was a tough opponent with both sorcery and hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. He could be also called a sorcerer brawler with skills like, shadow movement LV4, fire fist, water magic LV6, dark magic LV5, he was fit to rule over the goblin village. The levels matched to the floor and their heights, also representing who is the boss here. But, what concerned me the most was their, shrine. Neither my appraisal work nor my magic senses picked up anything. It's as if the whole place was under the cover of an anti-magic field. Considering the situation up till now it's not impossible. However my danger sense always went berserk when I looked at the gateway of the shrine. Weird, right? By now no goblin had spotted me. Neither someone would expect that a tiny little spider would be plotting against them while it hides above the sky. I crawled to the roof and headed to the center where I hid myself in between the cluster of white crystals almost camouflaging with them. The goblin fighters were almost 200 in number, while there were four goblin general, two goblin magician and one goblin chief. Twenty goblins were always at patrol near the entrance and four goblins would bring the cage after every four hours and wait under the tree for the butcher. By now I already knew their weakness, food. I just need to exploit this point and I could turn the tides in my favor. Hey, -e. I can see the future. 77, 78, after five hours, a new cage with ten goblin prisoners arrived being escorted by four goblin fighters. They halted near the tree and took positions at each corner of the cage. It sure is a good strategy to keep the food safe from ground attacks, but they sure didn't expect an enemy lurking in the sky. This was my chance, to wreak havoc, as I descended from above. Sheesh. S-H-R-R-R. Sheesh. S-H-R-R-R. One could hear the sound of a rope twisting around the goblin's neck as it quickly fastened itself. The grip being so tight that even before the goblin could cry out their last words, life was flushed out of them. My webs were so sharp and the pressure was so high that they cut deep enough that blood started flowing out. I activated gluttony for the first time and black color threads came out from my body and started curling around the dead goblin corpses covering them from head to toe and finally squeezing them to the point that the ball of black webs vanished. It almost felt like I ate something. All the four dead goblins met the same fate. So this is how gluttony actually works. First this special kind of black webs envelops the targets and through special kind of organic processes dissolves the matter and organic substances converting them directly into raw energy which works as nourishment for the user, which is me. What it would have taken me almost 10 minutes to eat four goblins was now done in less than a second. It saves time and also so the gross feeling of eating something nasty and I don't know how to put in 79 words. But you get it and if you don't then I welcome you to try eating raw cabbage dipped in coconut oil and covered all over in chili powder, because that's how it actually felt. Not to forget that it was just the head. By now the goblin prisoners started panicking, by the sudden turn of events and the appearance of a friendly little white spider. Hi, sorry. 
that you met such fate, but all I can do is put you out of misery and end your life without suffering the pain of being mercilessly chopped. I created some ice lances and severed the necks from the bodies in an instant and hurriedly used gluttony on them. Finally I made sure not to leave any traces of blood in my smell as I fled from the crime scene. I am glad that the gluttony skill leveled up because it proved to be handy. I want to level it more just like my unique skill. They are all very useful. Thanks to Lady Athena, my unique skill proved to be the most important skill I needed to survive in this hell. Who needs some stupid or high specs destructive skills? Could they even bother to come down here and help me? 80. Plan in motion. 10 minutes had passed and the goblin butcher finally made its appearance. Just a short distance away from the tree squatted a goblin, yawning. The green-skinned monster spinned around his long broadsword and slowly approached the cage. At first he stuttered and stumbled on the ground. His face went pale as he stood and started banging on the cage bars. At first it was in panic but then started mumbling to himself. Dollar hash dollar percent dollar percent carrot hash at hash dollar. You can't understand it can you? I know, it's tough when someone approaches you and suddenly starts speaking in a foreign language. You are frustrated and at the same time suspicious that you are being badmouthed by a prankster or a foreigner when some of the words start sounding familiar to your own dictionary of slang words. But don't you worry because I can't either. Break a leg, colon. From here on it is my duty to translate the most expected dialogues from these goblins as the story unfolds. But. Don't expect too much from me. There's only so much that a little spider like me can do. Those stupid gobs are gone and ran away with the food. Eah, unforgivable. Justice, I demand justice. But the blame will fall on me. I will for now pretend nothing happened and return for the next serving. The gob butcher for some reason was waving both hands in the air and spouting some long words. As if cursing someone. And after he vented out his frustration he left. 81. It seems that he did not care what happened to those prisoners neither bothered to inform any other guards. Well, your ignorance works in my favor. My plan was to create a deficiency in their food stock and leave the goblins stricken with panic and hunger. I passed my time eating the remaining beetles. Even though I could use gluttony somehow chewing them made time move faster, or I was just too alone again. Another four hours passed. This time six goblin fighters escorted a cage filled with twelve prisoners. All of them were lifeless with bruises and burned marks. So even before being butchered instead of doing something like tell me your final wish and we will fulfill it. They prefer to torture them and break them mentally till they beg for their deaths. I felt a bit sad but my emotions didn't matter the least because I was no different than them. It was a heartbreaking realization. But I needed to differentiate within the monster that was in front of me and the monster that resided inside me now. Commence attack. This time I used my new freezing magic. Absolute zero. All the goblins were rendered still and dull. Their bodies were shining and yet they show no signs of life. Wait are they dead? Oh uh, oopsie. I forgot, bringing all their cells to an inactive state will also stop their heart, and eventually they will be dead in an instant. And if they don't have a heart even then their brains will suffer. 82. Blood deficiency and they will be declared brain dead. Death was certain. What a frightening spell. I need to keep its power in check. I thought of gluttony and the skill activated itself with threads covering the dead bodies and vanishing just like that. But while using it I made sure to leave an arm behind which I finally chopped down from one of the dead prisoners. Yummy. Though I could not feel any taste. I could feel my appetite being satisfied. Food secured. Retreat. This time the gob butcher was quick in his steps and anxious too, rubbing its bald head again and again, licking its dried lips with its tongue, but it seems that it was in search of moisture in itself. Could they have a water scarcity too? I get it, only the goblin chief has the luxury of water. While offering the meat they get water, or either they drink their own kind's blood. That would explain the dry dead looks of the prisoners. This time he was in full panic mode. Just the reaction I wanted. He went inside the cage again and again and finally chopped down the bars. The reeking of the wooden cage brought other goblin fighters attention. They were armed and headed to the magitite crystal tree. 
At first they were unable to understand the situation and the half-broken cage but seeing the gob butcher in fury and a hand in his hand with the prisoners missing or rather their meal, they lost it. 83. Ho, ho, hey you. Listen to me. Just what do you think you are doing? With a sword in your hand and a buy key of meat. For some reason, I thought he was into rapping. Even though it was bad, I could see other goblins somehow enjoying the way he spoke. Labyrinth or not, talent can be found anywhere. You just need to have good eyes. I gave the famous director approach look, thinking of wearing black goggles and using my four legs to form a square screen in front of my eye as I continued to watch the show. Yes. Why don't you answer us? Or are you pretending death? Oh you poor soul that seeks the truth, let me put you on the chopping block and relieve your fingers of this heavy duty as you answer us. This one looked like the lonely melancholy singer, who lost his proposal ring in bed to the ex-boyfriend of a girl. He was going to propose. It's not my fault, they disappeared on me. It seems that there is an intruder. Let's catch the intruder. The gob butcher tried to make a fair assumption but raising the same hand with a piece of meat in anticipation of getting others cheering on the hunt response. His zealous voice was met with the fool's face s, says the one who ate all the fresh meat, hand the hand over to me, food, food. I haven't ate any, me too. I didn't even get the previous serving. We are out of stock now. What are we going to present the bosses? All the gob hunters which had now collected in hundreds made a jump on the gob butcher. 84, 85, slash, she ice, thump, uh, uh, you run, you run. There were all sorts of cries. Some were laughing, some were crying in anguish in the cause of the conflict. The chopped hand was displaced in the stampede. Blood was spilled their own kind had turned against each other. I doubt most of them even knew the cause, or rather they just bumped in to be the part of this crazed fun. While the dead fell, new lives joined in the fiasco and burn along with others in the flames of ignorance as they lifted weapons against each other for almost no reason. No one noticed that the dead bodies were vanishing as I used gluttony on them and were instantly consumed. The populace of 200 goblins was reduced to a mere 120 within 15 minutes. Just then a huge mace came in flying and raising fumes of dust everywhere my view was obstructed. It was one of the gob generals. Its physical abilities were no way a mere sight to behold, with those thick muscles around his biceps and belly made it evident. They were the result of hard training and patience as they maintained their ideal daily routine. What are you all doing? Killing each other like bloodthirsty maniacs. This time this upper head figure was standing in between the chaos and caught everyone attention in a flash. 86. We were just tump before the goblin could finish its sentence. Its head was smashed to a pulp by the mace. Did I give you permission to speak? You there answer me. This new goblin spectator was now cowering in fear, trying his best to choose his words carefully. But, maybe it was just too late for him. When I say speak, THN speak. Damn it. Another head went flying in the air as other goblins watched. Some went towards the head while others collected near the body in the hopes of getting a taste of the fresh lump of protein. Wow, what a nut job. The true figure of a tyrannical head. Such haughtiness, just at the second level. Humph I thought to myself, crack. Oh, I forgot I was up till now enjoying the whole play, while having some roasted beetle with crisp crust. If only I could have some tomato ketchup. Yes, not to mention the play was so lifelike and the violence seemed unbelievably real. I wonder what started this commotion in the first place. Stupid me. I was the culprit. So does that make me some kind of a genius or a villain? New title, secretive plotter. Oh, a genius with a villainous mind. 87. Wait, what? A new title achievement. That's wonderful, but it is such an ominous tone. But I will accept it. After all circumstances maketh a woman. Back to the show at hand. After all I went to great pains to set it all up. By now two more generals made their appearance. One was holding a broadsword. The other was barehanded with black thick rug tied around its wrists and a long white linen cloth wrapped around its forehead. Maybe a hakimaki. Was he a karate dude? But maybe more into fashion sense? Since I don't know their names so why not refer them with numbers? That sounds about right. Hey, one what's the matter? Why are they killing each other? 
I say why not continue to food everywhere. C3 tore a hand from a body like separating a wing from a mosquito you just knocked unconscious. Without adding any supplement or cooking he chewed upon the meat and threw the bones that were crushed to pieces under the pressure of its molars. I know the stuff keeps on getting gruesome and nasty. But that's how things were going. One it seems that they have been hogging the food for themselves. This demands punishment and put the souls of the violators to rest. The chief and the magis are angry. Hey you, go get the chief. Okay. 88. Another head went flying off as two unsheathed his sword and swept it across the air to get rid of the blood covering the blade. Where are your manners while addressing your superiors? Suddenly the earth started shaking and from the ground appeared another goblin in purple robes, with a long hood attached to the back. For some reason all the goblins stopped making commotion and even the generals became stiff as if taking a safe stance against someone extremely powerful. The chief is very angry with the missing serving us and now this commoti on. Don't think you will not be held responsible. Where is the food? If his holiness awakes then there will be no one alive. It's missing. But we have killed lots of healthy goblins. Collect each dead body. Everyone started looking at each other's faces, not knowing how to respond. Every dead body was missing. After all I consumed them, while some were eaten by the other goblins themselves on spot. Well I am glad that this gluttony skill works on any dead body or person I kill and works fine at any distance. Such barbaric behavior. There are no dead bodies here. Have you taken me to be a fool? It seems that you don't love your life anymore. All the four generals suddenly started panicking. Anyone can become a mouse in front of the real lion. Give us some more time. I will give you more food and ascend to the above floor. 89. No. You won't too. I am the one going because the Magi promised me. What are you talking about two and one? The Magi made it very clear that I am going to the above floor. At this three punched four and claimed his right of being the one to go to the above district. Where you might get to live in a bigger house and more food to eat and water to drink. At this all the four generals started fighting amongst each other. While one wielded his M.A.S. and smashed two's face. Three started punching four in the stomach. But two had yet not lost the fight and picking up his sword started attacking one and pushed him back. While all the other goblin bystanders started fighting amongst each other again at the sudden appearance of a new opportunity. Fight, 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 kill, kill, kill for the food. I think so were the cries that became louder and louder by every second as the ground was stained red with their blood. This was my time to shine now. I was getting pretty bored. Everyone was in their own business to save their own hide. No one would expect a small little innocent spider that was up till now lurking in the shadows to take full charge strategy and cut down their numbers. Slash, slash, 90, chop. I went behind every enemy's back like an assassin and sliced their neck with my claws. I then activated gluttony and consumed them. For far away enemies I created sharp piercing small daggers of ice which I projected towards them. It was a total massacre. All the remaining goblin fighters were now dead. That was a superb meal. Now I was enjoying the fight between the generals. It seems that two and four are down. Now it's come up between one and three. Surprisingly the magician goblin was now working as an unofficial referee making sure to not get caught in the crossfire. Making his best to scrape the barrel. I see. One took a step back and then quickly charged forward towards three bringing down his mace on him with full force. Three moved to the right dodging the deadly attack as it landed on the ground leaving small holes and cracks wherever the heavy weapon landed. Well, I think this will be a stalemate for a long time, so I shouldn't waste my time. Yeah. Hello I shouted. My shrill voice drew attention of the three savage gentlemen. Not that they understood what I said. At first they looked up and then stared down below. Unable to find their comrades, they charged at me without thinking. I dodged their attacks without any problem. All my senses were enhanced thanks to my unique skill and my movements had gotten faster thanks to gluttony as I absorbed too many goblins and my stats improved. Maybe sometimes having quantity is better than quality, but now I had quality food at my disposal too. 91. Wind Cutter the wind pattern changed and a gust of wind like an invisible blade headed at maximum speed towards the goblin generals. Three was torn down to pieces, while one still charged forward with his mace. What stupidity I will still be able to dodge. He, eh, 
I was unable to move. I looked down and was surprised to see my legs stuck in wooden branches coming out from the ground. I looked at the magician and he was probably casting wood magic since his right arm was raised up, pointing in my direction and a green magic circle floating in front of him. Ha, huh, take this. The mace landed exactly at the target's location without any doubt and the whole area was covered with a smoke screen of dust. Got you. Air serves you right for killing my brothers and precious comrades. I will make sure that their every body part is put to their maximum use. S-H-H-H-H-R-R. -h -h Shash. A very thin yet strong white web wrapped around the neck of the goblin. His neck choked, unable to breathe and make any noise. I was standing exactly at the back of the goblin and pulling the string. I had used teleportation in the last second and got at his back. That's it for you. Why don't you join your people, you hypocrite? 92. I pulled the string in a shock and the neck of the goblin split apart from the body. I activated gluttony and ate the four generals. The smoke screen cleared, but instead of expecting a one-on-one -on -one fight with the magic user, a five times taller, sharper and stronger figure stood in front of me, accompanied by another purple robe magician while the previous one was probably pouring a stream of complaints against my improper actions. The goblin chief was in full fury. The magicians disappeared into the ground and appeared above the next floor and seems that they are preparing for their magical attacks. Did I do something to make them angry? Could it be because I killed their P.O. plea? No that's not it. It's something much more simpler. What makes someone most angry, that is to eat other people's food? Before I could collect my thoughts, several punches rained over me. I was quick enough to dodge them since I was able to sense his movements with my magic senses. So that was shadow movement skill. This chief is a magician brawler. I need to make each of my moves carefully. Wherever I went this monster suddenly appeared in front of me rising from the shadows and started punching me. All his moves were straightforward and lacked creativity. Even though he was fast, his attacks were dull. Maybe I spoke too fast. 93. The chief roared again and he was suddenly shrouded in a black aurora. It was something I had never seen before any monsters do. His fists covered in black flames. He roared again and charged towards me leaving a small trail of dust smoke in its wake. I did my best to dodge its every punch but I suddenly found myself cornered, with nowhere to run as I was surrounded with earth walls on three sides. The chief, took the hint from the trap set by the magicians and launched a heavy punch on me. I used teleportation again and strangled its neck with my strings, but it was no use. He picked up the webs with those huge arms and spinning them around with me attached did its free end threw me in the direction of the tree. The tree creaked with the heavy blow I dealt to it with my body slam and fell down. I was still in healthy condition, thanks to my high HP which was still at its 3 by 4. I created several ice lances and projected them at maximum speed towards the goblin chief, leaving me in disappointment and some small scratches on his body. So, S Impel, weak attacks won't work. The chief again charged towards me with his fist still burning in the dark but he suddenly slowed down in its movements. It seems that he is still confused by my trap, which I set up moments ago. 94. I quietly collected the soft earth particles in its paths and then used large amount of water produced by magic to convert it into quick swamp. The more he moved, the deeper he went inside. The chief was still struggling, but not seeing him panic made me a bit concerned. Was he just a big idiot that he did not know how grave his situation is or is he just that confident? Unfortunately, it turned out to be the second case, as a huge storm of water engulfed me, the swamp and the surrounding area. From where did such a huge water storm appear? Oh yes, I remember the chief can use water magic too. I saw the chief in midair flowing along with the water waves. If I don't do something soon, then I will be wasted. I cannot allow someone to just splash water over all my hard work. This is not going to end like this. Gravity magic, gravity field. The huge water storm abruptly vanished into a small stream of waterfall. The mid-hovering chief fell back into the swamp, while I landed a bit further away. The chief had yet not given up and even while being sucked in, he tried his best to reach the shore. It doesn't matter what you do now. 
because you have literally pissed me off. I concentrated the whole gravy field spread in the entire area over the swamp, especially at the chief. He roared loudly in pain under the huge pressure. All his tricks have failed, and his physical prowess is no use if he cannot move. There. 95. Other goblin magicians are also under my gravy field and hence unable to do anything. The swamp quickly turned into a whirlpool of thick sand as the chief's huge body was mashed and torn apart, being attracted to the eye of this revolving mess. Soon the sand settled and I heated the collected clay quickly to dry it up. Super kick, take this. The big thick pile of earth collected in front of me got smashed into pieces and out of it felt the corpse of the goblin chief. I activated gluttony and consumed it, though it took a bit more seconds than usual, but it felt so gratifying. My HP was restored and I could feel my magic powers growing and the message display of Dash. Acquired dark matter magic. Now I can take it a bit easy on the magicians. I removed the gravity field and suddenly I was attacked by loose branches coming out of the ground which kept on following me endlessly. I teleported to one of the magicians and bite it at its neck, inserting the poison. It first writhed in pain for a second and then died instantaneously. I then consumed it again in my black threads. The other magi panicked as it saw its friend meet such a fateful end. It used earth magic and then made himself underground, trying to hide. That won't work either. Hiding is useless. 96. I scanned the whole area standing at the second elevation with my magic sense and found the goblin magician hiding underground below the tree. I used ant gravity magic and pulled him out. Then without wasting a moment I summoned several icicles and threw them at the magician. He saw the rain coming and started running towards the entrance below the shrine to take shelter. His right leg was impaled with one of the projectiles while he successfully managed to dodge or block the others and yet he still kept running to save his life. Suddenly, my danger sense went berserk. I have a bad feeling about this. The gate of the shrine was ripped apart and the roof just went flying off. This presence, and this high magic density, suddenly forming in the surrounding. Is this what they call being unlucky in the eleventh hour or things never go as planned? Something leapt out from the huge opening, created by whatever that inside creature is called. At that time, an explosion occurred, which uprooted the surrounding trees and caused a blast that gave significant damage to the ground, but I was unharmed. A meteor falling from the sky, that's how one would describe it even though I was so up close. When the center of the explosion had faded and the dust that wrapped that thing had rolled up, the whole figure of it was revealed. 97. A mountain, no a giant, look mama it's the goblin king, it's bad habit to point finger at people let's go from here honey or we will be caught up in someone else's fight. I think that's what happens when the final boss monster makes a surprise appearance in a big city and the public cannot hold their excitement to see their home city being taken over. An unbelievably tall, almost as huge as a five-storied building green goblin with a pot-like underbelly stood in front of me. For some reason, it seems that he has woken up with all the chaos going around. At first he scanned the ground and its gazes finally stopped at the goblin magician. This time the magician was bent down in respect and his head tilted down, he looked up and almost offering prayers, Your Holiness, you have finally awakened. What are you doing? Please pass your judgment on the enemy and avenge your people exclamation mark dot 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 no. But before he could finish, this new character picked up his devote and slowly yet steadily shoved him in its mouth like a candy being eaten by a ten-year-old kid. Usually this is what happens when you pray to someone whose exact nature you don't know. Then this out of this world being looked in my direction, almost immediately spotting me. He bent down a little and almost taking a runner's starting stance. He jumped, he jumped, he jumped, he literally jumped. Are you kidding me? 98. He exactly landed near me and pulling the huge club, almost half of its own length, he swung it down to crush me. I leapt backward to dodge the attack, but the giant club's impact made a blast and caused fissures on the ground in the surrounding area. Even in that huge blast in rocks flying all around, I could still see his half upper body. He is really big. I took the advantage of the chaos and teleported myself outside the goblin forest at the very bottom. Can I defeat him? 
The hostility I felt from him by my senses was almost making me feel choked, as if air was being sucked out of me. It was sickening. This labyrinth, why does it has the last floor difficulty even before the mid floor? In the meantime while I tried to hide myself behind the huts which were built closely packed without any town planning, I used appraisal on this new calamity. Even though I was prepared to face anything, this is just asking me to drink poison and make me jump from a 20-story building. Finally asking me about which one of the following was the cause of death, poisoning, body wreckage or heart failure as a result of excessive fear. Damn it! There was even a third option. This is utter nonsense. This was never the part of the deal with the author I signed for. It originally had a grim face, but his face quickly became grimmer. It appears that he's quite angry since I escaped his mind-blowing blow. He pulled his club out of the ground and lifting it again made a small jump downwards, almost blowing away all the huts in the front. 99. Has it been about 30 minutes since the battle started? All I have been doing is avoid his blows. If you are asking me why I avoid and why I can't fight in a normal way, then you should just look at the ground. All the huts, the trees, the flora are gone. All there are left are huge craters, as if he was intentionally making a film set to shoot a scene about the moon's surface. Are there cameras in this new world? If I am able to click a good photo of his, then maybe I could win a photography contest in the best award of the world's best monster image recorded in the history. His club goes by in front of me with a thundering roar, causing a windstorm from his every single swing. The dust is annoying. Also the Goblin King seems to be getting impatient. He wields his weapon angrily. However, he just seems to swing it carelessly, giving only an accurate, sharp attack once in a very few times. I took the chance and the fusion ball I had been preparing for so long launched at it. I was relieved to see the fusion ball almost hitting the brute, and thinking that it was all over. I underestimated him. He lifted up his wooden club diagonally and blocked the attack by taking its full impact on it. That wooden club should have burnt or at least appeared to be a little cracked. But that was not the case unless its weapon was special and magically augmented. This was my first time seeing a magical weapon as I appraised it. Just my lucky luck, and its sweet vibe. 100. While I was still despairing another blow came over. I thought I dodged it but, the collision of the giant wooden mass and me, unleashed a tremendous amount of energy, generating a huge blast and energy dispersion. The collision, gouging the earth, ripping the atmosphere and creating a dazzling light as a golden yellow aurora suddenly wrapped the monster's entire body. AUU gauge? I was greatly bounced by the collision energy and landed in the blast after doing a few spins and regaining my position. I waited for the dust at the hypercenter to clear up but I found that two of my hind legs were missing while the others went numb. Was it one of his skill attacks? I need to be more careful. My preparations are almost complete. Time for the spell for which I practice the most. I cannot lose this, not just yet. When I have come this far, I don't have even the luxury to heal myself because this goblin had proved to be the most entertaining one that if I lift my eyes off him or give it a second then I could say this show goodbye. It seems that this mister is getting annoyed too. I was at my limits by running all day around and it seems that the Goblin King was suffering from starvation too. By far I have used every attack like Wind Cutter, Gravy Sphere, Icicles and all of them proved to be useless. Either they were blocked by its weapon or even if he took the full damage and almost appeared to. 101. Be half dead, he regenerated instantly thanks to his, self-regeneration, skill. It sounds too unfair, for only one party to possess it. Poison won't work either, even after reading its immunity status. I still bite him several times out of spite, almost replacing half of its blood with my poison and yet he still possesses that intimidating ever-growing bloodthirst. We need to finish this quickly. Another deadly battle for me which almost seems impossible to win. 102. Monster Diary Primordial Goblin King World Disaster Monster Name, Gleth Age, Dash Race, Primordial Goblin Level, 5800 HP, 60,000 MP, 50,000 SP, 80,000 Skills, Quick Movement, Mountain Force, Wood Magic LV8, Light Magic LV5, Self Regeneration, Immunity, 
Titles, The Unblemished, The King of Destruction, Legendary Weapon, Club, The Lux, Description, A Small Part of the Trunk of the Tree of Life, The Goblin King, To Ensure the Survival of Its Race During a Severe Crisis During the Great War Started Climbing the Never-Ending Roots of the Tree of Life from the Realm of Dead. It is said that sensing his strong desire to grow stronger and gain ultimate pure strength, the Tree of Life rewarded him with this club. Since then, the Goblin King had never lost a battle and is now worshipped as the divine being of the Goblin race. Ability, possesses almost an infinite amount of life force and magical energy, and is almost unbreakable unless someone possessing extraordinary strength almost equal to the tree or is blessed by the tree itself tries to do so. 103. The King of Destruction This was going to be the final move for us which would decide the conqueror. We both never spoke about it or someone else told us so, but we could just look at each other's condition and our clash of gazes translated it all for us. Even though I was just a small little spider, a hunter noob, in front of the bulldozer goblin monster, a pro fighter, and yet he acknowledged me by putting up a magnificent pose, as if he was preparing for his final strongest move and finish this fight once and for all. He raised his both hands and lifting his mighty club high. It started giving a very bright golden yellow light. So this is how an attack of light magic looks like. In the meantime I prepared my strongest gravity ball pouring as much magical energy I could pour in it. The magic sphere turned black from purple to the point that I could see the light entering but the missing exit was just too astonishing. The concentration of magical powers inside the club got stronger and stronger, until my eyes couldn't handle the brightness. I shut my eyelids for a moment. In an instant the Goblin King was standing in front of me and with all his strength he unleashed his strongest attack. The scene that I saw then, how should I describe it? It was almost as if the world was breaking into pieces and being crumpled into one place. 104. The King of Destruction, what a befitting title. 105. But if you think that you are finishing this in one blow then you are so wrong. If it would have been that easy, then that would mean that my whole struggle up till this point was meaningless. I always come up with a plan to annihilate my enemies and then make them my food. Did I really just say that? If you are thinking what I have done, then you can see that the whole body of the Goblin King was now glowing dark purple. It writhing in pain as its inside organs and arteries were being crushed under its own pressure. That's right that gravity orb made the goblin's stomach its center of gravity. While I applied an anti-gravity field to the whole room and an additional anti-gravity field on myself directed away from the goblin. All the groundbreaking efforts that the king had put in were now working in my favor. The floor was breaking as huge piles of earth gathered around the goblin slowly forming a huge sphere with him as its core. The earth kept on crushing and breaking and the huge disaster that the final attack had left made the goblin even more vulnerable. If you still don't understand then, simply put the whole floor was now falling towards the goblin, while I was falling away from the goblin to safety. Planetary Fusion, dash that's the name I came up with for this special attack magic. 106, a magic which has the potential to develop slowly into a black hole. It would be awesome if I could gain control over such power. Now when I think about it, isn't my dimensional storage based on the same concept? Then maybe, when I level up even further, then I would be able to pull it off, but leveling up is such a pain. If it is like a game then after defeating such strong enemies why I am still at level 2. Show old and my notification window by now be filled with thousands of you have leveled up labels. Gwarrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
but I could feel that I couldn't 107 keep this up for much longer and the effects were already subsiding. He had almost broken free through the upper left half corner. I need to play my next card more carefully, and not end up wasting my energy which would ultimately increase the efficiency and effectiveness of my spell. Absolute zero. I focused on the Goblin King, as his body slowly started freezing. I started from the head so that he become unconscious as less blood reaches there with almost zero force, leading to blood coagulation in his arteries and veins. It took longer than expected to freeze a five-story giant monster. Several times it break through freezing at some of its body joints, but at some point neither of us knew when his life ended as the frozen king honorably stood in front of me. Windcutter, the tall statue fell down slashed in half and the corpse of the goblin king fell in front of me. I too stood frozen and looked upwards at the high above ceiling, lost in thought. Are all the battles with the above monsters going to be this impactful? For some reason I thought I was losing my previous self and turning into something else. Was that too thanks to being a monster? 108. I had cleared this floor, and instead of being happy, all I can think about is eating. Seeing such dark side of society and facing it up front. Is the upper world similar to this, where the strong eats the weak to survive? Saving the world, Hugh. If the upper world is going to be very much like this then I see no sense in being a hero. Those weak prisoners, even if I free them and took them to a safe place, they are not capable to sustain themselves and survive. As for the strong goblins since there is no alternate source of food they will start murdering themselves. Even among the strong the least strongest one will be killed first. So, in my plans somewhere or the other and in some way I ended up saving them didn't I? I killed them. I killed them all. Total destruction. Complete annihilation. I exterminated them all. There was no saving them. There was no answer. It was just a second ago and a second later. In that instant anyone could die anywhere. Is this the only way I can save someone? By destroying someone else. Just so that one group of people survives and find happiness, success, the other group being sacrificed and stripped of all hope, failure. Then was that the only purpose and meaning of the life of those who had to die and for what reason? At present no one is here to care about me. Even if I die here, no one will care about me or remember me. Suki so let's save the world together. 109, a new voice shot at my head. It was so nostalgic and warm, that I would have given up anything to hear them. I was pressed against someone very special to me, so close that there was no space between us. Almost inseparables and bound to one another. Like an infant cradled at its mother's breast, I felt wholly untouched by anxiety or loneliness. My eyes opened abruptly. Tears started falling through my eyes as this sense of unity and deep perfection vanished without another sound. Now. I knew or maybe I was always sure of but somewhere along this road I had forgotten that I was never alone here to begin with. Just like I was searching for someone, that someone was also searching for me. I still didn't know how much time had passed but I knew neither of us had yet given up on finding each other. If we were going to do anything then we would be doing it together and that includes saving this world too. It was time I prepare for the next floor. I transferred my trophy. The magical club lux to my dimensional storage. After all I cannot let go of a legendary weapon. I am sure I can find good use of it. Gluttony activate. Long black webs appeared from my body and within seconds covered the entire corpse of the Goblin King and consumed it within half a minute. You have leveled up. There's my calling. 110. Sudden strong sleep was induced upon me as I felt weakened and the white webs started engulfing me. This time I took precaution and connected one of my webs to the ceiling and pulled upwards till I touched the wall. I didn't know for how long I will be out and so needed to take precautions to not let myself open for surprise attacks. This was not enough to ensure my complete safety but this was all I could do for now. In future I had to come up with more precautionary measures. I made a note of it in my mind. The white cocoon in which I had to sleep got attached itself to the ceiling wall and soon I lost all the visuals of my surrounding as the silent noises of the dead died out. 111. 10 days later, you have reached level 3, second form, kinetic eye. Glutton I reached level 3, where who I took a long yawn as I kicked the annoying shell holding me out of my view. 
I was again asleep for this long. It's such a pain and wastage of time. But every time I wake up, I can feel myself getting stronger and stronger. The more correct way to put it would be, evolving. I was born as a small, little spider in an unknown dangerous labyrinth, as a mere level one. But now I think I have made up with the fact that I was a spider now. Being a human is important to everyone, but I can't always hold on to that thing. If I wanted to survive, I needed to let go of that feeling. But in doing so, I think I had become something more, much more than I was before myself. Back then, the one, who was always being pushed around like trash, was now able to accomplish and had a dream of her own. In the beginning I said it to myself that if I didn't like my density then I won't accept it, but there was much more to it, because that was an incomplete resolution. I needed to have the courage and strength to change it the way I want it to be. 112. Even if I acted sad over being born as a monster, nothing would change. Even if I cry nothing would change. That's how things are in this new world I am reborn. But being in a fantasy world, now I was sure of, there could be a way to turn myself back into a human, and if I can't find it alone, then I have always someone I could count on for help. I performed my daily routine work, clean up the mess, as I analyzed my new updated status and collected all the magic I tore for future need arises. By now I had almost more than a tone in my dimensional storage. I soon need to find a way to put it to good use. This time there was no water here, but I still had a water reservoir in my storage. There was nothing to worry about my infinite space and I could always dump it in case, in the dark. I slowly walked towards the entrance to the next upper floor, 44 ready to face my next adversary. 113 Status Window Name, Dash Age, 1 Month Race, Arachne Level, 3 HP, 88,000 MP, ERRSP, ERR, Unique Skill, All Seeing Eyes of the Gods First Form, Eye of Investigation Second Form. Kinetic Eye Skills Glutton LV3 Poison Magic Sage of Fire LV3 Sage of Water LV4 Sage of Wood Magic LV8 Sage of Wind LV2 Mystic Thread Magic Sage of Space Time LV3 Sage of Ice LV5 Body Strengthening LV4 Body Durability LV5 Sage of Divine Light Gravity Magic LV6 Magic Resistance Immunity Sage of Dark Matter, Titles, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, 114, Second Form, Kinetic Eye, Another Characteristic Form of the All-Seeing Eyes of the Gods, Dash the Kinetic Eye, Grants Special Psychic Powers and Domain over all the magical attributes, that includes colon telepathy, precognition, telekinesis dash pyrokinesis, electrokinesis, aerokinesis dash psychokinesis, Cryokinesis, clairvoyance dash hypervelocity, gyrokinesis, photokinesis dash hydrokinesis, geokinesis, biokinesis, gluttony, LV2, devour corpses and their souls gaining their skills, HP, MP and SP added to your own stats, obtain the experience and abilities of the devoured, 115, 116, chapter 3, just in case if you are wondering what's happening outside. How long has it been? Almost 16 years since we have reincarnated in this new world and I am still unable to find Suki, Princess Alice. We have started a full-scale search in the Northern Kingdoms and have assigned the members to almost all towns, villages and noble districts. I hope we will soon be able to complete this mission and inform you about any of our findings. The person who just spoke now was a 22-year-old lady all clad in dark robes which would very much resemble the track suit with a hood, was the leader of the night shadows I created to search for Saki, investigate the other reincarnates and keep an eye over all the affairs of the entire human continent and soon extend this observation to the chaos continent. 117. Thank you for your hard work. Even if it is a small clue that you find, please inform me immediately. You may return to your duties now. Yes, my lady. The woman instantly disappeared in her own shadow. All the members of the Night Shadow are well trained in close quarter combat with a dagger as a main weapon, evasion skills, concealment and possess a rare magic called, Shadow Movement, 
which allows the user to move around in their own shadows or become one with any dark place. It could be counted as one of the best skill to be possessed by an assassin or spy and to track down any of their targets. It has been a month since I felt this small familiar presence in the north and I was sure of it that it was Suki. After so long for the first time I had a clue and yet this piece of information was not much to go on. But still, I will not let this disappoint me and instead give my best and not make any regrettable quick decision. As the two of us are in contract, I should still be able to feel her presence in this world till she is alive. As for me. I goddess Athena was given a new name Alice Hart. I was born as the only princess of the royal family and second heir to the throne of the Hart Kingdom. My father Leon Hart, the king of this kingdom and my mother Marseille Hart, the queen. I also have an elder brother Richard Hart who usually helps father with his administrative work and looks after the foreign affairs. 118. The people of this land highly respect the royal family and show their love by maintaining public order and being self-aware of the laws. I was so happy when I was born in such a loving family and I was always adored as a little princess by my father, which I am. Actually, now, I am always showered with affection and care by my mother and elder brother. If only Suki too could be here. Is she all right and living in a peaceful, healthy environment? Does she too have a family to look after her? Why do I feel like it's my fault that she is not with me? Even though it was my responsibility as a goddess to look after her. But here I was living a life of luxury and all I could do was send people to search for her. It is not fair for me that only I remain happy. Even if our faces, names, appearance would have changed but I will still keep on trying and ultimately find her because that is my responsibility as a friend and a selfish desire to keep her safe and always by my side. Goddess of light and gods of fortune and destiny all I could ask for is to bestow your blessings on her and keep her safe from all adversities. As for my country the Heart Kingdom is a small peaceful country in the extreme south of the human continent and one of the nearest to the chaos, demon, continent. Surrounded by mountains on the northwest border and the vast fertile land spread all over east. The capital city, Lihat is situated at the center of the kingdom. The country is also known for its vast amount of raw exports from the large ports in the south. 119. Usually it's peaceful here with less population but there are far more magical disasters and monster outbreaks happening recently which has set the kingdom in a panic state. With little advancement in the military tech and an almost unorganized small army it's difficult to keep everyone safe in this kingdom. Most of the western land which shares border with the demon continent has turned barren because of the magical disasters followed by monster outbreaks. It is up to me now to keep this country safe and plan on outsourcing adventurers from other kingdoms while seeking help from the neighboring lands. It has also been two months since I have passed from the Grindalwood Royal Magic Academy situated in the Grindalwood Kingdom, the best magic academy there is in the human continent. I was a student with a healer class job there and researched on the political and economical aspect of the nations to gain familiarity and respect from other kingdoms by introducing new administrative laws and economical policies to increase the efficiency of the city hall workers and a more effective way to collect taxes while handling information in a discreet way about the taxpayers, also keeping in mind about the welfare of the common folk. Well after all. This was my field of expertise. In the same year along with me there were other ten reincarnates with their gods and goddesses in contract who graduated the academy along with me. All of them were considered geniuses of this era, the best batch in the entire history and were considered as the light that would guide this world towards a better future. 120. 121. With their powerful magic, unheard of natural talent in combat and weapon wielding as well as their godly unique skills made them look like some kind of heroes by the people who witness their powers. They all had earned name and fame across nations and had high influence over the masses of their own country. I am sure, Suki too could have pulled it off. All of them were born as the part of royal families in other kingdoms or were the kids of nobles and the general knight of the kingdom. While I had kept an eye on four other reincarnates, out of which three took adventuring as their profession from a very young age and were making a name for themselves in the northern parts of the continent and soon were going to make an expedition to the demon continent. 
Another reincarnate was deeply involved in some kind of research institute in the dwarven nation where the dwarfs lived. Basically dwarfs are considered to be a race of demi-humans with small humanoid bodies. They are stocky and stout with strong, muscular arms and legs. The typical dwarf male has a large beard, whereas the females do not. They are usually short, obese, and brawny sometimes living inside caves or mountains. They are famous throughout all lands for their mastery in engineering, craftsmanship, metallurgy and mining work. In this research project they are said to be creating a new powerful weapon to compete against other kingdoms as they are gathering in large numbers underground. 122. The exact details of this research are still not made public and all attempts to infiltrate the facility made by the night shadows have failed. It was a bit concerning but for now nothing could be done about it. There were still five other missing reincarnates unheard of. There are only two possible cases. Either they are dead or are residing in the demon continent. As for yesterday the night shadows send an awkward report about the get-together party of the reincarnates who graduated from the academy. Obviously they did not invite me, but that is not the main issue. The shadows were as usual monitoring the party as they were playing the roles of maid and servants or were either hiding in the shadows maintaining a fair distance so that they don't get caught. According to the report for the first tower everyone was enjoying their time and was having casual talks, but after a sudden change of environment, all their expressions were disarrayed as if they were afraid of something. Also one of the reincarnates went missing along with their god. Soon after some heated discussion they left the place and quickly prepared to go back to their own countries. I need to keep a close eye on them and try to gain more information on exactly what happened during the event. Well, when they return to their countries their actions will make it all clear, whether this report could be some mistake or the world as we know was about to change. 123. I looked up in the vast azure blue sky from the balcony of the royal palace of Heart Kingdom. The white birds which were sitting on the barricade covered with climbers as they took a long flight. I made a wish. Hurry up Suki I need you here. 124. Information brochure magical disaster. When the code remains protruding out of the celestial core of Ilgard which is at the center of planet starts absorbing large amounts of magical energy and life force from surrounding environment they start moving in response to the stimuli causing earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tsunamis and ultimately burst to the extent of inflicting damage big enough to sink an entire kingdom into the ocean. This releases a vast amount of chaotic energy unrefined and imbalanced which brings total annihilation to the lands which come under its domain. Code Ravain, these are special projection of living matter from the superficial core of Ilgard which enwraps the land masses and holds it at one place maintaining the balance and replenishing life energy and magic above the land masses. Monster Outbreak, these are considered accidents and natural disasters caused by nature itself. It usually occurs when dungeons are left uncleared and the monsters eventually grow strong enough to climb the dungeon by themselves. Second cause of outbreak could be a result of a massive increase in the magical density leading to formation of magic wells where monsters breed at a tremendous rate or either there is a dimension warp and they cross to this side from the depths of hell realm of the dead. 125 Ceremonial Hall in Perilous Empire it was so nice of you Kenma to organize such a lavish get-together party, or should I refer to you as the second prince of the great Perilous Empire. All the twenty attendants of the party started clapping as they lifted their drinks and shouted excitedly, cheers, to our reunion. Usually such gathering among themselves were almost impossible and they would keep each other at a distance or try not to get too close to each other as they wanted to save the world by themselves and not share the glory. In other words, keeping their true powers a secret or make bluffs and take actions which are either untraceable or misleads the vultures eyes. But after graduating from Royal Magic Academy and turning 18 the very next year, they had to train themselves and lay the future work of solving all the problems of human nations and destroying all the monsters while taking full control over the demon continent. Everyone wore a new dress or suit which would be discarded after the night was passed. The moon provided the lighting to the banquet hall in which the event was being held. A collection of violinists, pianists were placed at the far end of the hall and the smell of jasmine was spread throughout. 
Today especially they had instructed the chefs to make food that originally belonged to their own country in the previous world which was served by the maids after regular intervals. 126. The party was in full swing as most of them had formed groups and were talking about the various affairs of their countries and their future plans and sharing their training methods. Most of them were either sheltered and had always trained under the guidance of a master without getting a scratch from the outside jagged gusty winds. Some indulged in explaining their special martial arts techniques. Some demonstrated their magic like Natsu Kenchai who could make living puppets out of fire or Siaka who produced different kinds of beautiful red, purple, crimson flowers from the nearby plants placed inside the pillar hollow almost resembling a huge long vase. While most of them had started placing bets on Sado Fujibayashi and Ryuji Uka who were going to duel each other and prove that whose blade was the strongest and it seems that Ryuji was already on the whining terms with the most number of votes. Clang, clang. And there they went without a second thought using their skills without any care not realizing their true potential and the sacred oath they carry to use this power only for providing protection and bring down the hammer of justice on those who made others suffer. All the other gods and goddesses were enjoying their drink specially brewed by Diana the goddess of forest. While Orpheus had started giving the music team a singing lesson while they sat on their folded legs and listened to her godly advice very intently. 127. In short it was an assembly of the most talented youths of the human continent who were going to bring change and lead this world into a new future altogether. Everyone had found what they wanted to wish for after they had completed their mission and had saved the world. But no one knew about the darkness that was burning brightly among them and other special existences that had set their foot in this world, who were now lurking in the shadows to checkmate the plans of Almighty World God. 128. Homura Kenta Class representative, why has everyone stopped moving all of a sudden? Everyone had the same puzzled looks on their faces as all the maids and the other working servants had stopped moving. The sweet melody being played in the background too had abruptly ceased at the wrong note. Even the gods and goddesses had frozen in their places. Only we ten students were able to move somehow. Just a minute ago everything was fine and we were enjoying ourselves. Was it some kind of a prank? A party trick or someone was giving a demonstration of their weird magic skill. Any of them could be right and at the same time all the assumptions made could be wrong. Being affixed to one single obsolete notion does more harm than sticking to none. People needed to change with time if they really want to grow. That's it. It was as if someone had stopped the time. By now all the students had started panicking. In our royal lifestyle we never had to face any emergency situation or a crisis. Also the timing couldn't be worse. Does anyone know what's happening here? Is someone among us doing all this, then stop this prank? It's not funny. Even the gods have stopped moving. Are we under attack? That could be a plausible reason. A third party attack. But who would attack during a party? Everyone knows that even if we are 129 children, we are pretty strong and can hold on our own in a fight even against the strongest enemies. If this is a pre-planned attack then they should have known of our abilities and the risk involved. But for someone who could freeze even the gods like this, though their power has been influenced, can kill us in an instant. Just the very thought of the enemy was making me breathe heavily. My body was slowly becoming cold as my blood froze, out of fear. This world is dangerous, I knew it from before. I could feel the temperature of the room rapidly decreasing and the light slowly vanishing as dark clouds covered the moon, while the gentle breeze had turned into cold perilous winds. Am I going to die? Even if I want to survive I cannot use my unique skill effectively here. I need to use the help of others and fight off the enemy. Now I realize that the enemy hasn't shown itself yet, considering that this pandemic state of ours was the best time, the killer couldn't ask for a better moment when all were disarrayed and least guarded. I took a closer look around me and used magic to heighten my senses. The whole room leaked with traces of dark magic, whose color was so drenched in black that I could even register it as a blind spot in my eye. Such powerful sinister dark magic, which I had never seen before. Just who our enemy is and what does he want? I am sure some of us are good at using holy light magic and even I could use basic spells pertaining to light attribute. We all were growing impatient, 
Some of us tried to run away but the door was closed and the windows won't break as someone had casted a very strong barrier to seal us in. Some were trying their best, 130, to wake their gods, but it was of no use. They didn't even budge and their hardened faces didn't show any sign of changes. Some of them had taken out their weapons and had started striking the walls, the roof and the floors but a high level reinforcement spell casted on them withstood all their attacks. Is the enemy making a joke of us, showing our lack of power and how weak we are? Even if we are blessed by the gods and are the chosen ones, we are not immortal and death is sure in this world which was slowly being torn apart by war and conflicts. By now the room temperature had dropped to the point that we came close to Natsu who summoned a small bonfire to keep us warm and the room brighten. But even his magic was slowly waning as he had already wasted a lot of MP in one of the duels, in his parlor tricks and the amount of magic particles in the air were excessively scarce. What should we do? I have never dealt with such kind of situation. Even the gods can't help us now with their divinity. The magic is so scarce that we can't use our weapons effectively which requires channeling large amounts of magic power. It seems that this barrier had much more to offer, the magic particles were being slowly pumped out from the inside, so our hands were tied in a way. Just who is this enemy, if only he appears in front of me then I could beat him to a pulp. 131. If you are that strong enough then why don't you take us out of here? What the hell? Would you know? If my goddess would have been awake then I could use my beast transformation and destroy this place in an instant. I am sorry. But if you could not, it's quite an expensive vacation house. Kenma tried to protect his property, but interrupting two girls quarreling will never make them pay you any attention. So, you are saying that you are just a useless brat, who cannot even chew his own food without someone's help. How dare you, speak like that. After this Tama and Siaka started pushing each other by shoulder and asking to back off. Everyone was getting tense by the minute and our blood pressure was dropping. It was as if the enemy wanted to toy with us first and then move things to the main scenario. What am I going to do? I can't die now. After I got such a lavish and luxurious life, the great strength that attracts attention brings fame, money and women straight to my plate. This is the life I always wanted. A carefree life of a prince, and with goddess Freya's charm unique skill, my pipe dream had become reality. I will have to make sure to hide in this crowd and escape by making an opening when the enemies attack. I know, the school president always has a plan. Yes, the school president is very talented in magic. He can come up with something. 132. Don't rope me in your meaningless talks. How can I fight an opponent who can block all magic and freeze even the gods? Also I am more of a supporter type magician with puppeteer skill which works only on opponents weaker than me or have a weak will. Yes, Homura please do something. Suddenly the class girls started begging for my help. When girls grovel in front of me, I can't hey, let it go unnoticed but want to help and in return. Suddenly Yume go tightly held my arm as a sudden flash of lightning shook the entire room and we all started shouting. Taken hostage in an anti-magic area with no skill usage was like us being trapped as small hungry rats in a dark room filled with black cats that could kill us at any time with a single slap of its sharp claws. Don't worry, I will try to negotiate first with the enemy. If the negotiation fails then, first use fire missile magic to create a diversion, while the close combat fighter close in for melee and the other magicians will support from rear. I knew, the president was always reliable. Let's kick some intruders but, I couldn't care any less about those intruders and defeating them in a disadvantaged location with people who have never participated in a group combat. How could I trust some bunch of naive little children who couldn't get enough out of their dreams to become heroes? 133. Being a hero will be a huge pain, helping other people just out of goodwill and gaining nothing in return except for some half-assed cheers and praises, till the point where people come and ask for help again and again, and after their work is done. They would just say their goodbyes and leave. I reached the class president chair by climbing over those who were equally able or more superior than me. How did I do that? Simple, 
Just destroy them at what they are good at and hurt them where it pains the most. Use every opportunity to make yourself shine brighter and more brighter in front of others, because if you don't then people will forget about you. Just like it happened once with me. Suddenly bad memories, which I had forgotten a long time ago surfaced. My mother leaving me behind after my father died. Then my grandmother who let go of me too. There are two kinds of people in this world, those who let go and those who are let go. And I was always abandoned. So I finally made up my mind. I would make others so dependent on me, that they will never let go of me. But here I was stuck in a very sticky and odd situation where we don't even know W who our enemy is or what do they want from us. Whether there is a single individual or are we talking about a whole organization or just a bunch of mercenaries hired by the real boss. And my sudden outburst of feelings. It's not like me to remember my past which I don't need anymore after I have died once. I saw others and they were going through some kind of similar phase. Everyone had that dismal and maddening look. Some were crying while some just looked like empty shells who had drowned and 134 fainted in their own horrid dreams. We were all shrouded with a black mist. Some kind of dark magic had been used on us to inflict fear in our mind and cause us heavy psychological damage making it difficult to make any rational decision. Stop screwing with us. I am not going to give in this easily. I am now a prince of a kingdom and will soon be declared as the king of my country. How can I forget about my ambitions? I will show them what I am made up of. They haven't attacked us yet. That means right now. They have no intention to kill or harm us. Maybe they really are here to discuss and negotiate but are first testing our strengths and how far can we endure their evil magic. Don't worry we would be able to defeat anyone if you follow my lead. So drop your worries and do what I say. I try to lift up their spirit in any way I could. If I want to survive then everyone needs to get a hold of themselves. And that's the job of a leader to make sure they are ready for any situation. 135. Hurried Kateri. Arrival of the Devil. It was maddening to see everyone cower in fear. Because of my resistance skills I can counter this fear inducing magic to some extent. At present we cannot use our strong magic spells because we cannot receive any divine energy from the frozen gods. Also this freezing atmosphere and the magic particles dropping at a terrific rate was making it even more difficult to get a hold of the situation. For now, Homura had taken the lead. While I am preparing my bow which is a legendary weapon bestowed upon me by my goddess Artemis. All we need is for the enemy to show up. I can tell this is a preset magic spell. I can feel the evil intent and the strong dark magic involved but it lacks the killing aura and also the enemy is a coward to not show up himself. Could one of the students be a part of this plan? After all very few people knew about this party which was planned in haste to begin with. For now I don't have any clue to who can be the insider, so I will not brainstorm over it. Suddenly the room appeared to get dull and shaggy as light slowly got diffused into the black mist which started appearing from the ceiling. While it was so gross to see some kind of black fluid to ooze out from the wall like that but, this strong heavy presence, I could feel my energy being drawn out and my body was throbbing with pain and the hairs on my hands stood straight as I froze with goosebumps. What kind of presence is this? It's filled with murderous intent and is exploding with an unprecedented amount of anger and hatred. Just who in this world is our enemy? 136. Everyone by now was looking in upward direction as if something greater was going to descend from another dimension. Fear or not, we are not here with the attention to harm you, but to talk. It's just as you humans speak, a form of negotiation, indeed. It was a calm deep voice of a being, which didn't sound human at all but was strong enough to strike fear and command obedience in our hearts to make submit even the strongest. The dark mist slowly condensed into some sticky liquid in midair, still altering its shape by revolving out came a giant person at least 10 feet tall clad in a black robe with a hood covering its face. In the dark it was difficult to make out the specifications, but with my night vision, I was able to identify two long horns on its head curled at its ends and a chin much longer than it should have been. Then his hands and feet were definitely longer and had abnormally long red claws growing instead of nails. It was obvious that our enemy was not a human but the thing that made me feel disgusted the most was that he was smiling. Smiling at our stupid and unsightful condition of being weak, 
Enemy spotted 2 o'clock, fire at full power. It seems that the magicians as usual couldn't get enough of their heroic, special, flashy, dazzling spells, so they just went forward and casted them after chanting their spells. Light Spears, you coward, take this. Fire Barrage, Lightning Zika 137, die, die, you asshole. Wind Bullets, it seems that no one understood the greetings, and as foolish people, without measuring his power level they charged in and launched magical attacks. Before the flashy attacks could have reached the uninvited guest they dispersed in the black mist as if they were snuffed out by a simple breath. It was pointless. As I suspected, our average level currently is 620. If our enemy would have been an army then even 2000 strong couldn't have withstood those attacks. I was unable to see anything on his status window. So it was obvious that he was exceptionally stronger than us. But to take those strong magic spells head on and treating them like a small match light that could be put off in a breeze was enough to tell the difference in our level. He was a being in a realm of his own. While some had taken the hint from this display and had taken a defensive position casting light magic barriers and self-reinforcement magic, but as usual there are always some rock-headed fools who can't understand without having to face a kick on their faces. Ryuji jumped forward with his sword and went for the person's head. At the same time Sudo too took out his one-handed sword clad in a white light ran towards the most suspicious person in the room planning to attack from the ground. You cannot escape the reach of my sword. Thunder strike my sword. Seed your glory. For this is the time of our outrage dash rapid light clash. 138. The true spirit of the warrior do not come from just waving around a sword filled with large amount of magical energy but what is most important are the techniques and the passion to wield the sword only to win. But this was far from their understanding. I was expecting that this strange person would just dodge the straightforward, easy to read attacks. Since the hit could have been proven fatal as they were clad in light magic and a bit of divinity after all they were legendary class weapons. All of us have one actually, some are bestowed to us by our gods, and some got it from the treasure of their country or a family heirloom, but both of them fell on the ground and their sword sent flying in a direction completely opposite. Aluag. Bark. It seems they are badly injured, as blood flowed out through one of the opening near the waist. While it seems that Sudo's hand has fractured by the impact, just what in the world did stop their march? I looked up again and there was another being holding a long golden trident. He too was wearing the same black robe, though it was small, yet it perfectly covered her every body feature from head to legs and even the hands. No, there was actually three more standing at the back with the same appearances. I couldn't feel their presence until now. Just what is up with this bunch of people? Their aura doesn't even seem to be human. What a mess is this? How are we gonna deal with it? 139. Now it all depends on the next words of the man who was supposed to be their leader and was about to speak. How uncivilized. I came here to talk, but humans have never been rational when one is willing to be peaceful during his dealings. This time it was class rep who stepped forward to speak. He was afraid to as it was evident from his whole body shaking heavily. Usually he is a coward, selfish and self-centered. He doesn't care about anyone and is the most afraid to die. He took on this role to smooth things out, since I know he doubts us. What if anyone else doing the negotiation screws up and puts his life at jeopardy? But for now we had no other choice. You have no room to talk. You trapped us here first with your magic and casted some weird abnormalities status on us. How can you expect us to be not wary of an intruder who doesn't even have the courtesy to give his name first? It seems that at least someone here is level-headed, unlike others. This guy was still smiling and with his dead and motionless eyes glanced at our fallen comrades. Then he looked back at us, still his disgusting smile on, at which I wanted to shoot an arrow in any way possible. He continued with his prep talk. My name is Zero. I am the leader of the Apostles and come from the realm of the dead which you may even sometimes refer to as Dash Hell. W wait do you imply that you are not from this world? Exactly. As for these standing beside me are the generals of the devil army both from this world and the hell. I have come to pay. 140. My greetings to the reincarnates from another world and extend a hand seeking mutual cooperation. 
At his words we were perplexed and overwhelmed at the same time. The other four were generals of the demon army. At some point later in the future we had to fight them. They were obviously not humans and their status was as usual not visible to us. One of them single-handedly took down the strongest attacks of our two best swordsmen. What kind of power and to what extent do they wield, I am curious to know. How did you know that we are from another world? That information was to be kept a secret. Well, of course. The four individual you see beside me are from your world and are actually your so defined classmates, who decided to follow my leadership and in return I granted them immense, insurmountable power which even your so-called gods cannot bestow upon you. There was one surprise after another. He knew of our origins and the other four non-humans are our friends. This night is going to be longer than expected. But maybe time has stopped so, in the real world it wouldn't even matter. All of us were giving off the same vibe of being dumbfounded, ignorant, anger and all these emotions just to hide our greatest feeling, fear. What do you mean they are our classmates? Why would they even side with you? It would do us some good if you straight come out and state your objective. I am sure you are lying because our friends would never attack us. So. Oa. 141. Before Homura could finish his sentence, a black dagger with a sharp edge had almost cut through his neck artery forming a small incision, as a drop of blood oozed out and slowly crawled on the tip of the blade. It was one of those robe-clad generals, Ekihiko Totsuka. It is really you. We tried to find you but we never could get in touch with you. Before class prep could finish, this classmate of ours tightened his grip on his dagger and pressed it to cut even deeper. Homura let out a shriek but the attacker seems to be pleasured to see blood gush out from his neck. Friends you say, well dot ha, we are nothing like that, and don't talk to our master zero with such indignity. I won't tolerate it. You all are just some low race weak scum. If it would have been our classroom, then he would have been punched by now, but this reunion couldn't get any more violent. No one even flinched. This guy in black robe whose face was easily visible to us by now since the hood was off, was really our classmate. I too could vouch after looking at his face. Actually all of us never had any problem recognizing each other since we were born with almost same faces and other corresponding body features of our previous life. But in his case something was different. Long red ears, two short horns on his head and a short red tail with a pointed arrow at its head. He resembled like one of the savage demon species because that's what exactly he was. 142. Apparently he got along well with the class rep. But now he was out for blood. The aura he emanated was making my eyes to stare at him difficult by every second. His strength needed no introduction. His magical powers and physical abilities were evident from the fact that I couldn't even catch his movements when he got hold of Homura. By far I know he used to be one of those kids who would follow anyone around. And here he was doing the same but something about him had changed quite a lot. He didn't even give a reason for his hostility but he made it very clear and straightforward that he wanted to murder us. Say zero. If I kill one of them then it won't make a difference in your plans. Since if they won't join up or listen to our orders then they will only get in our way. I don't know what to say, but it was too creepy to see someone in real live action. To lick blood on the dagger, as our old gone classmate started licking the tip of the dagger's blade covered in blood with a delighted expression. Joker, why don't you come back here? Stop causing problems for our new companions. They may get too wary of us if you toy with them like this. The class rep and all of us were disgusted by such a declare of his. But no one dared to even express it on their faces. Hey tell me what you did to our friends. Why did you turn him like this? What kind of weird things you did to him to force him to make follow your orders? Explain yourself or we won't sit quietly. 143. Master I told you we should just kill them all, these weaklings have no use. I will be more than happy to slowly chop down their necks slice by slice. We were a bit taken aback to hear someone pass judgment and our death sentences like that. Of course it was a first time, no one just straight comes out and say such a thing to a royal princess. And this was a conglomerate of royal prince and princesses. No. I order you to stay back and forbid you from taking action s on your own anymore. As for your concerns, 
it seems there is a misunderstanding. Homura was still not phased and tried to keep up the tough act, because if we give in to his temptation then we might be at the end of the losing side of the rope. And may I know where I am getting it all wrong. You see, they are following me on their own volition. I have not used any kind of force torture or taken someone hostage to compel them to do such things. It's just that they actually want to do it, all for my sake and the future of this world, as if we will believe you at your word. No one will follow a creep like you if there is nothing in for them. What about their oath of saving this world from creatures like you? Oh my, how rude, just can you be? And here I was trying my best to be polite and show generosity. It is a wastage of time so I will come straight to the point. Your friends are exactly doing what their oath says them to do, save the world. Finally, they have learned the truth about this world and about my great powers with what I desire the most can fulfill all their dreams. 144. Truth. Of course there is no bigger truth than you being a shady character. Nothing good can come from the mouth of a devil. Well I wholeheartedly agree with the class president since what, can the devil even speak true? Oh. These poor unfortunate souls who have been kept in the dark by the gods of the upper realm for so long, may the truth shine upon them, for the glory of revolution which is about to come. Hey don't go as making move in circles. What are you talking about exactly? Enough of your nonsense, I the first prince of Latavania kingdom demands an answer. You are quite impatient for a prince, our class president. It is the friend's job to tell the cold, harsh truth. Because the world certainly will. Better to face the demons when you're in school and able to stay alive. Haha. <laughs> this guy, Joker couldn't contain his excitement and butted in like an idiot with his uncanny which is laughter. At this the Apostle Zero raised his right arm and the Joker stopped his creepy act. W he would our gods lie to us? They have no reason and have been helping us to achieve what we aspire for. How can you even think of saying such things about those whom you should offer your prayers? Now most of the students were voicing their thoughts as they had enough of with this scrap. But things got to see as we had provoked the one guy in this room who was holding us hostage and could even freeze these gods in a time loop. How did we forget that? 145. Your so-called ever-friendly gods aren't aware of the truth themselves. It's the gods sitting at the top and their conspiracy to first reincarnate you and plunge this world into war again to harvest pure energy to reinforce this world and retain the glory of heavens. Such cruel will be your fate if you are still willing to remain ignorant and unaware of the truth, for I shall provide you with all, my power, the truth and the trust of our kind who really wants to save this world. Fine then, like this we won't get anywhere. So I am willing to hear you chatter and be quick, but I won't take you on your single word. At this the mouth of the Apostle Zero curled up. Just what is he planning? Is the truth we know isn't really the TR youth, but a falsified tale. Oh, you will believe my every word after you have seen this. A blue crystal appeared midair and a red light flashed brightly forming a hologram which resembled our world, our guard. After five minutes, 146, how could this be true? It cannot be, we are gonna die at this rate. This world is totally messed up and rotten at its core. How could they do this to us? Those stupid gods could never be trusted. Getting a new life and a wish to save the world they were all just candies and we grabbed them just because they were considered holy. How foolish can we be? If this is the truth, then I think we should cooperate with them. At this point the class press was looking down at the ground. So were all of us. All our dreams would eventually come to an end sooner than expected. Was there any saving this world now? If this was the absolute truth. Hey if this is really how this world will end. Then what are you going to do about it? I am glad you asked, for there is indeed a way we can still save this world and get hold of all the power forces that govern it. Finally vanquishing all the authorities and dominions that the gods hold over it. That explains nothing, of your true goal. Don't tell me that you will just spout some nonsense and then leave after having some fun. At this zero, brandished both his hands with his long claws curled up, he couldn't look more intimidating. His dark aura was now all over the room and breathing in it was difficult, our energy being drained at the same time, as if he was doing all this intentionally. 147. 
I will usher this world onto a new stage, giving it a fresh start. The lives that my people gave up for this world 200 years ago in the Great War, cannot be forgiven after it has been reduced to a more pitiful state under their care. From now I will destroy the life on this planet and start it from fresh with my generals. For now we shall be the gods of this new world and fulfill all of our dream, power, luxury, riches, danger, entertainment and authority all shall belong to us. Way I dot ttt, why you will destroy this world? Do you really think you can do that and we will let you? There is no need for you to play as pawn heroes but be the real heroes who can bring the change. For the pillars holding this world have already weathered and we are going to destroy them with much stronger force and built an incredibly strong single pillar that can hold all our dreams true to the eternity. For this beginning shall be the end. You, unbelievable, you really think you can pull this off? destroying the current world and killing all the life forms. The more you think about it the more ridiculous it sounds. Most of us had those depressed looks and pale white face. We were all corrupted and plagued by the truth of the darkness. I offer you all a hand of cooperation or how about a non-hostility pact and help us usher into this new world and lead the new generation of ultimate species to its glory and grandeur. For if you don't and decide to stand in our way we shall eliminate you for the better future. Your sacrifice as an otherworlder won't go in vain. 148. At this Yumaka Furata, the partner of Goddess of Aphrodite Dash stood from her seat on the sofa and looking in the direction of Zero grumbled as loudly as she could. Screw you. I am sure my goddess Aphrodite will do something about it. I will unveil the whole truth about you to this world and then together we will end you. All the gods of the divine realm will slay your kind and restore peace. She then took off from the sofa and started walking towards the entrance. How unfortunate. H's words were those of pity but he sounded exhilarated and his smile couldn't curl up more than it already had. Wah, ah. Loud screams could be heard as a head went flying off in the room and the dead body landed on the ground. Blood gushed out from the neck like an open hose pipe with a leak in it. This was for the first time we saw one of our friends die in this world so easily. Without a sound and a silent kill, there was no chance of avoiding or dodging the attack. No one saw the attack coming and neither were we prepared to watch it. It all happened so fast that we couldn't even take all the events in order. Some puked, while some stared at the severed head of their classmate and some turned their eyes away with a heavy heart. Why? Why? Yumiku Uchi is really dead. She is dead. Are we all going to die? Just like that. 149. No. Yes S. Zero. He will save us. But, can we really believe him? Fine. Fine we will listen to you, till no harm comes to us. We are ready to follow you, just don't kill us. Give us more power and we will save this world not like the old ways but also be its ruler. All the demon generals behind started laughing in their crude manner and in an eerie fashion. I still don't know their true identities but can still make a guess of who they can be. Just what happened to their gods and how did they end up with a person like him leading? How did they become this strong in such a short amount of time? There are just too many questions and no answers at all. It's so frustrating. Have most of them lost their minds? Instead of crying over their friend's loss, they are groveling and moping for help from the killer. But then again there was that fear-inducing skill of his still activated and working non-stop. He might just as well be waiting for this planned ending eagerly. I was too holding back, trying not to lose myself, but these water droplets swelled up in my eyes. I know. I know it's okay to cry but somehow I feel I'm glad that I am still alive. Is it really my true feeling? Just what have I done to deserve all this? Even though we were not that good friends but we still helped each other in our studies and sometimes shared lunch during school breaks. 150. Unforgivable. Unforgivable. I will stop this madness. I will take revenge and show these devils what price they have to pay for showing us this day. This world may as well burn with them. But if I fight now, I will die. It won't take a minute for them to kill me. I thought I was strong and smart and could achieve anything I wanted. But maybe that was just an illusion. Every time I think of fighting my wild senses tells me to run. Run far away and don't look back. Is this cowardice or an instinct of survival? I don't know. No one now looked up but some of them were facing the walls. 
some sat on the chair like a sloth attached to a tree while one of the girls had fainted. The gods and other maids were still smiling and laughing in their frozen state. Is this the true face of this world? The truth that was hidden from us that we were about to be used as pawns to start another deadly war on a much larger scale than before. I am so happy to hear your responses. May we grow together and live together. Those who wish to join me will soon receive their directions and I will bestow upon them the true power of realization. For those who want to remain neutral, will be disposed of the moment they interfere in my plans. I hope that all of you will become the seed of the new species that will walk on the new world and rule like a true king. Now we shall be taking our leave. One of the generals landed, but no one flinched. We were just too tired. They had already taken everything away from us, our hopes, our happiness, the future we were looking forward to too. We were just too weak and shameless not to face the fiend who dared to kill our classmate and turn some of them against us already. 151. This general almost looked normal, and for some reason it picked up the frozen body of goddess Aphrodite. Hey where are you taking her? Homura tried to object. Don't bother, she will serve as the source of energy to our plans since she will leave anyway. After all her contract is no more active. All four of the generals and the Zero Apostle vanished in the black mist as if they were never here to begin with except for their treacherous black magic traces and the smell of the blood. Also the dead body of Yumiko was missing. They even took that. The time freeze spell was lifted off and all the people who were adamantly standing like statues up till now started moving casually. To our surprise except the gods, all the servants and maids had forgotten about the memories of Yumiko. On being asked, they would just say that they do not know. Later the same reaction we got from her parents of this world. They refused of ever having a daughter. Such great was the power of Zero Apostle. Is it the best in our interest to join him? Remain neutral or oppose him. All of them seems a dead end to me. Hey, class what are we going to do now? Leave me alone. Of course join his side. You saw how strong he is. If we oppose him, our own classmates will kill us. I will talk about this to my god tomorrow. Hey class rep, what are your thoughts about it? I am going back. There is nothing left to discuss. 152. Hey wait. Okarin stopped Homura by placing his hand on his shoulder. The class pres looked back and threw off his hand away. I said, there's nothing left to discuss. Decide for yourself or are you telling me that you cannot even take a decision for yourself that will decide whether you are going to live or die? His eyes were dead serious and Okarin couldn't continue what he had in his mind. Do whatever you want, just don't bother me. After saying this loudly, Homura left the hall while goddess Freya tried to follow her. Since she was unaware of the situation at hand, maybe he is too upset with Yumiko's death after all they were close friends. While some of us explained what happened to our gods, some quickly left the palace without a word, while some were scarred in their minds to the point that they couldn't even speak during the rest of the night. God is never cruel. There is a reason for all things. That's what I was always told. Now I don't know what to believe. The truth that was told to us by the gods, or the revelation that was shown to us by the devil zero. 153, 154. This world is infinitely led and mysterious. Every day I would visit the forest with Lady Artemis, and we would see far more than I could comprehend, and that always made me feel excited. All I wanted was a simple world. But I now lived in one that is magnificently complex. Complexity implies meaning and I am afraid of meanings that can uncover secrets. We all have one that we keep it hidden under our various layers of actions we take, the faces we make and the way we feel about it. In each little life, you will find great truth and beauty, and in each of these lives we get the glimpse of the way of all things work in the universe. That's what Lady Artemis always said to me while she taught me using a bow in the forest that surrounded the northern parts of our kingdom. Because we are imperfect beings who are self-blinded to the truth of the world's stunning complexity, we shave reality into paper-thin theories and ideologies that we can easily grasp, and we call them truths. But the truth of a sea, in all its immensity, cannot be embodied in one tide-washed pebble. We go wrong the moment we don't admit the unknowable complexity of reality, but we go dangerously wrong when we claim that one pale story is the ultimate truth.
we arrive at the paleness to avoid consideration of the daunting truth in all its fierce color and infinite detail. 155. In the Palace of Perilous Empire, all of the students left on the same night after the fateful visit of the leader of the uprising who wanted to bring destruction to the present world and create a new world of his own desire that can fulfill the wishes of the strong and reject the weak and inferior. The second prince as usual was playing his piano, while the first audience seat was taken by a single person sitting on the sofa. The music ended soon after and the man made a small applaud. You really like playing a piano. That's the only time I see you smiling the most. It's actually the exact opposite. Playing a piano is the thing I hate the most. In my previous world just because my parents were musicians I was always forced to learn all the instruments when my parents saw that I had a talent for piano. From that day they kept on pestering me. Always say and gee to me that they expect great things from me. This and that but they never actually asked me what I really wanted to do was to become a writer. And now here I am. This smile on my face is because I have combined the two, playing all those fools on my tune and writing a new story of how this world will eventually come to an end so that a new dawn of creation arises. Maybe, there is still more I need to learn about you and your wicked habits, as if you are one to talk. Both of them started laughing while the pianist took a seat on the chair placed in front of the sofa adjacent to the table. 156, 157, and all the students fell for his talk. It was quite hilarious to see some of them grovel. Hiding my laughter while making a foolish face is indeed a difficult task. But you did laugh in between. I see you were not frozen. His power is ineffective on you after all, as expected from the god of darkness. But Zero put quite a good show. Also one of the reincarnator is already out of the race. Both of them started laughing while they were drinking their tea in a dim lit room with candles burning above the small brick table over the fire kiln of the room. Kenma Takeshi, the second prince of Perilous Empire and his god in contract Erebus, the god of darkness just couldn't stop smiling. It had been a day since the get-together party. Your plan did indeed work well. However they might get suspicious of someone from inside their circle already operating with zero. I have already taken that in account and it works in our advantage. They will be suspicious of each other and wouldn't be able to cooperate or trust anyone. Their last resort will be zero's company. They will never figure out that the whole thing was set up by us. This world is already falling apart just like 200 years ago and at a much faster rate this time. More appearance of strong monsters. Catastrophes, monster outbreak, dungeon appearance and magical disasters have been happening all over. Then there are humans who engage in conflicts and meaningless wars and fight over financial assets and authority even among themselves. 158. It was a blessing to be born a year before the others and giving me a chance to meet Zero and plan to make a new world to live for ourselves. I will be the god of my own world that I created myself. I have always dreamt about it and nothing less will please me. After lots of planning it's finally going to come true. Erebus made a gesture of bowing as if complimenting him about his dream and desire to become a much greater god himself by creating his own world. Had it been not for you to notice that the tree of life's fruit was missing and the world god was behaving suspiciously about it then it would have been difficult for me to believe you. The effluent of tree of life is essential for the survival of divine realm otherwise the gods will lose their power slowly. Recently the tree of life had been rejuvenating after the destructive blow it took during the great war 200 hundred years ago. No, one knows whether we can now even depend on it for our survival. That is where we come in picture, the reincarnates from another world, who in the hopes of saving the world will slowly bring the chaos of war to the whole world. It doesn't matter which sides will all win, but the energy released from the souls of the dead, their anger, resentment, jealousy, wickedness, sorrow, loss, suffering and fear will work as fresh nourishments for the tree. The end truth is the gods never had the intention to give us the chance to survive but would rather bet on our deaths and make us the martyr hero. But I have no intention to give up on life this easily. I will take everything the people, this world and all the power it holds. Maybe after becoming the gods of this world we can go after other worlds. Of course, 
because of the non-interference policy adopted by the 159 world god we are free to reign like we want to. It is his fault to put a nail in his own shoe. As far as I remember Hashima was not there. You mean the contractee reincarnator of Poseidon. Well Zero sent him on a mission to take control of the northwestern seas to raise pirates and stop communication between the demon continent and the human continent is his mission. There is one final matter to address to, Geodice Athena. Don't worry about her. She is just a weakling. All she is good at are making policies for the government and some impressive healing skills. She lacks in combat potential and is no need in the new world. She does not even pose any problem for us so we will let her enjoy her sweet time. Even if we took her, I don't think she is worth enough to even provide with the minimum amount of divine energy to proceed with our plans. It is hilarious to think that it had been more than 16 years and she is still not able to find her partner. She has stained herself with the sin of abandoning her duties and has given the proof of her incompetence and weakness. Now, now. Erebus don't be so harsh on her she is a very beautiful princess of a heart empire, though small, it is quite close to the demon continent and can play a major role during the battle between the two major races, I think it's not right to blame her, what do you mean, do you think there is some other reason to concern for, it's funny if you put it that way, as far as I remember her partner is a total klutz, she is weak has no self-respect and is so afraid that 160. She can't even communicate with others. Even her soul power during the reincarnation ceremony was so weak, to the extent that it could be put out by a single blaze of wind. I am sure that she is already dead. There's no way she can survive here in this world, and even if she is alive, with her skills she would not be able to even use magic or lift a sword. There are so many times we told her goddess, in the academy to give up on her she would be already dead, or too afraid that just like before she had closed herself away from this world. And here I got worried for nothing. Aha. Just loosen up a bit or you will all grow old sooner than expected. We have other things to set up to. Remember, things from here on are only going to become more interesting. The people of this world have become too carefree and corrupt with time. So now it is time to pay for their crimes. Knock, knock. You have permission to enter. An attendant in a white and red soldier uniform entered the room holding a scroll document in his hand he bowed down offering the scroll dash. This is a message for the second prince of the perilous empire and his stepbrother the third prince from the second princess. I took the scroll and asked the messenger to leave. For those who don't know Erebus is my stepbrother in this world. 161. What it is about. Siesta has been missing from the palace and we don't know what she is up to. For God's sake. She actually took an army of 10.000 soldiers and is going to launch an attack on the northwestern demon continent near the Canandra Mountains and subjugate the small beastmen villages that have emerged and take them as slaves. Maybe our encouragement had a much larger effect on her. What do you think of it? Well let's see, the more people die the better. What is inevitable after all? If this is what the gods of the upper realm want then let them have it. 162 information brochure beneficiary deity job profile homora kenta freya goddess of lust natsu kenchai prometheus god of fire sado fujibayashi Ares god of war seikamoto sandokrinos god of time and eternity raiuji ukute kami Kazuchi god of swords okaren oishima hermes the messenger god kanata azawa hefa estus the smith god akihiko tatsuka loki god of mischief Hashima Kachuragi Poseidon God of Sea Kenma Takeshi Erebus God of Darkness 163 Information Brochure Beneficiary Deity Job Profile Horidakatari Artemis Goddess of Hunting Yumika Furata Aphrodite Goddess of Love Siaka Tenma Diana Goddess of Forest Akane Kirigashi Orpheus God of Music and Poem Seitumi Yuk Twikolos God of Nightmares Sura Kendo Astera Goddess of Justice Arma Donjo over Goddess of Beast Saki Hondo in a Goddess of Blood Kariba Chioda Kali Goddess of Death Saki Kondo Athena Goddess of Knowledge 164 Student Diary Kenma Takeshi Name, Lucas Perilous Age, 18 Race, Human Level, 1980 HP, 14,000 MP, 20,000 SP, 12,000 Unique Skill, 
Dark Matter Condensation Skills Dark Magic LV7 Fire Magic LV5 Wind Magic LV5 Magic Resistance Regeneration Death March Shadow Steps Fear Infliction Titles Dragon Slayer The Envious One Description God in Contract Erebus God of Darkness Second Prince of Perilous Empire at present is assisting Zero in his plans and trying to bring everyone in class on board both Zero him and Erebus are planning on becoming the strongest god of this world and rule over the strongest species in the cosmos. 165. Student Diary Homura Kenta. Name, Keith Layton. Age, 17. Race, Human. Level, 880. HP, 9000. MP, 14000. SP, 8000. Unique Skill, Charm. Skills. Fire Magic LV4 Wind Magic LV5 Water Magic LV4 Hypervelocity Magic Sense Magic Resistance Regeneration Precognition Titles Illusionist Description God in Contract Freya Goddess of Lust First Prince of Lativania Kingdom Shows no interest in saving the world but have good leadership skills and managing combat data and analysis the knowledge of the truth has totally crushed his peace and watching a friend die has made him emotionless. 166. Student Diary Akihiko Totsuka. Name, Zandalift. Age, 17. Race, Red Demon. Devil Hybrid. Level, 3000. HP, 20,000. MP, 25,000. SP, 24,000. Unique Skill, Khan World. Skills. Fire Magic LV9 Dark Matter Magic LV2 Earth Magic LV7 Hypervelocity Magic Sense Magic Resistance Fast Regeneration Steel Body Empowerment Titles The Trickster from the Bottomless Pit Description God in Contract Loki God of Mischief Whole clan was hunted down by other demons for the tribe's cannibalism over demons, humans and other races too are put under monster class, humanoid Threat Level, S Class, currently one of the five demon generals of Zero's army. 167. Student Diary Harit Akateri. Name, Katerina Alakrad. Age, 17. Race, Human. Level, 900. HP, 12,000. MP, 16,000. SP, 10,000. Unique Skill, Orion Arrow. Ability Partially Locked. Skills. Fire Magic LV4 Wind Magic LV5 Ice Magic LV6 Camouflage Clairvoyance Magic Sense Magic Resistance Regeneration Pointer Wood Magic LV2 Titles The Jager on the Wind Description God in Contract Artemis Goddess of Hunting First Princess of Alucrad Empire Is considering showing neutrality but has decided on uncovering the full plans of Zero. Is also worried for not being able to use her unique skill at its maximum power because system level requirement not reached. 168. 169. Chapter 4. I told you being alone is not so bad if you can go insane. Here I was in floor, 44 and 43, again clubbed together. I wonder why the floors exist together, maybe because they are actually monsters with intelligence and prefer to live in groups. A tall black color, double lead and extremely thick built tower was hanging from the roof. While the above segment was small and much thicker, the below segment was longer and less thick. There were several small cube shaped holes lined up in an orderly fashion from top to bottom. The whole floor was large though not much larger than the previous one except for the height of the room. At the eight corners of the room a huge cluster of magetite ore was shining with a deep blue color while a small circular perimeter of a water body was formed below the tower. I wonder, if something is living inside the tower. 170. The only way to know is to get nearer. But my brain started hurting a bit and got worse with time as I approached it. Because of the heightened senses and danger sense I was receiving living signs not in tens, hundreds but in thousands. A flying monster species almost same size as me, though a bit larger in length had started mobilizing themselves in numbers tending to thousands. I can count a total of 50,000 monsters. Aren't there just t too many? I mean should there be these many monsters in a dungeon on a single floor in the first place? 
and just my luck that through my clairvoyance I could see them assembling in groups and taking a triangle formation with numbers multiplying in five. The first wave was of twenty monsters, next one hundred, and next five hundred and so on. Planning to attack with such a strategy means that the enemy is weak and so relies on number power to overpower the enemy with large forces, tiring them out and finally dealing the final strike. After a moment's pause, a small survey team of ten monsters started approaching in my direction. They had already sensed an intruder in their home. Honestly fighting an enemy who can think strategically can take longer than expected and will be more tiring than ever. I still don't know the exact species. So I used appraisal and was a bit relieved but quite worried about how things were going to turn out. Black Flare. Yes, it's a new spell I developed by mixing two attributes dark matter and flame. In the previous floors I have learned the lesson that single attribute magic attacks are useless against these legendary. 171. Labyrinth monster but mixing more than one gets the job done. Like my fusion ball this too was supposed to prove super effective. But things went quite different. I was sure that I regulated my magical energy and targeted only the ten monsters. But suddenly the whole ground was on black flames, which was super hot though it did not affect me, the caster. It transformed into a huge wall of black flames and spread across the entire floor. The only safe land was behind me which was still green. Apparently, these so-called flying monsters were actually gigantic wasps which were almost similar to honeybee anatomically but were pitch black in color, before they knew it their wings and then the whole body was on fire. I thought it would be difficult to identify which bees were on fire but there was a stark difference between the black color at the bee monster and my flames, which were still dark as if one could immerse themselves in it. Those ten did not even get the chance to get a look at their enemy and were completely erased from this world. For some reason I thought I won't be able to use gluttony on them if they disappear, but I could still feel that I was able to consume them, their soul core. That's it their life energy was transferred to me. I have got quite a nice skill, but it was pretty useless at level 1 back then. But I had no time to rest. The enemy on being notified of their scout party wiped out had decided to head to the battlefront. Buzz, buzz dot dot buzz, bizz dot bizz. This sound was killing me more than their attacks could. 172. Before they got closer to the black flames, they launched their unique projectile attack from the tip of their needle attached at the bottom of their hip. Several strikes of lightning fell exactly at the same place where I stood without a single miss. But I was quick enough to dodge them by jumping and then hanging midair with my webs. I condensed the black flames now, and started launching them repeatedly in ball-shaped shots at the enemy which had now had me surrounded in thousands. You think you have cornered me? Then bow before me and beg for your lives. Somehow speaking these lines really lifted up my fighting spirit, so please just bear with it. By now the whole floor was ravaging in my black flames as they tried to soar up high in the sky. Most of the bees tried to maintain their distance, but their large number made it inevitably impossible for all of them to avoid it. I subjected the whole area under a very strong gravity field, making sure that each of them falls in the dark burning pit. While it was working fantastically, some were strong enough to take support from their neighbor comrades, which were working in turns with the former and latter waves. Their cooperation and group work compatibility was unrivaled. While some of the bees who looked like the commanding officers because of their increased size and a much deeper color with a brown tint at their forehead were strong enough to still fly in my gravy field. 173. By now they were trying desperately to put out the flames. Some bees on fire would jump in the middle lake while some were trying to spray water over the spread flames. But it was of no use. Actually I myself was surprised on such a revelation. Maybe because dark matter magic is mixed in it. It had been more than 20 minutes and there were still more than 20,000 bees left. They had fallen back and regrouped once. Their decisions are too coordinated and human-like. This time something was different while the front continued with their failed lightning assault strike. The bees at their back were attempting to do something secretly. As their thorns attached to their back glowed with a purple color, it started spinning and launched at a much faster speed than lightning. Though there were few of them, dodging one was pretty much difficult. It was thanks to the gravity field that their speed was slowed down. 
but the problem lied that wherever they landed the whole space was sucked into a purple vortex, much similar to a mini black hole. A single hit and I would be a goner. So I made sure to avoid them the most, while even if it meant to take some shocks from the lightning strikes, I continued the same pattern of black flare balls, gravity field set up. While for those who survived I launched at them lances and spears made of ice, sometimes I used wind blade to take out enemies in group as their half cut body fell down and got roasted in fire while it also served as a means to spread my flames as it roared and were now even burning down the dungeon wall. For the special thorn thrower bees I launched at them special gravity balls to make them purposefully fall in the flames. 174. The sounds of their buzzing was fainting slowly and yet it felt relieving every minute. Stop making sounds and just die. I shouted loudly as the last of their brethren fell into the black sanguine fluid. Yippee! I cleared this floor. So I had thought but there is always a surprise. As the whole tower was now shaking and small parts of it started falling down in the lake below. Thud, thud. Strange noises could be heard from inside the tower growing every second like a heartbeat as the surrounding air started shaking. The wind pressure had increased suddenly and strong gust of winds had started revolving in a circle with the tower as their center. Huge cracks formed on the tower and from those bearings a huge red body could be seen inside almost half the size of the gigantic tower. Just what in the world is it now? Stop with the noisy entrance act and just show yourself. By now I was floating in midair with anti-gravity, though it was difficult to maintain balance under these strong winds but I held on to it. Zah Az says, in a sudden flicker of wind, the whole tower was violated and all its huge debris was sent flying in every direction almost breaking the walls of the dungeon and leaving huge holes in the ground. 175. So, that's how big it is. The queen of all the bee monsters, a 35 feet tall and almost 8 feet wide red color bee was flying in front of me. Something was quite unique about her. It was as if the presence of an elegant queen, like Vibe, her title really fits her as the ruler. All the air columns in the space had drifted towards her and were somehow taking a shape of discs, almost more than hundred in numbers. These invisible discs were easy to pinpoint out thanks to my magic sense, but they were flying at a much faster speed than the lightning strike. Even if I dodged them, I still ended up bleeding. Just now I lost a leg as one of the discs came in flying. It p aims a lot but I can't lose focus during the battle. No need to worry since I can using my healing spell anytime. There was much more to the attack than I saw in the first stance. The wind that rotated at a very high velocity was not the only fatal thing but the wind as a whole that surrounded the disc worked in synergy to cut down things. Also the main problem was that these air discs did not disappear after a single move but rather followed me around relentlessly. I had to keep on using gravity balls to parry these discs but had to also keep an eye on the next move which the queen was about to make. Is that all you have got? I tried to shout, while I blasted off the last disc. Not that it would understand that I am provoking it. Killing the whole army was easier as it was done in a planned repeated number of fixed attacks. 176 but this queen was just sadistic. It kept a huge distance between the flames and me too. The speed at which she winked her wings made it almost appear disappear, causing a deafening sound and making her immune to the gravity field I had set up. I launched a number of fusion ball attacks and in between jets of dark flare but she was able to dodge all. Her speed was almost at the same level as me, even greater than mine. It's so unfair to be able to move so fast even with that huge body. Her next move was pretty much obvious as I saw her thorn shining with a blue color. She was preparing for a huge lightning strike. If it's that, then I think it will be quite easy to dodge and then I will close in for the attack. So I thought, but when a huge circular ray of blue plasma started moving in my direction, I was shocked. I tried to maneuver in midair while using my webs and accelerate with the help of wind magic while also controlling my body weight using anti-gravity magic. One might think that it would be difficult to control these many spells at once, but when it's life or death situation, you must need to do everything to survive. The plasma ray didn't stop but kept on traveling while following my every move quite intuitively, 
so the queen was smart enough to predict my next move. If I slowed down a bit or did not use every means at my disposal to move fast then I would be burned down to the last cell. After two minutes it finally stopped and the queen let out a huge roar while it buzzed around in a circular fashion. 177. It seems quite frustrated and I have almost drained it. SMP with that attack gone, it appears to be mad. Finally, lost your mind, then let me finish you. Something was odd. Suddenly the roundabouts of the queen had turned into a huge hollow blue disc. Huge sparks of lightning emanated from its every body parts especially from its joints. What is it now this time? I used my appraisal, since I didn't quite catch this information the last time, I missed it. Even after so much preparation I am not good enough. The blue necklace around its neck, it's a legendary weapon. Just what is up with every boss category monster in this dungeon? After they drain all of their MP, they throw their final trump card. How did they even get hold of such a weapon? The whole body of the Red Queen was now glowing in a blue light as huge lightning strikes fell around in a disorderly fashion, so I did not need it to dodge them. As so, oh, um, I was knocked off and directly fell in the lake. Something so fast hit me that even my senses couldn't keep up. I instinctively looked up with my eight eyes and there it was a huge blue plasma ray flying around. No, that was not it. The queen bee had turned into a plasma rod herself and was now flying at an unimaginable speed, defying my eyes and the physics so I believed in. Well this is a magical world, so you can throw your physics book anytime in the dustbin, he <laughs> Even my eyes couldn't keep up. 178. So my last resort was to quickly spread my webs across the floor and keep tabs on its movement whenever it trips on one. Being caught in the webs was just asking too much. Thousands of web lines broke in succession as it tried to follow me around. Another quick hit and I might be decapacitated into two. All my magical attacks got brushed off or either dissipated by the plasma ray surrounding the huge body of the queen bee. I now had two plans in my mind, one that I had used before and the other I could think of in the present moment based on my surroundings. I plan on using the first method while make preparations for the second. Absolute zero. The surrounding temperature dropped at an inconceivable speed, but I concentrated this phenomenon on the queen bee. ZZZZZZZ.I.P, zip. By far all the magical attacks I considered it my most dangerous move and my ace card, a spell that can freeze the soul, life energy and all biological movement at cellular level, may as well announce the victim dead. It was so beautiful. The whole blue plasma froze in midair covered with a shining blue ice, transmitting a cold yet soothing light all around the area. All I could say that it was sparkly, sparkly and sparkle. But I cannot be careless, the next spell preparations were in order. Now I was standing at the center of the lake of which all water had dried up by the heat generated by the black flames. 179 Between the fourth state of matter plasma and fifth state of matter absolute zero. Both Einstein condensate. I wonder which will win. I had already started feeling the movements the bee was making inside the absolute ice covering. So it was ineffective, even though I brought down the temperature. It must have been that legendary weapon which helped it to maintain its thermal kinetic energy. But still I have some time in my hand. I was planning on using wind magic to now take control of the wind since the final bee had stopped moving. Round, round, and round. This is the way you go. A black vortex of black flame was slowly taking shape on a large scale. But doesn't it sound too simple for me and also it was of not much use against the queen. So to make sure it makes a direct impact in one blow together, I introduced a very small dark matter gravity ball in between. I kept pouring in magical energy without any checks, while I also had started compressing my black flames around it making it look like a small planet surrounded by a black orbit. It was still under progress, the exact shape which I had thought it to be was still not around, and the bee had already broken free through its icy state. Crack dot crack. Small fragments of blue ice showered all around like rain, while the bee in its blue plasma state flew all around at maximum speed, trying to gain maximum momentum and achieving its final dash state. She circulated above the top of the lake and from the maximum height made a final dive. My spell, 
was almost at its completion, one could even call it a semi-black planet, the total mass of this black orb was unimaginably 180 high as it could now keep all that spread around black flames in a compressed revolving state around it. It was now either my final super duper special attack or its final ultra fast lightning dive. I know the name sounds ridiculous because I don't have enough time to think of good ones. It all happened in less than a fraction of a millisecond. Boom. The whole floor was destroyed and all that was left was a huge crater which at successive steps grew deeper and deeper. At the bottom pit of it, laid my body. Don't worry I was not dead yet. Hopefully not. It will take more than that to kill me. Should I even say these cliché lines, it's always after speaking these lines that the hero meets an opponent he cannot defeat. It will be bad for me if I fail to defeat my opponent because that would be equal to accepting my death. 181 182 Divine heal Pain Pain go away, come to me another day. I was quickly back on my feet the most versatile spell to make a quick comeback from the grasps of death. I was jumping around trying to eat the golden dusty light which was emanating from my body. I don't want to but I think this loneliness and all this fighting is getting to my head. Please refrain from prescribing me to an asylum, because I don't think there is one here. And if you still think I should go, then you are more than welcome to come and rescue me from here. This time I did not level up but I could feel my magical powers had exponentially grown after Glutton he consumed the life energy, soul core, of the queen bee monster. But while all this jumping around my eyes fell on a small blue bead scattered around me which must have been the parts of the legendary necklace weapon she wore. Gra, gulp. I ate all the beads, why do you ask because they resembled so much like candies that I thought they were actually one. If only I was back on earth and I knew I was going to die then I would have made sure to fulfill my dream of one spying all the chocolates from an exclusive candy store and eat them all while watching movies anime and reading novels 183 acquired lightning magic gluttony analysis completed acquired divine lightning aura suddenly an absurd statement appeared on my status window and before i knew it my whole body was glowing in a blue color and blue sparks just like the queen bee was darting all around my body just as i thought as though ooh, 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 I am able to move much faster even than a queen bee. Maybe eating was the best option after all. One could witness a sharp blue light appear for a moment and disappear in the next as it sprawled around the whole room. Electric discharges were coursing throughout my entire body. I was just too excited and in that movement before I could even count one, I had revolved around the whole floor more than hundred times while I also collected all the magic I tore. Time to head to the next floor. Zo so, 184. Monster Diary Primordial Bee Queen. Catastrophe Class Monster. Name. Ignis Roginu Age. Dash Race. Primordial Bee Zap Level. 5600 HP. 58000 MP. 50,000 SP, 70,000 skills, Lightning Magic LV8, Light Magic LV4, Self Regeneration, Immunity, Wind Magic LV8, Titles, Lightning MC Queen, The Ruler, Legendary Weapon, Ignis Pearl, Description, A Necklace Forged by the Goddess of Alchemy and Blessed by the God of Thunder was bestowed upon the Primordial Bee Queen during the Great War 200 years ago. Contain vast amount of pure divinity and the power of lightning held by the God of Thunder himself. 185, Floor, 42, A Starving Desert That's how I will describe this new floor. Sand, sand everywhere and not a single drop of water to drink. There was not even a single monster, maybe they abandoned this place because it looks just too plain to even describe anything. Usually you find some ferns, cacti or some scorpion, camel or snake but it was a total barren land. I cannot sense any hostility and there are not even any magic at all. The gate to the next floor is just one kilometer ahead. I wonder why it is that far. Maybe it is one of those rest places safe zone you find in a game. Then I cannot waste any moment and with further ado I must gallantly walk like a lone fighter through this desert when no one is noticing me. Silently while I try to twist my hood and adjust its angle to stop the rays of light directly hitting my eyes. Even though, unfortunately I am a spider and I have no hat, 
but I think I'm a warrior since I have exterminated a goblin species and a bee species, just so that I can. For a moment I paused because suddenly the ground started shaking and the place where I was standing started getting submerged even though where this sand was going I don't know. I used flying magic and reached a certain height but then a wave of fear disarrayed my entire thought process. Without any thought I used my webs and changed my position to extreme right as far as I could go. 186. There it was a huge mouth with countless sharp teeth and a cylinder worm-like body. A being as tall as a skyscraper appeared exactly at the same position where I was floating. But I couldn't even take a breath or observe its physical features carefully that it started following me, twisting its body in any direction, in whichever way it wanted, but I kept on flying and swing through the entire floor. Something was telling me to stay away from its mouth, as far as I could. Spider senses do come in handy don't they? Maybe if we have them in real life then we can avoid accidents that happen due to the carefree nature of humans. But whatever, things returned to silence when this tall, gigantic being with its ugly mouth went crawling back inside the desert, maybe asking for a safe zone in the world's most dangerous place dash the great Tathar labyrinth was too much to ask for, just what was the deal with it? Was it sleeping all this time? That's why I couldn't sense its presence before. And how long is it, to twist its body at any place and any way it wanted? What about its bones? Wait does it even have any time for, appraisal, dash just when I thought things couldn't get any tougher. So we have got a time eater here, a single bite and my time will be eaten by 10,000 years. So not even my bones will be left behind, I am glad that I avoided its jaws. Does something like that should even be allowed to exist, I need to keep my guard up all the time. I don't know from where next time it will emerge. 187. Monster Diary Ancient Death Worm. World Disaster Monster. Name, Tempest Vic Age, Dash Race, Time Eater Worm Level, 6600 HP, 70,000 MP, 90,000 SP, 80,000 Skills, Space and Time Magic LV10, Immunity, Self Regeneration, Earth Magic LV8. Titles, Empty Hourglass. Sand is considered to be the representative of the flow of time. The falling sand in an hourglass is equivalent to the time past, that will never return again. Even if you flipped back the hourglass, it will always symbolize the passage of same amount of time but will always have a different nature and will never be the same. 188. 189. It's probably roaming underneath all that sand waiting for me to stop moving and then capture. So I will give it the bait while preparing a surprise gift for it. A monster then suddenly popped out of the ground eating sand and all the living beings alike. It was directly aiming for me without any hesitation, but I easily dodged it since I can now use divine lightning speed. Fusion Ball. Wind Cutter. I used two consecutive spells and half the body that appeared above the surface was cut down and fell on the sand. But that's when things started getting ugly, when you think that you can lighten up a bit. The fallen part got submerged in the sand, while the upper head grew back and a new mouth appeared near the cut. Maybe I learned a late lesson by continuously hitting it with series of magical attacks and now it had almost 25 mouths crying for food. But the good thing is that I could now have a rough idea about its total length which is almost 10 kilometers. Bad thing is it gets me demotivated since even if I keep on cutting, prolonging this battle will do me no good. I wonder how such a huge body is living inside the sand. That's it, sand. Everyone knows that heating it at almost 2000 degrees Celsius turns it into a glass. This way I can trap the death worm inside the glass and then break it. All I needed to do now was to wait for it to return back underneath and boom. 190. Black Flare plus Gravity Ball. Dash a deadly combination indeed. Within a second the whole thing turned into a semi-liquid glass state with pitch black in color. I could see the surface almost moving but I will not let it escape. Absolute zero. This time the whole glass structure was turned into crystal black solid and through the transparent surface I could properly see the silhouette of the worm spanning all across the floor and so did the glass I forged. I was impressed by my own magical powers and the wondrous thing I could pull off. 
I wonder are others stronger than me or maybe I am getting ahead of myself. Time to break the ice. I came back on the surface and forged a huge ice hammer. 3.2.1 Here we go, with my full force. Smash. Crack. A small crevice appeared on the surface, and within a blink of an eye it spread all across the floor. Crackle. Crackle. Tiny shards of broken glass were spread all around me and contained the broken flesh of the death worm. I used gluttony and all the glass pieces with death worm's body part got enveloped in black webs and then vanished. You have leveled up 191. As usual the pure white thread started wounding around me and I was put under a deep slumber. And when my eyes opened again I had been asleep for 15 days. The number of day I needed to rest had increased when I level up. You have reached level 4. Acquired lightning magic. All seeing eyes of the gods. Third form. I have Adrana. I cannot wait any longer. I need to climb up at a much faster pace. Time to head to the next upper floor. 192. Status window name. Dash age. 2 months race. Arachne level. 4 HP. 100,000 MP. ERRSP. ERR, unique skill, all seeing eyes of the gods first form, eye of investigation second form, kinetic eye third form, eye of adrana, skills, glutton LV4 poison magic sage of fire LV5, sage of water LV5, sage of wood magic LV8, sage of wind LV4, mystic thread magic, sage of space time LV8. Sage of Ice LV5, Body Strengthening LV7, Body Durability LV8, Sage of Divine Light, Gravity Magic LV7, Magic Resistance, Immunity, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Lightning Magic LV7, Sage of Earth Magic LV4, Titles, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, 193, Third Form, I of Adrana This form of I grants the power to Dash automatically repels and eliminates any magical or physical attack in the field of view. Controlling attractive and repulsive forces of the planet at will and enhance its potential by using it on objects both living and non-living. The ability to attract and repel extends to even massless things like light, magic particles, electromagnetic radiations. This ability extends to even the molecules present in the states of matter. Grants access to it rays. Increase or decrease one of the nature's forces in small vicinity includes Coulomb forces, magnetic forces, gravitational force and nuclear forces. 194. Floor 43. Floor 43 was a first time for me, both in this world and my previous world. A beautiful marshland stretched out far beyond my view. The whole place was shining blue under the huge chunks of magetite or hanging from the ceiling. Usually these kinds of places are described gloomy, sticky, dangerous and unhealthy. But for my first time in a place like this it was peaceful and in the whole area there were vines spread out on the ground, though they looked old but were quite sturdy. In between the whole floor there stood a giant, well more exactly to say a colossal gargantuan with a tree covered all over with some weird green overgrown moss, with no leaves to speak of. Its trunk was thicker than any tree I had ever seen. Its branches were jutting out from the other end and formed large assemblage in two separate groups. Small puddles of clear water were present everywhere around me, but its color seemed off a bit and tiny fumes appeared here and there as if they were being heated under a constant temperature. The thought that I was up till now inside a rocky underground dungeon seemed like a dream. If only I could find some fruits then maybe I could avoid eating monster. Though they taste bad I have gotten used to their flavor. Thud, thud. The silence which I was enjoying up till now was shattered into pieces by this awful noise. Strong gust of warm wind started revolving in the upper region and tiny fumes from the small puddles have turned into huge misty clouds. 195. Jets of white smoke were being released from the base of the mountain tree at regular intervals and somehow it seems that it was filling itself up with that weird steam. The tree was now stiff and appeared turgid in every aspect of its plant physiology. I think I know where this is all going. Classic legendary monster waking up from their eternal sleep to kill those who tries to tread past its domain. Is it my fault again that he woke up? The huge bevy of long tick branches were now shifting and taking form of two hands, which later bent down while touching the ground using full force to pull something heavy up. 
which appears to be its lower body, and that what exactly happens, no surprise, with the trunk as its midbody the roots too were in a pair of two and resembled the legs of this monster, whoa, whoa, whoa. what, for real, if you are thinking I will have that kind of expression when an ugly face appeared exactly at the same place where it should have been and the thing that it could make noises then I will be surprised to see a talking tree. Then let me tell you that I am currently pissed off. Damn it. Just go back to sleep and let me pass through. It's not that I am complaining. It would be nice if they wake up from sleep. Then I say good morning. Morning. To my fellow neighbor spider. 196. Then we have breakfast over some fruits, boiled herbs, soup and maybe someday I can even get hold on spices, some flour. Then after playing for a while, at the end of the dusk we would say our goodbyes and promise to meet again and as a farewell present he would give me one of his sacred possessions. Thump. A flying punch of a bunch of clumped hard branches came crashing in. Maybe I spaced out far too long, but I am still able to dodge thanks to my spider senses. I took a quick look around the floor again and realized that in this short time its entire geological features had changed. The mist had grown denser, and gradually became thick enough that I could only make out the shapes of the things around me. I was in midair when another punch came flying towards me. Like a gymnast I swung around with my webs making a clear dodge. Don't try to mix me with those in circus people, but a professional one at that. Bwebrag. I let out a large cry after something huge hit me in my stomach. I came crashing down on one of the walls. My whole body was under a lot of pain but the self-regeneration was kicking in. Then the tentacles of vines and branches quickly made their way towards me, desperate enough to even climb the walls as fast as they could. Black Flare 197 A wall of flames appeared in front of me and while those who tried to cross were burned to nothing in an instant, but the other approaching branches quickly backed off. I still am not able to move. The impact of the punch had a much greater effect on me. You can expect a little gentle spider to tank a blow from a 100 feet tall giant dream monster. I used my appraisal and found out that this fog had the ability to mess with the senses of the target. So the solution was pretty obvious get rid of the mist. I rose up from my place, used teleportation spell and was now at the gate through which I had entered this floor. Wind blade. I manipulated the air all across the room and shifted them towards the ceiling. Finally I started cooling it off with my kinetic eye using cryokinesis. A small shower of rain came falling down and the area had now cleared for a perfect view. I too could now see the tree monster who looked frustrated seeing its barrier down. What did you do? Where is the white smoke in which I could hide myself? It was you. You turned my smoke into water. Please teach me to tell me how to do it. With its expression so should have been the response of the tree monster. It quickly charged towards me. But there was still some time. I needed to get rid of the source of this mist. So I launched some black flame balls at the puddles which were evaporated in an instant with a whisk sound. 198 199 Monster Diary Ancient Death Worm World Disaster Monster Name Dentros Oi Age Dash Race Evil Seed of the Tree of Life Level 8000 HP 90,000 MP 90,000 SP 95,000 Skills Wood Magic LV10 Immunity Ultra Self Regeneration Earth Magic LV9 Confusion Titles Divine Elder Wood 200 Usually such colossal 100 feet tall monster would always had an upper hand over me had I not discovered flying magic, mid-air maneuvering, anti-gravity magic and finally controlling lightning around my body and move around just as fast as while using teleportation. I made a quick dash towards the tree monster too leaving air sonic booms behind on me that throttled my speed with each one I made. I had prepared eight black flare spheres and launched them each at one of the limbs, one at the head and the rest at the abdomen. Game over, or so I thought, but the dreaded path which I was about to take starts now. The giant tree monster shed its own limbs and the branch covering which were on fire before it could spread and grew new fresh ones within no time and just my luck that they looked stronger than before. Things were getting uglier by every second. This monster sure knew how to put on a good show. Huge, long vines sprouted out of its body and moved in whatever way they liked in whichever direction. Then his giant punches were all around the place. 
Maybe he used to be a boxer in his teens. I kept on trying each magical attack but the result was the same. Its densely packed and intertwined vine made body withstood all of them and those which were damaged simply grew, like it was not that big of a deal. Things escalated when, suddenly earth wall obstacles started appearing out of nowhere trying to block my path, while the tree monster had started throwing off rocks by first crushing them and 201 throw its pieces all around. For some it might look like, it was a waste of time, but even the smallest crushed rocks were thrown with reinforcement magic fixed at a pace strong enough to leave a huge crater wherever they fell. Destruction was widespread, to the extent that all the world disaster pictures I saw in the newspaper would just look like small torn down rooms in comparison to what was happening here. But thanks to my teleportation skill and blue lightning speed I was able to keep up with its huge number of attacks. Recently after unlocking my fourth eye I had an idea, a spell that can be strong enough to destroy this entire floor including this dream monster. But if I don't carry myself around properly then I might be obliterated too along with it. So I need to keep a healing spell active on me all the time. Time to put on a show, living in this dungeon for past two months I had realized what I needed to do. Usually if I was reincarnated as a human, I doubt that the courage I had shown up till now was really a part of me. Or was it because I am born a monster that these qualities came with my birth? But something in me told that it was not courage. What I was experiencing is fear, a typical fear that demands you to spend all your life force forcing you to the brink of your death. This press of death and the energy that is released by the fear of death at every step of your life, what does this really make me? Life is precious, life is irreplaceable once it's gone then I will never get it back. But this was not what I was actually thinking. 202 All I wanted was to kill kill and kill everyone who wanted to kill me. Because if I don't take the initiate I've to kill them, then my chances of survival will be less. By being born as a monster, I had learned to turn my cowardice, fear, anxiety and my unneeded concerns into power. Will I give up without fighting? What choice did I have? I was alone and no one is there to help me. At the back is the entrance where I just slayed a monster. In front of me is a monster who wanted to kill me and beyond that is another monster who will wholeheartedly try to eradicate me. There was nothing left to do but fight. Power. I needed more power to survive. Thud, thud, thud. Several tendrils of this tree monster headed towards me and crashed into the wall. Flying Madeira had become my hobby and I was an expert of evasion skill now. For those attacks I could not dodge, I used my black flames to disintegrate them. Though they were quickly replaced by another bundle, my plan was to reach above the head of the tree monster, so I first needed to slow down its movements. I continuously launched a number of dark gravity balls and then used, absolute zero, spell to make it stop, though it will only buy me 5 seconds and then it would just shed off its armor like skin. 203. This spell of mine was actually based on one of the theories I read in an astronomical encyclopedia, and with these special dash eyes of Adrana I can now perform it. Problem is I don't know the result will be same or not. Or will the whole spell just stop in between while several holes will be punched inside my body as I would be left wide open, unprotected and exhausted then? It was all on just one new idea, that's all. At first I casted an anti-gravity field around the whole room, except for the tree monster, which was still trying to free itself from the ice attack. Then I took a small rock and casted a strong gravitational magic on it. What I was doing it was increasing its weight using my kinetic eye. I kept on increasing its weight, more and more. I added dark matter magic to it. No special reason, just my intuition and some cooking mixing skills. The small brown pebble was now a perfect sphere with a black color brighter than the light prevailing in the room. By every millisecond its mass was rising beyond with an exponential of 1010. Carrying it around was easy since I made the whole area weightless with anti-gravity. By now I was above the head of the tree monster, whose head was a bit bent down. Divine heal, dash the spell which I needed the most. A golden light enveloped my whole white body which had grown a bit larger than before. After my evolution to the fourth level, 204, last and final the small pebble, whose mass was almost more than half of a large planet, 
I consider the spherical area greater than the radius of the pebble and using my third eye for my raised coulomb force. If you are wondering what I did, then by removing this force, I raised the nature of particles that attract and then repel each other to maintain stability. But now the only force that remained was the strong nuclear forces and gravitational forces which were both of attractive nature. With no other variable forces to keep the stability of the pebble in check, all its atoms had now started to move inwards, that is towards its center of mass, leading to the formation of a black hole and ultimately a gravitational collapse of the supermassive particle. Hypernova, the small dark black sphere in front of me, it was majestic. Brimming with magical and life forces of infinite possibilities, I had done something that could even rival the dawn of creation. I had to squint all of my eight eyes just to look at this magnificent piece. Black whips were revolving all around me. Just being in the presence of such a thing had broken me into a heavy sweat. There were still two seconds left. Moving with this heavy particle was impossible in normal circumstances. But this time around I had taken that into account too. My legs, they were burning, but I need to hold on if I want to beat the tree monster, if I want to end this quickly, if I want to get out of this hell soon, if I want to meet her. 205, 206. I have to do it, even though it is hurting. My legs were burning, my claws were being crushed under the huge pressure, while I was in an instant being healed by my healing magic. My ends of the legs were covered in blue light of plasma ray jets along which blue lightning was radiating throughout my body. I spun around my body furiously like a cyclone of blades, mincing anything that came in contact even the air with the plasma covered legs, while carrying the black massive hypernova particle, which I held in front of me. In an instant the wooden body had broken free. But I had already made my move and in the blink of an eye, the ever tough, unbreakable body of this mythical creature was cut down in half like a fruit sliced through a blue laser beam. The supernova ended up hitting the ground and before the body of the monster could regenerate and rejoin itself, the room had turned white, as if all the colors from the nature had been absorbed into that one single point of impact. For a moment there was complete silence and in the next my earlobes went numb that I couldn't hear anything. You have leveled up. You have leveled up. After 30 days I came out of my white web shell and found myself in the middle of an unbelievably gigantic crater with a diameter of 25 km and a depth of 3 km. 207. 208. Well that takes care of the tree monster. But was this massive destruction really caused by me? This floor was supposed to be much smaller, could it be that other floors got caught up in this blast too, since I have leveled up two times at once, which I thought would never be possible, but where was I, I used appraisal and to my delight I was now on floor 30, I sure took a jump, so the blast really did a number on this dungeon, I think it's thanks to my leveling up and the divine heal spell that I am alive, usually all the floors are considered to be in another space dimension pockets but maybe because of my spell which was supposed to work on molecular level broke the dimensional barrier and exterminated all the other monsters, other monsters who too were born like me in this dungeon who wanted to survive and see the outside light and maybe were too finding the person they loved and if they don't have one then possibly search for them. All of them were wiped out, even before I could see them before they died or I could identify whom I killed. In an instant light would have flashed in front of their eyes, and without knowing what hit them they were disintegrated into the nothingness and then automatically absorbed by my gluttony. Why was I the only one to survive? Do I really have something special in me that they didn't? 209, was fighting the only way I can get out of this dungeon. Surely all the monsters had supposedly feeling and a certain level of intelligence to make their own choices, to get angry when they screw up and get hungry when their stomachs are empty and for that they hunt others. Why did they never try to climb the top like me? Are they afraid of the light too? Is the surface dangerous, where supposedly common people live their merry lives? Food is everywhere, people spend times with their families under a single roof and try to form and live in a community to protect their interest, culture and ideology. Am I afraid of the light? Maybe or maybe not. But I know that even if I am scared someone outside will be there to hold my hands, grab me round their arms and tell me that it's all over and I can rest. Dot.
because that's the thing I want to hear the most right now. 210 lines. Status window name, dash age, 3 months race. Arachne level, 5 HP, 200,000 MP, ERRSP, ERR unique skill. All seeing eyes of the gods first form, eye of investigation second form, kinetic eye third form, eye of Adrana. Skills, Glutton LV5 Poison Magic Sage of Fire LV8, Sage of Water LV6, Sage of Wood Magic LV10, Sage of Wind LV6, Mystic Thread Magic, Sage of Space Time LV9, Sage of Ice LV6, Body Strengthening LV9, Body Durability LV9, Sage of Divine Light, Gravity Magic LV9, Magic Resistance, Immunity. Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Lightning Magic LV7, Sage of Earth Magic LV4, Ultra Self Regeneration, Bioengineering, Titles, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, 211, 212, Chapter 5. I will never forget this monster side. Honestly speaking, the rest of my journey was not pleasant at all. Simply put, it was too boring and lacked the craze and excitement of living on the edge I had uphill now. The remaining monsters were nowhere strong enough like the super monsters I had faced. All my strong spells easily annihilated them in an instant whether they were a boss or were a mob in lax. During this time before I reached floor 11, I had achieved level 9, and almost another 3 months had passed, all thanks to my time wasting during hibernation. 213. At floor 29 I faced a turtle type monster that had a huge black pit tough shell and a mouth that could launch laser beams of both fire and ice attribute. Honestly speaking, all it was good at was defense, but just by first heating the shell with black flare, and then cooling it with absolute zero, it easily became brittle. All it took next was a simple ice spear and I beheaded the monster. I told you I was just killing and destroying stuff since. It's rather boring, so I will keep my talk short. At floor 28 to 27, I once again found myself in a dark, dumpy cave and above me were hanging approximately two lacozzle bat monsters. Their eyes glowed with deep red flashes in the dark empty bounded sky. Actually these bats never moved and always stick up to the ceiling of the cave. All they were good at was, sound magic LV8, and, wind magic LV5. They would launch special sonic boom sound that made me almost lose consciousness and huge boulders and some kind of black sphere magic attack would randomly fall. For those who didn't have magic sense would never be able to dodge those falling objects, but like a lightning blue light I dodged them all and with a single plasma lightning strike I cooked all the bats in one swoop. As usual, seeing the whole bat clan annihilated, the Emperor Ozzel Bat showed up. 214. It was as usual pitch black and a white stripe mark on its forehead. It was 20 foot tall and was floating in midair. Its huge giant wings, was working like a receiving plate, collecting all information from surrounding and then it would release invisible beams of powerful sound throws at me. But sensing magic is my kind of thing so it was pretty useless on his part. Though I would say, the wind barrier he tried to put up was rather effective. But with my kinetic eye I can control the wind freely according to my will and so I dispersed the wind around him. Roasted, Emperor Bat, Order Up, Monster Diary Emperor Ozzel Bat, Level, SSS Monster, Name, Barker Beat Age, 180 Years Race, Ozzel Bat Level, 5000 HP, 40,000 MP, 50,000 SP, 30,000 Skills, Sound Magic LV10, Immunity, Self Regeneration, Wind Magic LV7 215. At floor 26, I annihilated the Night Wolf clan. They were a species of red-colored wolf monster, as big as an ice cream truck. They were a pack of 50 wolves. Even with their huge body, they sprawled around in the wilderness without making a single noise. They started running around, moving to high grounds thinking to pounce over me and tear me down with their steel claws. This was their turf and they had the home advantage. If that's what you and my enemies are thinking, then fine with me. How about this new fighting technique? Absolute zero, dark gravity sphere. The whole floor was frozen like a mystical ice forest. The trees, the long wild grass, the thorny bushes, 
Everything was covered under thick ice. Then a strong gravity came crashing down and the whole room was filled with white shining ice powder. I made a strong gust of wind to fly by and the entire floor couldn't have been more clean and shining. He e e e e Wait, where are the wolves? I looked up at the small white sparkly dust flying around, so. There they are. Please, don't look at me. I forgot to pay attention. Sorry, sorry. They didn't even got the chance to fight, rather I couldn't get to action. Life in a dungeon is so tiring. My shoulder hurts but I cannot feel the pain because of ultra self-regeneration. 216. At floor 25, I found myself in a huge metal chamber. This whole area was occupied by a single monster, the Night Ferris Wolf King. He was twice the size of the Night Wolves and looked ferocious but in no way was dangerous enough as the heavenly beast guardian, Fenra. This bring bad memories, maybe this wolf will serve as a god punching bag to take out my frustration. It was unusually agile and quick, with its sharp claws it was able to even cleave the metal chamber, but I was having my own fun, practicing to move like a jungle beast, my legs surrounded with super hot blue plasma. I had given up on using magic for once and wanted to train in physical combat with my eight legs. I had a lot of fun with the lone wolf. I nicely sliced it up into fine pieces, while I was not even injured once. Monster Diary Night Ferris Wolf King, Level, SSS Monster, Name, Fairy Age, 185 Years Race, Night Wolf Level, 5400 HP, 50,000 MP, 40,000 SP. 35,000 skills, iron steel claws, immunity, self-regeneration, air jump, shadow movement, danger sense. 217. At floor 24, I was overjoyed when I took a glance at the monsters. Gorillas, the same gorillas I saw on my TV on planet Earth in my previous life. Even though I have to kill them, I was happy to identify something which I previously knew. Maybe one of the students got reincarnated as a gorilla, and no, I think that's not happening. They have got awesome luck on their side. I would have been the only one to be born as a lonesome monster. Hello, animals of planet Earth, greetings from another world -ra. I looked up smilingly, putting up my best behavior. It's not that I have a habit of talking to animals either in this life or my previous life. Even my talks to the human species were limited. Actually none at all. Maybe to some extent of yes and no. Surprisingly, white feathers were scattered in front of me and all the 200 gorillas had suddenly grown out a huge pair of white wings. I mean awesomely huge. They looked so silky, that I wanted to take those feathers and put them in my pillow cover. So, die, die, you all selfish beast, who snatched away my sense of familiarity. My happiness and the kindness I wanted to show you all wasted. Black Flare, next scenes were actually too violent to describe on the paper, so conclusively all of them were roasted alive. I promise you this, the gorillas of my previous world, if I find any irregularity in other gorillas here then I will exterminate their whole species. Reason? None at all, except that writing this chapter was so boring. 218. At floor 23. I met some interesting monsters, trogodite or so they were called. They were a single head snake like monsters. All of them possessed different abilities like teleportation, invisibility, fire breath, shadow jump, quick phase, rot, paralysis, petrification, shape shifter, hallucination, confusion, illusionist, acid thrower, lava creation, salt converter, pendulum, sleep apply, hypervelocity, wave shocker. Air boom, psychokinesis, hypervelocity, flash burst, glass magic, miss rampage, anti magic, blood disaster. Now, thanks to my gluttony skill, all of these powers will belong to me after I finish them. Maybe I have reached the point where I am strong enough to call myself that I am grinding in the dungeon, or maybe the monsters had become weak since I was going upwards away from the below floors where I could find monsters much stronger than me. After I reunite with Lady Athena outside let's come back here, and I will complete this dungeon. For the first time there was something I wanted to do in this world by myself, but what was that I really wanted?
Was I enjoying killing things somehow? Had I turned into a monster who likes to put his life in danger and challenge strong people to declare his own supremacy? Did I hate all these monsters because I disliked the way they lived? Was it the hunger of getting stronger and the satisfaction I got after defeating a strong opponent? What is my driving force in all of this? Or, maybe all the above. 219. Monster Diary Trogodites. Level. S. Monster. Name. Trogodite Sage. 170 years race. Trogodite Multinature Level. 4000 HP. 35000 MP. 40,000 SP, 35,000 skills, multi-ability abnormal status, immunity, self-regeneration, shadow movement, danger sense, 220. At floor 22, I defeated a three-headed reptile, a humongous snake. Honestly speaking he proved to be a little bit challenging because of its ultra self-regeneration and disintegrate ability. They would separate their heads in three different bodies entirely and you cannot completely kill it unless all three heads are destroyed together at the same time. They were more agile than any other monster and persistent at that too. They were adept in their concealment skill. Not that it would work on me since I can use advanced magic senses. Monster Diary Trogodite Tempress. Catastrophe Class Monster. Name. Repzeli IH. 200 Years Race. Trogodite Multinature Empress Level. 5000 HP. 55,000 MP, 50,000 SP, 45,000 skills, multi-ability abnormal status, immunity, shadow movement, ultra self-regeneration, danger sense disintegrate, 221, 222. Finally I had reached level 9. However I was up till now able to unlock only three forms of all-seeing eyes of the gods. Most of my skills are almost maxed out and I am almost close to my destination of reaching the surface. I was at floor 12 where I just now have defeated a horde of 100 orp bison monsters. They have the ability to transport and then hit you with their magically enhanced horns. They are super sturdy, hard to read can easily sense danger and their teleportation ability makes it difficult to hit or catch them, but all I did was use my super lightning plasma speed, sometimes I cut them down with my super sharp claws covered in plasma, or sometimes gives them my poison bite. Their meat was coarse but tasted a bit better than other monsters, if only I could get my hands on some good food ingredients, cooking utensils then I will be able to open my own small portable kitchen. I was overly excited and headed to floor 11. As soon as I had taken my rest and made all my preparation and cleaned up the place of all the available magic items and water I could carry. 223. Status window name, dash age, 6 months race, arachne level, 9 HP, 99 million MP, ERRSP, ERR unique skill, all seeing eyes of the gods first form, eye of investigation second form. Kinetic High Third Form, Eye of Adrana, Skills, Glutton ELV7 Poison Magic Sage of Fire LV10, Sage of Water LV10, Sage of Wood Magic LV10, Sage of Wind LV9, Mystic Thread Magic, Sound Magic LV7, Sage of Space Time LV9, Sage of Ice LV9, Immunity, Body Strengthening LV9, Body Durability LV9, Sage of Divine Light, Gravity Magic LV10, Magic Resistance, Sage of Dark Matter, Sage of Lightning Magic LV8, Sage of Earth Magic LV9, Ultra Self Regeneration, Bioengineering, Element Manipulation, Abnormal Status Infliction, Titles, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, 224, 225, Chapter 6. Can I be a human ever again? Celestial Year 237. It's time for the harvest in my hometown Olimar located in extreme southwest of Perilous Empire. I miss the green leafy sweet vegetables I used to grow on the farm with my father. Also a week later the whole family would plan together a picnic to the Kamla Cherry Forest, and under the shy pink Kamla trees we would play all day picking the sweet plum Kamla Cherry that had fallen from the trees because of the wind or otherwise would climb ourselves to pluck up the cherries, 
Sometimes we would chase around the gathered mystic sparrow squirrel or feed them instead. This year I promised to join my wife and seven-year-old daughter Mia and play 226 with her during this whole harvest festival. But maybe I am not a good further after all. A soldier has always to answer his calls. Family relationships comes after the country that's what we were taught at the military training academy. Even though it was supposed to be my vacation from the military. But because of this sudden planned expedition to the demon continent to subjugate the growing beast villages in the Canandra Mountains, my holidays were annulled. Under the leadership of Her Highness, the second princess Siesta Perilous, an army of 10,000 soldiers were dispatched. Our objective first was to scout the Canandra Mountains from far and evaluate the state of the monsters breeding near the borders. Planning to go deeper in the mountain forest is pure foolishness because the monsters are so strong that even an army this large won't be able to handle them if they attack in groups. When all the twenty generals met up for the first time the agenda changed to subjugating the beastmen villages and take the prisoners back to the kingdom to be sold as slaves or for free labor in mines and other manual job with excessive demand of unskilled free laborers. Everyone was confident enough, in the strength of this army, a team of great tacticians, and then we had on board five silver imperial knights and the vice chairman of the imperial mage court, not to forget a huge army of 10,000 specially trained soldiers in magic warfare and swordsmanship. One could say we were going all out to catch a cat and turn it into a punching pet. 227. On our spiritual radar after crossing the pass that connected the western border of Perilous Kingdom and the Demon Continent, we circled around the Canandra Mountains from left and would make contact with five beastmen villages after covering a distance of 25 kilometers. We put up our tents on a height 20 meters above the ground and covered the entire perimeter with wooden fences by chopping down the nearby forest. We raised 12 high posts to surround the entire area and keep an eye on the intruders. We were supposed to subjugate the five villages in a span of one week. For the first five days we had easily made surrender the four beastmen villages. Next day we were supposed to subjugate the last village. Everyone was in a happy mood and over energetic because we were one day ahead of our schedule. The princess was flawless with her plans and tactics, always lifting up the spirit of the soldiers and making sure that they are well fed, even though I though at the end it was just extravagance. But a princess is a princess, that too of a lineage who conquered several lands and victories over the demons almost 200 years ago in the Great War. If an army of 10,000 soldiers have to be dispatched to keep her safe, then so be it. But I couldn't put my mind at ease. I was the general of the 8th company, consisting of 200 soldiers, who specialized in scouting and collecting tactical data of pre-, during- and post-war events. I was one of those who believed in fighting from the background by forming strategies that would ensure the maximum possibility of our soldiers to survive and complete annihilation of our enemies and gain honor. If only I could call it honor. It was not a war of wills against the so-called beast savages but a genocide of the weak and peaceful living. 228. The Ast Folk All the beastmen villages were just simple townsfolk, not a single fighter who wanted to fight for fun but to protect their families. Their villages consisted of population ranging from 2,000 beastmen up to 4,000 in the one we raided the previous day. All of these villages either had too many old people or too ung children who couldn't even lift a weapon. This had put the soldiers' mind at ease. They killed anyone who tried to resist whether armed or not, whether it was just a child or a female. They spared no one, all of them wanted the praises of the princess, who too wanted the praises of the majesty and the masses of the perilous empire. But was this the only one way, to get glory, to be called a full-fledged warrior on the battlefield? These barbaric soldiers beat down children, tortured the young beast folk, hung them on trees and played with their women. Was this the pledge they took during the oath ceremony to protect this kingdom? Was this the true portrait of humanity? And all I could do was just stand by and watch it happen. I had lost my voice. Who would listen to a commoner, even though I am a general but that is because of my important role and my talent in forming good strategies and tactical war play. Whenever I tried to stop them, the upper society noble people would always cut in between. How would a commoner like you would know to treat objects? 229. They are just a bunch of pests. 
It doesn't even matter whether we kick them in their nether or punch them in their faces, slice them to chips and feed to the monsters. No one would complain. We are the race of humanity, and I noble is a superior even among them. Then how could I allow those filthy beasts to breathe the same air and walk on the same land? Even their sight disgust me so I chopped each one's head and freed them of their misery to be born as a lowly creature. You should know your place before you speak. You are a general in just a name only. Just look at you small weak platoon. All we need is your pathetic skills and then you can go and till the farmlands for all I care. I once visited one of the beast villages after it had been subjugated, almost all the small built brick houses were on fire, black pitch ashened walls, broken gates, torn down buildings, streams of blood flowed all around, splashed like ink blots across the streets and walls, dead bodies and distorted body parts littered around, corpses hanging on trees, heads put over the fences. There was no ground which didn't have the stench of blood and no place where the ashes of the dead did not rise. Suffering dash that's the only word that can describe my pain. Not only those who were there during the destruction, but for even those who were there after the devastation. I wonder what kind of savagery would have caused this. And all our army suffered with small injuries and just a small number of casualties. I was glad, but something inside me had broken, as if a piece of mine was burning brightly but I felt so cold under the presence of my own shadow. Most of the soldiers had fun, 230, while looting the goods of the beast folk, their money, priced possessions, food and women. None was spared, reporting a seer. We found a hidden basement in one of the houses. It is possible that some of them not accounted for could be hiding. Without wasting a moment's time I rounded up ten men, and marched towards the hidden basement. It was a half-torn down house probably done by an explosion magic. I entered through the gateway with a missing door. The whole house was almost reduced to emptiness, but the walls looked newly built. There was a small portrait hung on the wall, a little bit tilted maybe due to the impact of the explosion. I took out the picture and wiped the blood that covered its upper area. It was a portrait of a young man, a beautiful beast woman and two small kids, one with a white fox ears and a long tail while the other kid had light brown in color, I was dumbstruck, the girl with the white fox tail, she resembled every bit of Mia, my own daughter, I was speechless and confirmed that the dead body lying at the backyard of the house was indeed the man in this portrait, then the women and the children remain unaccounted for, could it be, the men who were on guard above the basement saluted me as I arrived on the aforementioned suspicious spot, 231, as per the information, I rolled over the red carpet, which had some drawing made over it and a small wooden door that opened vertically came into view. I pulled the handle and a ladder was visible going down into the darkness. Some soldiers expressed their concern, others suspected a trap. But I jumped without a moment's hesitation inside and two of my trusted men followed. It was dark all around and so I chanted a spell. A small flame lit in my palm, speaking the truth. My magic aptitude was far below the average. What made me special to become a commander was my appraisal skill LV10 dash maxed out and my two another special skill dash thought acceleration and foresight. Fortunately, these are considered to be very rare skills. H H H H H H H H H H H dot H H H H H was someone crying. It more sounded like someone was trying to suppress their voice by any means possible. I faced my palm to the left wall and under the fallen table I could see two figures. I without any hesitation started approaching them. Sir, wait we need to take precautions. We don't know whether they are hostile or not. Okay, then be prepared. I will lift off the table, take positions. Actually this conversion was going telepathically so you need not concern with leaking information and plans. I lifted up the table with my left hand, and forced my meager amount of magical power into the little flame I lit. 232. Under the cover of darkness, I could now probably make out two shadows and a bit of their details. A beautiful tall fox woman and an eight-year-old girl with white fox ears and a fluffy long tail. The girl was on the verge of crying, while the mother was holding her mouth tightly but she herself was shaking heavily. Definitely, these two are the remaining figures in the portrait. For some reason, I was sure what I had to speak next.
but my voice somehow couldn't reach them. Unfortunately, none of us knew Beastman language, so communication was a big issue. One of the main flaws I considered it to be during the entire mission. Usually the Beastman you find on a human continent can speak human languages, but it seems to be not the case in the demon continent. I reached out my hand, and smiled a bit at the little girl. She is just a look-alike of Mia. I can't let my emotions get in my way, and I need to make a rational decision. Because there are eyes all around me. C-R-R-R-R. Be careful. Don't worry, they do not appear to be hostile. Lower your swords, but sir, don't make me repeat myself. Even though I tried to keep my voice low, to not make the girls any more afraid than they have been, but the echo in the room ruined it. I thought if I made them lower the weapons the soldiers were holding then they both might ease up a bit. 233. The woman slowly rose up from her sitting position and raised up both of her hands and so did the little girl. Their new resistance was futile. They knew they will be sold off as slaves and separated from each other or even worse tortured to death. But even if there is a flicker of hope that they can survive, then they were ready to suffer hell. Because throwing one owns life away out of despair and give up is cowardice. If they are alive, then there is every bit of a possibility to meet again. The possibility to explore this world and maybe find happiness. Thoughts came pouring in my mind. All I wanted was to see a smile on that little girl's face. Is there any way of saving them? Can I abuse my power as a commander to a small extent and let these two go? What if I make them run away towards the next target village? Then they can warn the other beastmen and abandon the location. This will save all those people whose life would be miserably destroyed for no reason at all. This war was meaningless. We were only adding fuel to the fire between the conflicts of two races, just because the villagers here are not accustomed to fighting. It doesn't display the strength of their races. Beastmen are strong warriors, possesses special body reinforcement magic, ultimate combat abilities and natural reflexes thousand times better than us humans. If they really wanted then they could give us a run for but maybe their weaknesses was already accounted for and so the princess decided to attack determining her own safety. Now I see. 234. Do I smell some fresh prey? Mr. Commoner. A loud, husky voice rang inside my ear. A huge tall figure walked in, his large steps making absurdly unnecessary loud noises. Commander, Rit, may I know the reason, to visit during the inspection time of Company 8th? This man was the commander of the 3rd platoon, the one who raided this village and turned it into a place of shamble and ruin. I need to exercise caution with my words and yet act dignified because of his noble status and our same ranks. How tiring now could this be? Nothing much. I just told you I can smell something ecstatic, won't you fill me in, my dear comrade? For some reason his chin was lifted up and his brows pushed against each other. Somehow, all this makes me nervous, the more I think the lesser I understand the meaning of all the thing we were doing. We have confirmed two remaining civilians, hiding in the basement. Don't make me laugh. They are not civilians, but bugs to be played with. The man then clapped his hands, and with each clap a huge fire explosion appeared. Whereas dot dot war, the child who was quite up till now, Finally made some noise but exactly at the wrong moment, but before she could continue, her mouth was shut up closed by her mother's palm. 235 See? These savage creatures, can't understand the beauty of my magic prowess. So let me take care of them and then they will surely admire my might. For I am Rit Coyle, the next in line to be declared as the family head of the Coyle family after this achievement of mine. Just how hard had I worked and had been waiting for this day to come. I hesitated for a moment but silently slided in front of that little girl and him, blocking his eyesight. Just, what in the hell are you trying to do? Let me have these two under my care. My men will surely love the big one. As for the little one, I will play with her with my magic. I needed to do something. A way to get us out of this mess. I was now under my thought acceleration skill. Currently? This commander wants to harm these two, who just are simple civilians. Then the kid has the same face as Mia, which reminded me of the last promise I made to her. Those two have kept on being silent, then that means they will gladly follow me. I don't have the authority to defy this man's will, but surely I can delay it by a bit, 
and later figure something out. But for now, I am sorry, but I have to refuse, you see. I was interrupted when I could feel a sudden pressure of the magical power being forced upon me. I tried to look up, but my gazes always went down. What's the matter commander? Are you somehow falling ill? How can you refuse this ambitious man's wishes? The one who will command you someday. You must feel honored that you can be a help to me. So, I need to come up with an answer. Quick, for Mia's sake, for the sake of those two who shouldn't have been a part of this gore. 236 Because someone whimsically wanted them dead. There is a reason I am here. And for that matter I won't waver. Even though I am a commoner and it has made me realize again and again that I can't stand up against the noble. You. See these two are supposedly confirmed to be from the next target village, so it will be helpful if we can collect some specific information of them about their security and people living. In a way what I said was true, even though we can't understand beastmen languages, we can torture them and make them point out their village locations, hideouts, number of people and other important stuff important for military intelligence. I was now looking straight into the eyes of Commander Ritt, even though my whole body was hurting and screaming in pain. Going against such strong magical pressure, defying the nobility, dishonoring the military code and helping the prisoners of wars, I stood against all such heavy burden on my shoulders, all to bring a little smile on Mia's face. The Commander stared back into my eyes for half a minute and then suddenly changed his way of speaking. He sounded as a totally different person. This sly bastard, I see. In that case I cannot wait to see how long you can keep this up. Rit soon left, but when he passed through my back, I realized that I needed to watch my own back now all the time. The uneasiness feeling in the room soon lifted up. 237. I took a deep breath. My shoulders and stomach still in a bit of pain and my head still feels heavy. As if I was about to collapse out of dizziness and neural malfunction. I slowly walked to the kid and placed my hand in front, but it was painful to see her turn around her head, but I did not mind, such response is most befitting of our actions. Hate, hate, is that what this girl is feeling towards me or is it fear? I don't know. I beckoned the beast woman to follow me and she took the hint. She appears to be highly intelligent and seems to have understood the events that unfolded in a way. Now I need to make some special arrangements since I am taking care of them now and make sure that no one suspects us. Both of them were taken to my tent. It was not as large as that of other commanders but still big enough to fit these two. I brought some warm towels, a bunch of dresses which I took from one of the houses, seeing they were intact. I made sure to order a glass of warm milk for the kid and a bowl of soup for the lady. Now I made them stay in the right corner of my tent which was in a bit of a blind spot because of the cupboard and putting up a curtain of same color as the tent made it almost unnoticeable. I passed each of the other mentioned items including bed sheets and pillows, but was never able to directly look them into their eyes. I felt so helpless and somehow I kept on blaming everything on me, and wondered had things gone differently? What if she did not look? 238 Like my own daughter? I wonder what Mia is doing back at home. Just two more days and I will be back at home. I clenched the small glass necklace which my daughter gave me before I left home. It was the first thing that she ever gave me as a gift. My lucky charm. Tomorrow we had to travel to the next beast village and attack. Preparations were already done. All that I wanted was to keep this violence and gore limited to those who resisted and for the soldiers to exercise caution because they had started taking things for granted. Carelessness is the second reason for the young's demise while the first is prejudice, excessive pride. I had cleaned myself up, and started thinking of new battle strategies while lying on the bed. It was already midnight and the most of the noises coming from the drunkard and the merry-making soldiers from outside had quieted down. Now that I remember there was another girl in the portrait, maybe her elder sister, her body was not found, so was she successfully able to escape? If that's true then I hope that she remains safe. 239. The Great Tathire Labyrinth Floor. 10. On that night when it had not even been an hour before my eyelids put up a curtain on my vision, I started hearing loud cries from the northern part of the camp. I quickly got changed and put up as much metal pieces on me as I could. When a soldier of my company came rushing in, 
without making any announcement. That came as a surprise. That means the news is just that important that the formalities could wait. I don't mind, or even bother with those stupid formalities. I only find them in my way of work. Just some stupid extra efforts. But that was the code. Commander, it's the Beastmen. They are attacking in large numbers from the northern forest. All our troops deployed in the northern station have been overwhelmed. I always had this fear within me, to face a surprise attack from north. Even though the full camp was in an advantageous location, the northern perimeter being surrounded by dense tropical forests always welcomed suspicions. Send a platoon of 15 men to the north to gather intel and do not engage. I repeat do not engage the enemy. I am leaving for the conference. Yes sir, sir. The soldier then saluted me and left, as I was at the entrance of the princess's tent. A thorough checking of everyone by the outside special guards was necessary. These soldiers were special and exclusive to Princess Siesta. Commander. The report. 240. I looked back and my trusted men that were standing right in front of me. I needed to make haste. That was pretty quick. We have confirmed that a large number of beastmen around 2,000 in number that have attacked the northern check post. They first spread a special paralysis gas in the air and then launched arrows, huge boulders. It seems that they have got this time good fighters and good magicians on their side too. Most of the tents were burned down or either blown up. The situation of the soldiers in the north is not that active. Most of them were slacking off from their post which brought this doomsday. Those stupid nobles just can't perform their duty properly. Most of my soldiers were commoners like me too. They looked up to me for being the only commoner with the commander post. Their hate for noble had been pretty much obvious from their training days, always being bullied by the upper class soldiers for being inferior and replaceable tools. I more or less understood the situation now. All I need to do, is to make a report over the princess and let her decide to fight back or retreat. So just in case, start packing up, take all the non-perishable food, clothes and tents with you, and the two captured host GG, victims in my tent to be transferred to one of the nearest cut prisons. You are dismissed for now. In case of emergency or something comes up then do not hesitate to report. I walked in through the entrance by lifting up the smooth pink silky curtains, they were made up of such high quality cloth that not even my three months salary could afford. So I was a bit too excited to see my hands being slowly grazed along by the curtain. 241. Back to business. Long live the princess. Commander of 8th Company, Special Intelligence Unit and Scouting Division reporting with the situation. I looked around and saw the commander of 5,6,8,11,17th Company already present. The commander of Company 1, 2 and 7 were reported to be engaged in battle with the beastmen in the north. We had several casualties, but with the poison gas all around and in the cover of night under the dense forest, it was difficult to make the intruders retaliate. The princess was quite in a daze. Her face a bit flustered in red she was under the effects of alcohol. I wonder who did this to her. It just means that making a rational decision would be tough and potential mistakes are inevitable. Some of the commanders were still late and the princess and others present were getting impatient. That's when, the commander of 3rd Company, Rit waltzed in, with a sword covered in blood. Behave yourself Commander Rit, you are in the presence of Her Highness. Objected the commander of the 5th Company. This is the Blue D of the Demon Beastman, whom I took capture in the previous fight. And now they dare to attack us. So I killed some of their comrades whom I took capture and asked my soldiers to hang their heads near the so east post. Just what are you implying? We don't have time for your foolish violent indulgences. Princess if I may. 242. Fine. Do what? Ever. It was obvious that we had lost the princess in this situation. I wonder why she indulged herself with such a frivolous activity, because I had never seen it happening before. It was just too irresponsible on her part when we were in the last stage of our plans. Be why doing this and sending some of these living pests near the east post. I have placed a trap explosion magic, while they try to disperse towards east and rescue their people, they will all die. In the chaos, we will make retreat. I have already made preparations for your highness's safety. I understand, but where we will go to? The princess was acting all weird, 
You will go with this stupid plan which will eventually fail and is no scope to the great Tathaya Labyrinth. This is madness. Ludicrous. We don't want to die. I instead of taking the princess to safety, it seems like you are pushing her directly into the mouth of death. All the commanders started expressing their concerns and their deep-seated fear which the name is more than capable enough to strike fear in our hearts. I was no exception. Fear not, I will take full responsibility for the princess's safety. We will retreat to the first floor of the great Tathaya labyrinth. Seeing us going there the beastmen will give up and will leave us alone. After a day or two we will come out of our hiding. I see why our plan does make sense. If it's only the first floor then such huge army will be sure strong enough to kill the first floor. 243 Monsters. Then we can surely take our revenge if we come out after some days have passed. Any objections? It's now or never. I see ain't let such foolishness pass by, a judgment not made with the right mind will put each of my men in great danger, it's too early to make such a rash decision, if we think for a bit longer then we can surely tackle them if we regroup all of our soldiers in the west and move them in circle. I tried to point in the map for the most plausible route for an attack force and reinforcement in the north, but Commander Ritt, snatched the huge map rolled it around and threw it on one of the drawers at his back. Don't worry about the small stuff, we don't have time to regroup or we will suffer more casualties. We have already lost more than 500 men, this time the resistance of beastmen is large and we may not be able to defend so properly in the dark. My men are not your pawns, if all you are good at sitting ducks here and pass judgment on those who lay down their lives on the front line. Then Commander Rit bowed down in front of Princess Siestu and in a noble's way sheathed his sword but in a weird twisted fashion. Princess, remember didn't you tell me on the day of our leaving the royal castle, that you wanted to prove yourself useful to the Empire and to your father, His Majesty. We have already captured enough beastmen that can work as slaves, to fulfill the growing demand of free labor layman's job. But if the princess is not safe herself, then the people of our empire will be worried. It is then my duty as your knight to use my sword to keep the enemies at bay. If we move to the first floor of the great Tathaya labyrinth, not only we would be safe but we can then mine all the rare ores, especially the Magitai tool. By doing this you will raise, 244, the treasure of the royal family by leaps and bounds. Not only his majesty will be happy but the extra money earned will be used for the benefit of people and they will give you their full support and love. By this accomplishment you will get one step ahead of others in achieving the goal of the next ruler of the empire. Yes you are indeed correct, make preparations to retreat now. I will not allow more of my soldiers to die. Suddenly, the atmosphere of the room changed. The princess started smiling and some of the commanders started agreeing to the proposal. It was too late to back off now. All of them, I could see shadows of greedy people. It was so colorless and empty. Everyone now was thinking of filling their own pockets. Just what was happening? How did it turn like this? Was I a failure as a commander? Or I was unable to judge the people around me and the princess properly? The fear of the labyrinth was overshadowed by the veracity of obtaining the highly rare and expensive mythical magic title. After the discussion, if you could actually call it one, I quickly moved to my tent and made sure the two beast people I took were safe. Then packed my most important stuff and moved to the rendezvous point. All of us made haste, while the caravan carrying the princess was in front with her imperial knights, in between the prisoners. At the sides the commanders on horses and at the rear were the foot soldiers. Even during the retreat we were being chased and almost 300 more lives were lost. After traveling for 4 km in this difficult terrain, we were finally near the entrance of the labyrinth. 245, the Great Tathar Labyrinth, the most dangerous place on Idlegard, home to the most dangerous species of monsters that once roamed on land were driven out during the Great War and went into hiding. Most of them at least on the upper floors are at least S-class monster while a catastrophe class monster have been confirmed on floor 9 and sighting of a world disaster monster is considered to be a myth. If such monsters exist and are left free to trespass above, then this world will be surely destroyed. The last time a world disaster monster appeared on land, two years ago, an entire country was wiped out. 
several adventurers, armies and the best warriors were lost. It was thanks to those sacrifices and relentless attacks that we were able to kill such a dangerous monster. Even the word dangerous sounds too feeble to describe the threat it poses. Before that the only human who could fight against such world disaster monster was the hero, the sword princess, but she too died during the great war while defeating the true demon lord. At present the whole labyrinth has been explored till floor 10 and beyond that whoever went was never heard of. It sounds too much of a cliché. But that was a sweet truth without any toppings. Even the mad adventurers and strongest warriors never claimed to or make promises of ever exploring this labyrinth. Such was its glory and fame in the outside world. Just 200 meters ahead of us was a huge cave-like opening surrounded by rocks. It was a 100 feet tall entrance and 80 feet wide. The whole running parade, without any difficulty, ran through the entrance into the dark mysterious cave and stopped just when their appraisal told them that they were in the first floor. Were we saved? Did the plan work or is there something still left? My foresight just kept on giving me the red signal. But nothing of worth. 246. Just when we thought we could rest for a while, a huge explosion was heard above us and after an enormous crackle. The ground started to shake violently and the above rocks came crashing in. The huge boulders fell from above and had blocked the only entrance and our nearest exit. I think that was what marked the end of our lives. Commander, you have been called for the meeting. Reported a solider from outside the tent. Usually, I was left out of the meetings since we had entered the labyrinth. All of my soldiers were either sent for scouting or mining the Magitators. I closed down my diary in which I had been recording the events which happened after we made retreat from our stronghold. I pushed back my chair lazily, since I had lost my motivation to do anything. All that I had left was to look after the soldiers under my wing, the two people I had taken in my care and to think whether I will be able to return to my family or not, my hometown, the farm and the Kumla Cherry Forest. Such sweet memories I have of them. Will I ever get a chance to make new ones? I went to the corner of my tent which was covered by a hanging bed sheet of the same color. Through the sides I made a small peek and looked at the two sleeping figures. They may appear peaceful but from inside they were filled with sadness and remorse of losing their family and home. They had lost their future, their freedom, their happiness, and just about anything. 247. Sometimes I would find the little girl playing around with the small wooden cubes I gave her or crying in her mother's lap. Usually they both would chatter in lower muffled voices but I couldn't understand their language. Whenever I would approach them, the girl would always hide behind her mother, but at least it was better than before. Sometimes in my absence she would smile at her mother, maybe she knew that her mother needed a reason to live too. The fear directed towards me had now changed into hesitation of meeting a stranger. Even though I had been good to them and provided them with necessary supplies, but we were the ones who destroyed their peaceful lives in the first place. They had the every right to hate me, the one who orchestrated and the one who played. On certain occasion when the child is alone sleeping, I would find her mother weeping without making a single sound or whisper. That was her resolve, to not let anyone know about her fears and depressed state, her losses, but to stay strong for her child. To remain calm and find a way to survive, for this harsh world, where such cruelty exists, can there be a time where people can live with peace? Even though it means we have to live under the fear of someone strong, someone who can judge everyone. Not only humans but all living species equally. Someone who can make friends with anyone. Someone who can with a single glance take down the enemies who threaten the peace of this world. Even though it means that we have to give our certain rights, I would wholeheartedly welcome a ruler who can put an end to all these conflicts, discrimination, inequalities and crush down every opposition with strong force if need arises to. All I want is to live each day without fear a happy peaceful life, to guarantee our safety, and help us in our needs unconditionally. There. 248. Dread of a bandit attack, terror of a monster invasion, horrors of an enemy nation attacking or the pain of being betrayed by your own. To be free from all. I walked past several prison carriages and tents. The soldiers were dried out like raisins left out for too long in salt water. Simply put they were overworked and completely depressed. We would soon run out of supplies, 
food and water. Eating monsters is not an option as they can be poisonous. The soldiers who were unable to fight or were not good enough against monsters were either sent to the first floor to clear the blocked exit or were put up for mining the magetite ores growing out of the walls and ceiling. These rocks were so tough that it took a lot of effort even with the best tools we had. But even a small amount of these could help you to lead a rich happy and fulfilled life. The people at the top wanted these rocks for themselves to garnish as much money as they could. But for me these were just chunks of normal rock, for they can neither help you satisfy your hunger, neither can you wear them, nor build houses with them. Because in times like these, for survival we don't need the metal coins. In this trapped hellish place they are pretty much useless. We don't even have the required skills to make strong weapons out of these rocks. The princess just couldn't stay at the first floor and took the bait of the third commander who made her talk to his tune to move in below floors and mine more doors, while the other soldiers clear the exit. No matter how many soldiers we lose here, but if we make back to the empire with as much resources as we could then it's a win for them. At present we were on the tenth floor and had just the previous day defeated two hundred blood rogogas. Many soldiers were lost in that battle. It was thanks to the diversions on the battleground that the soldiers could keep on attacking. 249 By now we had lost almost 1,200 soldiers, but this number could have been twice, no thrice or maybe we would not even have been able to make up till floor 10 unless we had sacrificed those beastmen captured. You are right in thinking that those beastmen were used as decoys, they were mercilessly thrown in front of the monster to become their prey while the soldiers took their sweet time to kill those monsters. The number of slaves captured in thousands had now reduced to hundred. It is probable that with the dwindling supplies, all of them would be killed in the next floor. I was now standing outside the princess's tent, being thoroughly checked by guards and after getting clearance entered the huge area with a table put in between surrounded by chairs more than required. Almost all of the commanders were present except for that of four, five and eight who lost their lives on the above floors. After paying my respect to the princess I took my seat. Princess Siesta, one of the most beautiful princesses in the entire world, now looked horribly dull to me. She had black spots under her eyes and her royal clothes smells that of booze. Even now I think she is under the effects of alcohol. She had lost it. While she knew that she could overwhelm the beastmen villages she was cheerful and motivated, giving orders to kill and slaughter without thinking for a second. She herself never visited the war-torn region, and if she had then maybe by any chance she would have realized the mistake she was making and would have pulled back. But now we were doomed. I wonder whose fault it is. Maybe it was all of us who were at fault. They just don't go and call it collective responsibility for no reason at all. In the face of odds and real danger, she had abandoned her duties and had strayed away from her path. One could say she was heading to their 250 path of ruin and destruction. In the royal palace such a situation would have been harshly treated and would have declared the princess as a failure, trash leading to disownment. The conversation began with a heated argument of what to do with the remaining beastmen. Some suggested finishing them off in the next floor. A team of 20 soldiers had been dispatched to floor 11 for reconnaissance, but they haven't returned. Most probably they were found out by the monsters and killed. Another unit was being made ready to gain information on the new kind of monsters we had to face. Most of them had given up hope. We had successfully mined all the ores, but no results were being produced by the people who were clearing off the rubble in front of the entrance. The rocks were just too big and sturdy. Especially they had a special anti-magic effect on them, so they couldn't even be fixed by magic. Outside contact was impossible. All the transmission magic had failed reception. It was probably because we are in a different pocket dimension in each of the floors. After all such huge spaces can't be built inside the dungeons. This labyrinth was the symbol of both the glory and the gore of the Great War, where our ancestors fought against the evil with the gods. To gain the riches you had to put your life on the line. At some point we would run out of food and water. Death was certain. We didn't know how many floors we had to go down, or at which floor a monster would wipe out all of us. Death seemed inevitable, and all of us had realized that. 251 In that heated moment of our discussion, a solider of the princess's guard came in running. T the beast Manea, 
revolting. They had broken free from their cages and are attacking us, reporting 25 casualties. For now we have apprehended the aggressors. Commander writ at this news rose up from his seat and banged on the table. How dare those filthy animals tried to backstab us. First we got caught up here because of their kin race, but we showed them kindness by giving them food even though we could have left them to rot here. This is how they pay us. The princess too made a disgusted face and started biting her fingernail tips. Those bald monkeys, those demons who pretend to be humans, filthy, such filthiness. I can't stand it. So this is how they show their kindness to us, to the royal princess. Insolent fools. Princess, I say we should execute them all, to show them the price they have to pay to go against the royal princess. Commander Ritt, with his blood pressure shot as high as it could, and his reddened eyes, probably because of over-drinking and drug doses, shouted out his proclamation as loud as he could. And so did the other commanders followed in his footsteps. Yeah, it is entirely their fault that we are in this predicament. I say we just get over with them, filthy beast animals. Sharing our provisions with them had been a waste from the start. I support this proposal. So we should execute all of them in front of the soldiers after one hour from now. 252. The princess finally rose up from her seat and brandished a hand in front in her dismal yet excited tone said slay all those pests. I don't want to see a single one of them alive, it is all their fault that I am stuck down here. So I will make them suffer just as much they had made me suffer. Soldiers round them up, you heard the princess. It is time for the filth to pay with their cursed blood. All the soldiers who heard this cry got fired up. I had no way to object the proposal which was deemed passed by all the sitting members and the ways the people are reacting. Was I the only sane person left? What has happened to these soldiers, who pledged to lay down their life to protect the honor of our country, were now behaving like mindless barbarians? This madness, there was no escaping it. I needed to return to my tent, because, a huge hand crept on my shoulders and my legs froze. If I am not forgetting then you commander have two of these cursed creatures in your care now. My people will escort you to get them in their right place. So hurry up. You don't plan on defying the orders of the princess are you? I could then feel several gazes piercing through me, obviously for no good reason at all, as if land had cracked below my feet and my blood froze. The only thing that kept me sane here was going to be killed in mere moments. So I think I too became impatient and lost my cool. After all, it was not something I could just go forward and accept, not as a commander but a human being who wanted to trust what he had seen with his eyes up till now, that amidst these savages there would be still a glitter of hope. 253. But, those two weren't even part of that revolt just now. They never would hurt anyone. How could you just kill a small child? But surely, when they grow up the hate for us will grow and then they will come after our lives for revenge. We can't let that happen. But even you are not sure of that. Punishing someone of a crime that never happened. That is not justice. There is no fair play during the war. Now get yourself moving, or are you trying to side with the enemy? If so then be my guest. All of your property will be confiscated by the Empire. Your family back there will be exiled and labeled as traitors too. You don't want that happening do you? My eyes were now dead, for what I had heard was enough to make my soul break. Maybe I was too weak to become a soldier after all. The glory, the fame and the bravery of the battlefield was too bright a dream for a kid like me back then. But it's all hollow and dark now. Maybe I should have stick to farming and making medicine at home. With that I could have at least lived a longer and maybe somewhat of a peaceful life with my family. Without knowing the dark secrets of this world, I was now somehow standing in front of my tent. I involuntarily walked inside and pushed the curtain where two life forms were sitting and playing with each other, merrily clapping hands according to their own tune. The small girl lifted her head up and smiled at me for the first time. Her bright A's, which had seen atrocities which no kid should have seen, were still innocent. What is this? Why now of all times? Because of the consequences of my decisions you are all going to die. 254. 255. I banged my hands as loudly as I could on the wooden shelf to wake myself up. 
but by now the soldiers outside the tent thrust in forward without my consent, this was a sign of pure defiance of a superior, but I knew it was the order of someone else, someone whose voice and action at present drifted everyone's dark hearts, but if their hearts are dark, then I wonder what color would mine be, because I just stood there watching silently, I neither had the power to stop those ruffian soldiers nor the strength to knock them down, just a bystander, who couldn't make up his own mind, then maybe I had no heart at all, my soul was long missing, just like a brittle glass piece, it had already been shattered to pieces, the beast woman and beast child kept staring at me, crying and shouting for help, that's what it actually sounded like, seeing how rough the soldiers were trying to be with them, their hands were tied tightly with the rough rope and slowly carried to the open area where other beastmen were being tortured. Their hands tied too and loud deafening screams could be heard. Beaten with all kinds of weapons like mace, hammer, piercer, there were all kinds fingers cut, tails smashed, or near missing. Who could have done these kind of terrible things to them? And the answer was everywhere around me. The woman and the child too were thrown like non-living objects where all the beast people were together. Slaughter them all, pierce those cursed monkeys and cleanse this land of the filth. The princess vociferously made her proclamation. In a second several soldiers drew out their swords, some placed their spears in front and at the signal of Commander Ritt, thrusted their pointed tips without any mercy into those living beings whose hands, 256, were tired half dead and weak to the point that they couldn't even stand up to fight back or run, the child who was crying up until now, started howling, somehow by grace she was still alive, but how, I lifted up my eyes, which were too scared to see such violence, but the sound was just too striking that it pulled me in, a woo oo oo howling screams, and dried tears ran through the little beast girl faces, she was just around seven years old and was face to face with such evils of the society. Her mother was impaled with two long spears in her abdomen and a sword half ran through near her chest, but she had a small smile on her face and before she ran out of her life she muttered something in her daughter's long white ears. The cries kept on getting deeper and deeper as if resonating with the feelings in my mind and the broken pieces of the soul were slowly brought back together. I clenched the glass piece that was hanging in front of my neck and quietly whispered to it, Sorry, Mia but it seems that your father will not be able to keep his promise and will die as a traitor for all and a forsaken hero for myself. At least let me be that. I refused to let my fear control me anymore. I started running towards the center where that girl was crying. I was planning to pick her up and run towards the next floor, without any else thought in my mind. While all the soldiers will be too afraid and give up on the chase, as for the monsters I will think afterwards. I saw several soldiers running past me with their sword and crying in unison. There were cries for blood, kill, kill, kill slay them all, 257, I won't be able to make it, even this chance is gone, the picture of girl being killed in front of me was making me go beyond insane, just the thought of it was making me cry, not for the little girl, neither for me but the thought that I was part of this whole fiasco, which people like to call chivalry, I had failed as a human being, a soldier and as a living rational and emotional being too, someone, anyone please help that girl that was all I could think about, but I couldn't see a single glance with the glint of kindness I was hoping for but faces without an eye, ear, a nose but curved lines facing upwards, my eyes had closed and I had given up on running, and so did the voices, which were now giving the vibe of astonishment and confusion, my gazes met with a white being, which had eight red beaded eyes, gazing almost through us, as if appraising our worth, I looked at other soldiers and they were trapped in some kind of strong and sticky white thread, I made sure to take a proper look at the newfound scenery and was flabbergasted to the extent that it made me happy and scream out in joy, a giant spider, almost as huge as a normal sized trunk in which I used to keep my night suit, was standing in front of the beast girl as if trying to protect her from the soldiers. The soldiers too were still confused and trapped in the webs. Its color was so white that it reminded me of the cold winter snow that once destroyed our crops, but actually I enjoyed playing with it. It had its own bitter and sweet side. Any attempt the soldiers made, 
They were found trapped in the webs which were now spread all across us forming a small impenetrable wall. 258. The more the soldiers tried to resist, the more they got entangled with the threads, while some tried to strike it down with their swords, while others used fire magic but none of them seemed to work. Commander Ritt was shouting at his full voice, frustrated at the sudden strange turn of events. Get rid of that weak little spider, protect the princess and kill the cursed evil beast girl who has collaborated with the monsters. Now the Silver Imperial Knights had appeared who were the strongest in the whole army and had levels above 4,500. A single Imperial Knight was capable of defeating 200 soldiers all on his own without putting much effort. They excelled in magic, swordsmanship and practiced oral arts. Somehow they were able to dodge the webs, or maybe use objects and other soldiers to keep themselves from being caught, but still they were unable to close in near the spider. The beast girl was still crying while hugging her mother who was now drenched in red blood. She just couldn't let it go and accept. No one could have. Thousands of soldiers, mages and imperial knights had surrounded the spider, but they were not making much progress. But what surprised me most was that not a single soldier had been killed yet. I used appraisal on the white spider and out of bewilderment took a step back. How is this even possible? A level 9 spider, and just at level 9 can use all kinds of magic attributes which are almost maxed out at that too. Even with my maxed out appraisal skill I was unable to see its title and something sort of called a unique skill which was new to me. But what really surprised me that the spider could use both divine light and dark matter magic. It was not that it was unheard of, magic used by the gods of the divine realm and devils of the hell. But it was something that is totally impossible. Two strongest opposing attributes can never 259 exist in a single entity, otherwise the soul being of that person will fall apart. But seeing such a creature standing right in front of me was a miracle. If word goes out about such a monster then it can even be labeled as catastrophe class monster just at level 9 which was usually designated to monsters with level above 4000. Maybe I should stop calling it a monster, even though it has no name, and spiders are considered one of the weakest monster species. Somehow it was different than all the monsters I had encountered in my life. It was protecting not only the beast girl but was keeping the other soldiers away without hurting anyone. It was an intelligent thing and maybe kind too. Such words for a monster meant more than the world to anyone else. But I don't think this could keep up for long, the number of soldiers are far above than a single being can alone handle without killing them, even though the monster looked determined and resolved of what it was doing, it needs to take away the girl and run, but there is no place or opening to go. Also the mental state of the beast girl does not appear to be that good, I was trying my best to think of a way to create a diversion and allow the both of them to escape. I was ready to face any consequences and punishment for my actions on that part. That was the only thing I could do. Ha 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 you see, I killed IT. I cleaned the filth. Ha I looked up again at all the unfolding chaos, and among all that the princess was standing behind the beast girl, with a dagger imbued in blood and red drops scattered all over the royal dress and her unsightly face. 260. I was late again, I failed again. And this was the third failure on my part. I was weak and foolish to think that I could do something. A coward who just stood by and watched. I was afraid to die. I finally realized it. Am I not allowed to have this feeling? The princess was laughing like a madman, while all the other soldiers who were fighting up till now stood and watched. I think they too had realized up till now what they were actually doing and what they had done up till now. But my eyes followed that of the spider who tried to bring back the beheaded girl's head back at its position and tried to cast some kind of magic maybe a healing spell, a monster with compassion, ha, huh? but something was not right, the magical pressure in the surrounding, I could feel it increasing, it was exponentially so high that I was knocked down to the ground, the white spider was now surrounded in a dark purple aura and something similar was happening to the other soldiers. Some cried in pain. Most of them tried shouting for help or uttered curses and words of doubt. I could feel my bones being crushed under that huge pressure. My legs had already become numb. The ground was shaking, and all the tents by now had fallen. Most of the soldiers were experiencing the same thing. 
lying on the floor and unable to move, while some of those who were outstanding fighter and the Imperial Knights were barely able to move. It was some kind of high-class gravity magic which I had never heard of as a strategic class soldier. I had read all the books on magic and its types, the discovered spells and 261, their specific characteristics, but gravity magic was a rare one, and something this strong a spell to manifest was never recorded in history. The next all I could remember was a bright light shrouded in darkness, maybe I was dreaming the impossible, but this light had blackened my view leaving me unconscious. 262. Suki Kondo. I'm back. I was now on floor 11, and as usual was prepared to hunt down all the monsters in there. I used my appraisal skill across the floor and spotted hundreds scoundrel AL kobolds. They were all of level 2500 and possessed extraordinary agility, magic sense and sharp canines to hunt down their prey in one bite. But for now they seem to be awesomely quiet. It's not like the monsters that possess magic sense because they would start attacking me immediately just after I enter their territory. I used telescopic view and saw some of them munching over something. On close inspection, their food was something covered in metal, evident from the clanking sound that resonated through humans. I finally found them. Even though they were dead I couldn't contain my excitement and burned down the whole floor with Black Flare, no need to worry I made sure that all the humans were already dead. If I want to establish contact with them, then of course I can't kill them. Even though they will be hostile to me in the start but if I am able to somehow relay that I am harmless then I do have a chance of cooperation. I was hoping to meet some humans since I was nearing the entrance but this was just too soon. With the small group of humans dressed in a knight's uniform I can conclude that they were a scout party. That means I will be meeting alive humans on the next floor, probably. If they are not killed that is. The monsters here are pretty strong. 263. I should go forward with the fact in mind that I won't be greeted with a special welcome, since we won't be able to talk as our languages will be different. Usually in novels I read that reincarnated people avoided such situations and meetings, but how about pictures and sketches? Surely I can make you send G some with my webs, don't doubt my drawing skills, they are pretty good, at least you can call them above average, or I can carve on the ground a symbol of peace by shaking hands. Humans were successfully able to communicate using pictures during Stone Age and they also used this method in Egyptian civilization. The better choice would be that if I swoop in and save them from the monsters, if they are being attacked and on the verge of being defeated that is, it is totally the event where a character can gain trust, respect and forge bonds of friendship, they will owe their life to me, but there is always just the case that the humans are strong and they won't bother with an absurd and irrational behavior of a monster and would simply kill me, considering an anomaly of the labyrinth. Considering that I actually am, being a reincarnate from another world, saving this world and tied to a goddess, pretty normal to speak of, huh, that would be bad. Then I can't forget that I am bad at communicating things too, a complete failure on my part. Why did I have to go and isolate myself in the previous life? But maybe it is also an opportunity to know people of this world for the first time. I will be their friendly neighborhood spider. 264. Well there is no point in wasting time and thinking about stuff that will matter in the long run. Of course I am not thinking of the good food I can obtain from the humans. I also need to make sure that I am not the first to show hostility against them. I must completely act normal. Wait is monster communication with humans even considered normal? Maybe they worship spiders in this world that will be the silver lining of the clouds which had foreshadowed my life up until now. Well this is a new world who knows what will happen next. I had now entered through the gateway that leads to floor 10, and honestly speaking it was a very large floor. The ceiling was a bit low but the area expanded far and wide, but my eyes were fixed on the hundreds of huge tents that covered the entire place and a huge compound area was left bare in between. I used invisibility skill on myself using the kinetic eye and started walking across the tents in the laid down path. I was delighted to see the things created by humans for the first time. There was cloth, mugs, steel plates, firewood, tools, swords, nails, thrown here and there. Ahem! Of course it was like a trip to museum seeing historic things. 
Obviously you can't expect technological advancement in a magical world. Even though they were simple daily use item, I just couldn't calm down my curiousness. Hash dollar percent hash dollar hash percent hash carrot percent carrot dollar percent. 265. Loud noises were coming from the mid compound open area. That's right I was so into it that I forgot to notice that all the humans were missing. So there they all were. But these cheers did not look like they were singing or supporting someone. I don't know why but it felt a bit sinister. I quickly crawled my way through the tents and reached the sidelines of the commotion and took a flight in the sky. Just what on earth was happening? Swords and spears were passed through alive beings while all they could do was cry in anguish with their hands tied making them look like some criminals. They were the beastmen whom I read about back when I was with Lady Athena collecting information about the world in which I was about to be born. Not that I thought I would meet one of them so soon. But these circumstances, the people who were cheering after killing those beastmen, how can they still smile? A bitter taste had filled my mouth. Somehow all of this reminded me of the floor where I defeated the goblin race and how they ensured their own survival. The people who were killing these for whatever reasons I don't care were the real monsters. No crime can garner such attention and savagery. But what was that little girl doing among them? A girl with white fox ears and tail was tightly clenching with both her hands to another figure that was already dead and crying at the top of her voice. How could I tell that she was dead just by looking? Because I think somewhere along the line while hunting the monsters I had learned to sense the breath of life from the people around me. Mother, I think that's what she was to the little girl being impaled by spears and swords. She was still able to move and protect her. 266. Daughter from death by becoming a shield herself, no matter how many times she had to die, no matter how much pain she had suffered and no matter how much pain she will suffer, she will happily just do anything for her own child because that's what a mother is for. No, to put it more appropriately, because that's what a mother always tend to do for her children. The relation tied by the strings which even gods cannot break. How these humans dare try to defile such a holy bond and still run their mouths laughing and continue with their killing spree like mindless fiends. I will not allow this to happen. I will not let her die. I will save her. I cannot allow seeing someone getting destroyed again. I cannot allow the same events to repeat again. Losing someone dear to you reminded me of my own parents whom I had forgotten after the road accident. Yes, my whole childhood with my parents is blank. A monster like me can't even cry. But this girl behind me is just like my previous self, who at present has no one to help her and hungry animals surround her to take advantage of this weakness. Even though I was a bit late, I cannot let the sacrifice of her mother be in vain. I cannot also kill a human, because Lady Athena won't like it. I am not a murderer. All I have to do is to keep these soldiers restrained and make an opening through these large numbers while carrying the beast child somewhere far away. But the numbers of these humans keeps on increasing, and all of different strength and are persistent. They think they can kill me, but I am not the same weak person whom you can toy with. You see I have a promise to fulfill, but if I leave a person in need alone then I can't be content by just the promise being fulfilled in its worded terms. That's something neither of us would like to happen. 267. Not killing these humans and still restraining them is getting tougher by every moment flew by. What kind of people are these using their own men as shields and hiding behind others back? Maybe with this, even though that kid has just now lost her mother and seen such awful things, if I save her and spend some time with her, or maybe cook some good food for her on a regular basis then she will cheer up a bit. Well. It does for me. Maybe I will get to make my first friends in this new world, right here in this dungeon. The fact that she will accept me even though I am a monster. Somehow the thought of it makes me happy. But things were not looking upright. My hands were getting full. Some of these humans are exceptionally skilled. I need to produce webs at a much faster rate otherwise they will get to that girl or even kill me before I am able to do anything. Unexpectedly. My danger senses somehow were behaving a bit differently, with these many people directing their hostility towards me, before I could realize I heard a sinister laughter. Not a laughter of a human or a monster but the laughter of a mindless being. 
I looked back and another girl I had not accounted for was holding a dagger covered in blood and was slowly wiping the blood shots that had fallen on her faces. No, 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 not again, not her too. I tried to move the fallen head of the little girl with care and placed it at its correct position and without delay casted my strongest healing magic as with as much magical energy I could imbue in it. Divine Heal 268 There were no changes, no movements, unlike my past experiences where I would even come back from the verge of death. I must keep on trying. My magic has never failed me. Divine Heal Once more, it has would work now. I am sure of it, divine heal. Please don't give up now. Not now. Please. I just wanted to save you. I was sure I am not late. At least saving you was fresh here. Divine heal, divine heal. But why? Why won't it work? I s it because she is deep asleep now. F N O. I wanted to save her. I was supposed to save the world, but couldn't even save this small girl. I thought I had grown up to be strong after beating those monsters but I was just getting ahead of myself. I am still weak, still shy, still afraid, still confused, still unable to make the right choice and go along with it when it counts the most. If only I had made the right calling and killed those monsters in front of me who called themselves humans. It was no different than Earth, just their ways had changed, a bit more inclined to violence and fight. Saving the world for these beings, I couldn't he have been more wrong. I needed to save the world from them. Was there any purpose to all of this? Isn't it wrong for me to seek purpose in another's life and death? 269. The chains which were binding me, the feeling that I was still human, that I still had a human heart inside me will get me nowhere. It was all a lie, or at least now I want it to be. Because of my own insecurities and carelessness of handling this situation a person's life was lost. It was my naive behavior and optimistic thinking. I had lightened up and became careless. She was still so young and the unbearable suffering she was put through. Unforgivable. I need to kill them all. Right here in this moment, in this very place, to stop this from happening ever again, I must kill all the evildoers. I had been bent and broken, but I now knew I can hop into a better shape, a form that can really save this world. The only way is to cleanse it of all evil. Anyone who tries to hurt an innocent is my enemy and I kill all my enemies, I will not waver in my resolve nor discriminate against those who try to disturb the peace of this world. This hollow black pitch box is in my room, back on earth, in which I was sitting in, with my legs folded and head down. Was it really me? But why of all places I am here now, I need to get back right now. Every single living being goes through their life depending on their past experience, awareness of the present and hopes for the future and that's what they call reality. One's reality might be an illusion for other. Didn't you want it to live according to your own little fantasy story? It was a voice I had never heard before, a voice which did not sound human at all and more like a mechanical robot. Not that I care. For me everything was in heartbreak, the pain of the breaking heart. This loss I suffered even though I hadn't even taken a good look at her face. Neither talked to her but she felt so familiar and close to me, the situation she was in was much similar to mine, maybe worse than others, it was her reality, but who was to be blamed to give her such a sad role? 270, 271, is it true that there are chosen ones and the not chosen ones for victory, happiness, kindness, envy, sorrow and anything I was feeling, the pain of being alone is completely out of this world, even now I'm alone. In this dark room, in the dungeon surrounded by enemies and I wonder what will happen on the surface. In this far-fetched reality of mine, nothing ever goes as planned. The longer I live, the more I realize that in this reality, only pain, emptiness and suffering, exists for me and those around me. Looks can be deceiving. What a person looks from the outside may actually be different but there is the possibility that from the inside he is still the same. The same goes for me. Maybe I was just pretending to be a hero. Trying to save the kid was just a stupid role I wanted to play. In truth by giving preference to not killing those humans I was prioritizing my own safety. I was just a pretender like others. 
And now the pain of this guilt won't go. The more I think about it the more it hurts. The more I acknowledge my mistake the more I remember of my past ones. I got the unique skill of the all-seeing eyes of the god but maybe I was blind to not see through the fact that I was not in a story with plot twist to bring forth my supremacy, but a small life in which I had to survive with my loved ones no matter what. No matter how peaceful it appears on the top. The bottom of the ocean and the inside heart of a person are always in constant stir. Do you understand pain a little now? The selfish desire of wanting to maintain peace causes wars, and hatred is born to protect love. Go away, just what do you want with me? I cried out as loud as I could trying to vent out my frustration on this menacing voice. 272 I am just an existence of coalesced energy. The energy that once was a part of single, ultimate form. I seek a master who can wield me. Hate is that what I feel against those who did those horrible things to those people. Is it disgust? I don't know. Or solely anger? I am still not sure. What is the feeling that would justify my action of killing them, to seek more power? The truth that why was she killed even before she had the chance to view the world a little more. When Lady Athena promised me that she will be by my side while we would travel the whole world, I was so happy. Would she have been too if I offered her to join up? In this past, her life was just a fleeting moment of my memory. And yet I was making such a big deal out of it. Was it because I was alone, or someone helpless being killed in front of me made my heart move? Instead of using my powers to destroy others just to sate my own pain, I want to use it to change the world into something better. To transform it into a place not with those incomprehensible and only a moment convenient notions of peace, equality, justice, but the way I saw fit. I have finally decided what I needed to do. This feeling of hatred is what I need to get rid of, not only from my heart but from all the people of this world. Even though it sounds impossible and ultimate stupidity. That's the kind of world I would like to live in. How can you say that you will never change, that you will not change, no matter how great the pain you face, no matter the losses you will suffer and the people who will come to hate you for this in return? Can you continue believing in yourself forever? You should give up on trying making me give up now. 273. This is one of the things I have decided on my own and there is no way I am going to give up now. When people get hurt, they learn to hate. When people hurt others, they become hated and racked with guilt. But knowing that pain allows people to be kind to each other, even though it may be out of sympathy. Even though I won't be able to hate totters I will gladly accept the hatred of those. It could be the whole world against me. Can you guarantee it? Can you have such faith in yourself? Though there always be enemies around me. You see I have a friend outside. The promise we made to share our pain and the understanding we have between us. This feeling of being at peace with her far surpasses any other. As for the faith in myself I am going to prove it to you not by words but with my actions. I stood up from my sitting position and walked up to the place where the dark room seems to end and then I tried to pass my hand through the door. The dark room, cracked like a brittle glass plane, just by my single touch. You see, I told you, let's meet again when this world have become a little better than before. Crack, crack, crack. The room shattered into pieces which dissolved in an instant into the bright light that was in my vicinity. Light brighter than that of the largest star of the cosmos and warmer than that of sun engulfed. 274. Me in an instant. While a black fluid settled underground started rising up like a storm and mixed itself in with me. This was my power and mine alone. It's all up to me how I use it. I know that better than any other. The world in which I want to live. The world I wanted to create and the world I wanted to save from drowning in hatred and despair. You have leveled up. You have reached level 10. Fourth form, I of soul. Evolution stage I. Complete. You have evolved into race, human. You have gained the title, merciless. Immunity, plus, magic resistance, plus, advanced body strengthening, plus, advanced body durability, plus, ultra self regeneration, has combined to evolve into title, immortality. Process failed. Required evolution stage not reached. Fourth form, I of soul allows user to have certain authority over the soul core of beings that are weaker than the user or lack their will to live. 
does not apply on beings that have strong life force and strong willpower. 275. Status window name, dash age, 6 months race, human level, 10 HP, ERRMP, ERRSP, ERR unique skill, all seeing eyes of the gods first form, eye of investigation second form, kinetic eye third form, eye of adrana fourth form, eye of soul, skills, glutton ELV8 mystical poison magic, sage of advanced fire magic, sage of advanced water magic, sage of advanced wood magic sage of advanced wind magic, divine mystic thread magic, advanced sun magic, sage of advanced space time magic sage of advanced ice magic, sage of divine light, sage of advanced gravity magic, sage of dark matter, sage of advanced lightning magic, sage of advanced earth magic, bioengineering, element manipulation, abnormal status infliction, title, Legacy of Goddess Arachne, Secretive Plotter, Immortality, Merciless. 276. The Wishes of the Dead. I see, so this is what happens when people die. I was now standing just beside my dead body. I must have died after I had fainted. Several other dead bodies lay beside, all of their lives extinguished. Now I will never be able to return home, to my wife and my daughter Mia, but somehow I feel blessed to be able to witness what was happening in front of me. After the high-class gravitational magic force field was casted, most of us were rendered immobile. The pure white being in front of me was shrouded both in a mystical bright golden light, too bright for me to see and at the same time darkness kept revolving around it, which was again too dark for me to see anything, but something unique and magnificent was happening to the spider. I was witnessing a change that might change the world for good and for all I cared that I wanted to be a part of it, to see it through the end, the radiant rays that kept on launching itself from the center of all attraction burned everything to nothingness leaving miniature dark spots, the moment it touched anything it was reduced to black strings slowly vanishing, the cries of the dying and the vanishing ashes of the dead, it was all but in a fleeting moment all over. Something that was satisfying my own fury and relentless hatred for others. 277. That day a mere single monster wiped out a force of almost 8,000 knights within seconds. Something which only a supreme being could do. Now there's something I understand a little better. In this world, wherever there is light, there are also shadows. And talking about peace, whilst spilling blood. It's something that only humans can do, the concept of something being entirely right cannot be more or less true, a word that has no true meaning, today I had learned things I shouldn't have, of how I was born a simpleton, lived like a fool and died like a coward. The true measure of a knight is not only how he lives but also how he dies, and mine was pitiful, just like all the others here. To try finding the meaning about your true self will lead you to nothing because those who cannot accept their real self always fails soon the whole room got covered itself in that bright golden light and I too started turning into black fading strings this was my soul we are talking about I had heard of people saying that when you die you become one with the true God this feeling of becoming one with something unexplainable beyond the universal boundaries something grand and inexplicable it was so satisfying as if the whole truth was now open to me like a vast Pacific Ocean in which you can sink to the bottom and still not drown, it was like having an epiphany, a vision of a place where one day everyone will be able to understand each other. 278 Is the being in front of me a God? 279 280 Chapter 7 So it is really happening. Celestial Year 237 Second Princess Siesta of Perilous Empire with around 10,000 knights was suddenly reported missing after a month in the Canandra Mountains. While it was officially announced that they went there to subjugate the monsters and collect information about their growth and pedigree, but most of the other countries knew that was not the case. This missing army was then said to be the work of the Demon Empire and they were again announced as the enemies of humanity by the perilous empire adding fuel to the fire in the current state of affairs creating problem for other countries who were involved with other species like elves, beast empire who lived on the demon continent, or were using resources imported from them, 
but the only being who actually knew the truth was the monster itself that annihilated that large an army in the Great Tathai Labyrinth. 281. Heart Kingdom, Royal Palace. How are you feeling Alice? You suddenly fainted in front of me and now you have such a high fever? Just tell me in case if you need anything. The women sitting in front of me showed her deep motherly concerns, on my deteriorating condition. Marcy Hart, the Queen of Heart Kingdom and my beloved mother. Maybe she is just being too careful, but it feels nice to have someone worry about you and you can do the same for them. Someone who is very precious to you, someone you hold so dear that you cannot let them go. No, mother, I think I'm all right now. You don't need to worry anymore. Are you sure? Your father and brother will be visiting soon. I told you, it's just a simple fever and my head hurts a little. I am sure after sleeping for a while I will be good in no time. Fine, then if you insist. But call me the moment you think that your condition is getting worse. I will be coming by soon, to check your temperature. Mother then walked to the door and then closed it from behind and ordered the maids to not let anyone disturb me. I told you she is just being too overprotective and she still might think that it's not enough. Also, the weather outside is not good at all. Earthquakes, storms, thunderclaps have been reported all around the world. 282. Even now a fierce wind is blowing outside, while the window is rattling with a huge pressure the raindrops are exerting on the window pane. I turned my body to the left and pulled the blanket a little upward till it covered my ears. My body was heating up and my divine magical powers were in total disarray. I already knew the reason for my condition. It's not at all common for a goddess to fall ill. Neither my healing magic was working on me. Suki. I could feel that she was in a lot of pain. Just what is happening to her? Even though this fever has subsided a little, it doesn't imply that Suki would be feeling well at all. I promised that I will be sure to share her pain. But here I was lying on the bed inside this comfortable royal palace, with so many people looking after me, but what about her? If only I knew what's happening to her. Except that she is still alive and her faint life signals that I keep on receiving from the northern direction. All I can do is just sit here and wait for her to return. They say wherever someone thinks of you, that's where HM is. I must keep on searching for her till I find her. This fever is nothing much to endure if at the end I am able to meet her. All I can do with my feeble powers is to wait and keep on waiting, as long as I can. 283. I used to think friend was just another word, nothing more, nothing less. But when I met her, I realized what was important was the word's meaning. 284. Divine Realm. World God's Office. World God. Just what is happening in the divine realm? Lady Gaia came in rushing through my office door without knocking. Maybe she should consider a bit more about this old man's privacy before barging in and knock first. Well she does look a bit concerned with the recent dramas we have been having today. Of course it's not normal here to of those, unless it means a big change is approaching. Good or bad, who knows. Boo! with a lightning crashing down in the middle of the day. It was getting tiresome by every minute. But this was an interesting development. World God, the angel guarding the heavenly artifact Colosseum, has reported of the building being breached but there are no intruders to be found and a particular thing is missing. And what would that be? I just couldn't wait to hear her say it. As it stands I already knew what had actually occurred. Perks of being the almighty world God, the know-it-all. I think you should go and check for yourself. It is very concerning. Lord Brahma is already at the scene. Maybe, not know it all. 285. Fine. I will look into the matter. Let's leave at once and deal with it. This sorting of horses with three or four leg in the new world I am trying to make is really getting annoying. So later, we teleported in front of the building about which we were just now talking about and after climbing up the small flight of stairs, the sight of Lord Brahma standing outside the huge golden gate came into view. Well God, it's the white and black sword, the Y are missing. I see, what about the place where it was kept? The case in which it was kept was completely destroyed and a huge hole is in the wall just behind the case. Most probably the noise was related to that blast. Then, let's go and see for ourselves. 
We reached the place in question and it was just as God Brahma described. I felt a strange familiar presence and so I asked the present two gods to leave and started walking around the empty case. The dual blade of dawn and dusk, or rather white and black, weapons that are classified even above godly weapons, a manifestation of divine system itself with the ability to change the laws of nature. Weapons so strong that they have a will of their own to choose their wielders, and these dual blades were considered one of the strongest even among them. For as long as this universe has existed after the formation of life from the nothingness, these 286 swords have existed too simultaneously and have by now only been wielded by two gods primarily, but now, after the great wars, it has finally found its third wielder. So, it's really happening then. What are your thoughts about it, Urza? A beautiful woman, with long white hairs and deep blue eyes, came out of her hiding from behind the pillar. She looked a bit embarrassed but not at all guilty for the fact that she was sneaking in without permission. Well, whatever happens, happens for the best. It wouldn't matter to you anyways. So how did your meeting go with her? I don't know what you are talking about. The woman now started looking in another direction trying to avoid eye contact, even though she knew her lie was caught. Well, if you don't want to say it, then don't. But are you really fine with how things are going? The weapon chose her, because it finds her capable enough to wield those swords. But, are human wielding swords of such great strength which even gods cannot handle properly, doesn't it mean putting her life at risk? This power could destroy her completely. After all, those swords have always brought destruction, that's why you gave up on them too. 287. I had spent more than enough time with those two, and after the great wars, I still think that I made the right choice by giving up on them. I just couldn't bring myself to keep them around me any longer. But still, the fact that a human is wielding something whose potential she herself wouldn't realize. Isn't she too young to be given such a big responsibility? Even you who is a full-fledged god of the upper echelon was able to wield the sword after coming at an age of around 150 or so. It's not really nice to leak information about someone's age, and especially it sounds ridiculously high in case of gods, as for her. Even the sweetest girl needs to build a hard center, or she's not gonna make it out there. I just know that she would come through with it. After all she is my daughter and your granddaughter too. Don't you have faith in her? Well her powers are beyond the charts even with the standard of a god. And I have already seen that she is flawless with her magic control and is mentally strong. But now that her second seal is finally broken, will she be able to maintain her personality or turn into something that she will eventually come to hate? I won't think that much far. If anyone could do it, it would be her. A choice only which she can make, a unique existence. Well I have stopped worrying since Athena is there to support her too. 288 Well they do say that when people are protecting something truly special to them, then they truly can become as strong as they can be. 289 The Great Tathile Labyrinth, Floor 80 Dinner is ready. Fine then I will put the plates on the table. The whole house feels so empty. Now, don't start complaining. Lily has now gone to study in the Demon Academy, so of course the house would seem less lively. How do you feel about living here? Well I had lost count, but it must be somewhere around 200 years that we took residence. I am very happy here living with you all alone just the two us. The man blushed a little. He must have not been expecting such a straightforward response. Well I feel the same, but I am referring to that. You mean the tremors we are having all in the labyrinth several times. Maybe it started around six months back, but honestly, the surge in magical power we felt yesterday was not normal at all. Actually none of the magical waves that have been surging since then could be considered normal. Could it be possible that someone I is trying to clear the labyrinth? Both the women and the man were now in deep thought. Well there is a possibility, but think about it. World class disaster monsters. From the great wars dwell here. If I the X 290 hero and you the X true demon lord can't clear the whole labyrinth, then it stands to reason that someone of this world out there doesn't even stand a chance. Even for a god, this place could be considered an attempt to suicide. Well, I have to agree on that at least. 
but just in case I think I will keep an eye on the nearby floors. Thank you, dear for your hard work. Well, we promised to live a quiet and peaceful life here after all and would leave the world alone after the great wars. We faked our deaths and found this to be the safest place to live in. We cannot have anyone else destroying our happy lives here. Well, that was the best choice after all. If we didn't want the world to end in the wars happening again and again, we both were the catalysts used by the gods and devils to begin with. The lady who was cooking the food then came up with the hot pot on the table and placed the dish in front of the man, who was already ready with the spoon tightly clenched between his fingers. The anticipation of lifting up the lid, revealed an awfully smelling green soup, with purple things floating in it. Eat up I specially made it for you. Did you really follow the recipe I gave you? Then why the color looks so poisonous to me? What again did you say? Hot pot is all about just mixing things in whatever way you like. You have the poison resistance skill so it would be fine. 291. Why you dot dot already know it? Maybe you have got it totally wrong in the first place. The vegetables are not peeled and why is there a salt rock floating in between? I am coming from the next room. I forgot something important. The man tried to rise up from his seat with haste, but was caught by the collar, the grip so strong that he couldn't free himself. I think you should, eat the food first, while it's still hot. The woman was now making a cunning irresistibly sweet smile that no man can ignore. Her beauty was unmistakable. Her hair emerald green in color with a tint of beautiful gold. She was tall and had a towering strong personality which one could guess just by her looks. She was well endowed and her allure was almost irresistible. He sat back and did one thing that could be his only remaining way out. I am sorry I will never complain about your cleaning habits or how your workplace is never arranged properly. Instead I will follow your example. So why not call it draw? I will quickly cook something up for us, that's what I always do. Let me in, it's too late, for my mercy, and after hearing Abo Ut, what you think of my cooking, I want you to give a review after eating it. So say R, why not wait and think about it a bit more, we can always reach a negotiation peacefully, isn't it what you always said, 292, is sure do. But in case a wife demands something then the husband is bound to do it without fail. There are no rooms for negotiation. With her devilish smile still on, the lady took the spoon from his hand and after taking a large scoop from the container it headed straight for the target's mouth. 293. Somewhere in Canandra Mountain Range, the snow feels so cold and my heart feels so warm inside. So come and take my hand and I will never let it go, even though it's hard, and I may struggle through it all, let's make the most of our every little time, and to the land of fairy tales we go, let the time freeze for me, and I will promise to come back home, as the monochrome white sky takes color, and I follow the stars till the shore, the moment I take a look around, I find you at my back, this must be a start of a new exciting world, so stay with me this time, forever and ever, 294, why does it hurt so much, he said he will come back for me, didn't he, my father has never lied to me, then why does it seem that this promise will never be fulfilled, I can't seem to stop crying, my heartbeat seems to be fading after every beat, and I want to go back, back where my family is, but with my footprints lost, in this snowstorm I have no choice but to go forward, Lou just keep on moving forward and don't look back. I will be right behind you, so go. Your mother and little sister will be safe. Those were his last words to me as I crossed through a hidden doorway at the backyard. The wind was howling and even the thick blanket I was wearing failed to protect me from the cold. My ears on the top still feel so tingly, and my tail has become stiff with the cold. The collected snow keeps on increasing making it more difficult after each step I take. But I am a good girl, so I can't stop here. I need to keep moving, keep moving till I reach, third, 295, a black figure fell in the midst of a heavy snowstorm, and in this white isolated kingdom, amidst all the snowfall, a dark black orb drops in the white background and unite, 296, 297, epilogue, good work everyone, just 10 di's of more work and we will be out of the labyrinth. A knight clad in silver steel armor which in all respect looked heavy, tight and elegant, 
considerably worn by the finest and strongest knights of the nation, silver imperial knights I am talking about myself, just look at me, in this army of 10,000 there were a total of 5 imperial knights, and we were the strongest force of this army, we can be even labeled as superhumans, with extraordinary physical strength, reflexes, magical aptitude and the most important of all our flawless combat or arts. Thank you sir. Had it not been for you here, the monsters of first floor of the labyrinth would de have eaten us. Even the first floor monsters are above level 2000, and could be considered almost invincible from us foot soldiers perspective. As per the princess's order and discussed in the conference meeting, that 50 soldiers after every 15 days would be dispatched to cut out an opening at the entrance, escorted by a single imperial knight whom they thought would be more than enough as a backup in case a monster showed up, and they were right in their decision. This just shows how much the nation puts their trust in us. 298 Though it bothers me a bit, that my primary objective was to guard the beautiful loving princess Siesta all the time. She is my master after all, so how did I get stuck up here? Fifteen days have passed and another team will be taking their turn and by then will be back to the Empire. Just when we got here, the tremors were so huge, that I couldn't even sleep at night. But it has been so peaceful since then. I bet they went all out with their magical attacks, and are now taking their sweet time on one of the floors. While we have been working here like laborers all day, there's no other choice. This is the only way to go out. I think I am fortunate enough to be spared to fight those super strong monsters. Well, you make a geode point there. But all our food is over now, we need to get back and resupply our stock. I am going to draw the teleportation circle. By that time you should all go and collect all the things you need to carry back. Our provisions are almost over, so I don't think there would be much to go with. I ordered the soldiers. I went in an empty area, because drawing a teleportation circle takes a lot of time and concentration. A single mistake in the circle and only half of your body will reach the destination, while the other half remains here. In simpler terms, you die, if you screw up. 299. So how could be that? I am so brazen about it, because you already know it I am an imperial knight. The invincible. Ha 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 ha. Why is everyone suddenly looking at Emmy? Well I should get back to work. Princess. Your most trusted and worthy knight is coming for you. After almost an hour, I finally drew a large teleportation circle to fit all of us. I took out a giant crystal from my pouch, which had certain markings engraved on it. It is actually a teleportation artifact, in which we will be channeling our magical energy. Since mine alone won't be enough, the receiving teleportation circle was already drawn at the entrance of the 10th floor so there shouldn't be a problem. So wish us best of luck. All of us stood inside the circle and by touching the artifact and circulating all of our magical energy into it, the light which emerged from the crystal was faint at first, but it continued growing in intensity until the entire area was set ablaze with blue light. Finally, with a blinding flash the darkness returned back to the floor with no one to be found. At floor 10 near the entrance gate, Another complex and detailed circular geometric pattern was carved into the ground and was protected by a barrier spell. Suddenly tendrils of azure blue magic particles began revolving around the magic circle, getting rid of the darkness that shrouded the whole place. A 300 group of 50 tired and hungry soldiers materialized inside the circle. What is going on? How tiresome. Why is it so dark here? It's empty. Where are all of our comrades? Don't tell me. Calm down. I don't think it's anything serious. Most probably they went down. Without notifying us. Those who know light mage I see cast a flash spell, and look around whatever you find. Yes, sir. All the others said in unison. It was completely dark, except for I could see as far as two meter, but I couldn't see anything beyond that. Since, I excel in earth magic, wind magic and water magic. I was unable to use any kind of light spell. Oh, the order of holy light. I command thee, heed thy request and grant us your light. Flash bubble. Around twelve light orbs of different sizes and intensity were conjured while some were using fire magic to look around. Wahaha. Sir, look the entrance it's totally caved in and blocked. Saying this, 
The soldier pushed forward his light torb near the gate, shedding light on the huge boulders that stood in the way. Unfortunately, he wasn't choking G around. The entrance was completely blocked and we didn't know who did it or what else could have caused it. 301. Most probably it happened during the quakes, but why they didn't relay any information about it to us. Spread and look around. We may be able to find some hints and some food here. Is there really no one around? or they might be fast asleep in their tents. I wanted to lighten the moods of the soldiers, but the eeriness of this piece and the strange darkness that hung over, were speaking otherwise. Sir, Imperia L. Knight, we are all doomed. We need to run away. Saying this, the soldier screaming fell down, entangled in his own footwork. Just what is there, that you are so, afraid of? We all started walking in a group staying close to each other just in case with all of our guard up, we reached almost the center of the floor, and were left in daze, our jaws dropped in bewilderment, by the sight of a huge white egg, no a huge white cocoon made of threads, the whole area had white webs around and some of us were already caught in it, and like inexperienced fools started shouting for help, giving invitation to the monsters to attack us, but no one appeared, neither a monster nor a human, how did they forget to kill a monster and move to the next floor? It could be dangerous to leave it here. Everyone, prepare for battle. 302. I used my appraisal skill and everything in the status window was hazy. There was no information showing up. At least it means that something living is inside the cocoon. I ran a recheck of the surrounding and it was as clean as the floor of the royal palace. But, just then my eyes returned back to the main subject. The cocoon. It was glowing brightly, all drenched in the white light, radiating from inside. Not only the cocoon now, but the all the threads, were radiating bright white light, which slowly turned into a kaleidoscope of vibrant colors. The cave was rid of the darkness, even to the deepest corners and somehow I was feeling so relieved when that splendid cold light grazed me. It was so soothing, that I wanted to bask in it all day. The cocoon did not stop glowing but the intensity kept on increasing till it became constant and started itself tracing back. Small golden yellow orbs started glowing midair like fireflies and when touched they would disappear and reappear in an instant. With a crackling sound the mid portion of the cocoon split open with a clean crevice formation, and under an unknown blazing, multitude of lights raining down from the ceiling, a figure slowly but in a steady elegant manner rose up from the inside of the cocoon. It was not a monster, but a human girl, about fifteen years old as per her appearance suggested. The moment the girl showed herself, all sounds disappeared. It was similar to the moment when the sea waves drew in. 303. Our heavy breathing had stopped, and we were left speechless. It was absolutely breathtaking. No one can forget her once you had seen her. A girl with such an appearance was standing inside the white crack, unblemished limbs as white as fresh snow, clad in a long white tunic frock woven with a material that wasn't exactly fabric. Beautiful. I couldn't think of another word that could embody such an eye-captivating appearance. She was so beautiful, she could have been a goddess incarnate. No matter what one did, they couldn't have resisted the temptation to keep looking at her. Her striking features were arranged into a cold and dignified expression. Her long ashen white hair came down to her waist, coiling around her shoulder like smoke. Her deep red ruby colored eyes could pull anyone in. Her long, glossy white eyelashes and faintly red lips would have made not only Princess Siesta but even the most beautiful princesses and queens I had came across during my duty, green with envy. In an instant she had captured all of our gazes, attention and heart. She was just that beautiful, but something tipped me off. The delicate tear hanging from the end of her silken eyelash as my deep inner sense honed and developed on the battlefield told. The tear dropped, hung suspended for a second then spread salt water across the broken covering. It was just so surreal. 304. She then turned in our direction and looked past through us, as if we were translucent. But in all this, I had failed to realize that her face was completely devoid of anything that could have been called an expression. Her looks so cold that it froze the world around me. My body was shaking and my hair stood up at its place. Stiff, men, unsheathe your swords. It took all of my strength just to muster up these words which seemed a bit odd. 
deep under my dried breath looking for moisture in the air before some of them could process my directions, while some of those who already held one in their hand fell like a non-living doll on the ground at the same time they were dead. I checked just in case that they were put under some paralysis spell, but except all the stats being normal their SP had dropped to zero in an instant. Impossible. How could that be? I have never heard of such a thing happening. It's completely absurd. My eyes sparkled with magic as I looked at the soul core of my fallen comrades, but there were just some shattered dark pieces levitating instead of a glowing core. They were really dead. Just what did that girl do to them? In a mere instant all of my fifty people were dead. Where are the other knights and the princess where could she be? Could it be that this girl standing in front of me killed them? Either way she has proven to be a threat. 305. If so, then what could I do? Why am I still alive? If so then I need to take revenge. I am a silver imperial knight, the strongest of the humans who guard the royal family. Step. Step. In a situation where the sound of her foot echoed within the quiet atmosphere of the dungeon, while having me stare at her actions and demeanor made me feel like I was watching a scene from a play. Her physical presence was so mesmerizing that it made everything else seem like a pale imitation of reality. This girl was walking forward with complete disregard, for she was straight heading in my direction, towards an imperial knight who had brandished his sword against her. Is she really not afraid of my blade, then? I looked at the dead people and they were slowly disappearing into some kind of entangled black thread. My bones rattled and I gasped for more air. Sweat leaked through my body as I stood still in the silence. I couldn't move or take a single step. I thought it was some kind of weird spell or abnormality, so I checked, but found no spell trace being casted on me or a single abnormal status. It was just her presence that was able to put up such a huge pressure on one of the strongest to render me to a state of harmless being. Am I afraid? Am I scared, to the extent that my body has already given up? Just what in the worlds is she? 306. A god. Before I could do anything she was already standing in front of me, a deep blue electric ray clad her left hand and for the first time I heard her speak something, but I couldn't comprehend it disappear. Her left hand moved so fast that I couldn't even see when the red blood soaked her cloth, but that single slash was so beautiful that I could not remember anything next. 307, 308, afterward, hello there, this is Noel Alicia. It's been only a short while since the first volume, and here you have the second one already. Isn't that amazing? I'm still very much a beginner when it comes to writing, so forgive me if you find the setting a bit dull or for the general events. I added things as they popped in my mind, and wrote this story that I wanted to read by myself, even now. I'm still enjoying writing this story more than anything else. I'm not sure if this book betrayed your expectations or fulfilled them. But I'll be glad so long as you derived some amount of enjoyment from it. In my mind, this work of mine is meant to be a simple, fun read with a slant toward comedy. The atmosphere of this book's pretty different from Volume 1, and as I'm sure many of you have noticed, it's more inclined to a leveling system and I think this kind of thing will go until mid of Volume minus 3. I'm not sure if you guys liked that more or less, but as long as you enjoyed it, I'm happy, as I'm sure those of you can already tell that I am a huge fan of Aizkai genre. Potent enough that after writing the second volume I am aiming for the third. I hope you're all looking forward to it as much as I am. 309. Once again, I'd like to thank my readers for letting me enjoy myself all the way through. May we meet again in the next volume of when I got reincarnated as a spider with my goddess. Noelalisha. Contact me. Noelalisha14 at gmail.com. Call me, plus 91 to 9,905,594,028. Volume 3, Synopsis. After Saki Kondo has become a human herself, what action she will take next. Whether to climb up or go down the floors. Of how she will acquire her first possession and challenge the ex-true demon lord. Of how she will become a part of a new family and learn more about magic swordsmanship and about family 310 see you in the next volume 311